Welcome, folks, to the stone cold groove that is onion nuggets, baby. Sit and spin on it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys are getting a mean Paul today. I can tell. Uh, yeah, a little Paul bit of an ornery. insomniac Paul. So I'm ornery. Oh, uh, I hate that shit, dude. I'm, I'm like, I'm the opposite. I just slept for like 20 hours or some shit. Man, I'm fucking. I, I, I just, I envy you. I'm I, 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 it was I have this fucking, weird, uh, yeah. <laughs> this weird pain. Uh, like I almost hesitate to even call it pain because it's like it's just it's like a dull pain that comes and goes in the bottom right quadrant uh, quadrant of my back Oof. and it's enough to like keep me awake because it goes away and you go like oh and then it's back all of a sudden you know what mm. i mean yeah i have something similar with my feet uh, especially my um my right foot i have like some neuropathic issues in there and sometimes it'll just start going foom foom Foom. just like oh my Foom. <laughs> and then it's like i cannot sleep nothing will, and it's like it's like if it starts happening i might as well just get up because there's no fucking because the only thing that it only feels relieved if i'm standing yeah. so basically it's just like okay well i'm just gonna stand here if i sit down Foom. if i try to sleep Foom. and it uh, comes dude. in like these little waves and it's like horrible and then like i said like you said it's not like it's it's not really pain yeah but it's like an other i don't know it's like a, a electric discomfort i don't know i don't know how to describe yeah that's kind of how this feels too yeah. it's it, like it's Ain't getting it, older great you know like it, it's it's the type of little pain that i get all day from my back you know what i mean but it's just regular in this one area yeah it comes back and leaves and then you know like a minute will go by and i'll start to doze and then here it comes again i'm like oh, okay all right yeah that'll fuck you up Dude, i mean i've had i've had these periods of time where it's like i don't know i, I try to get in, i tried so many times to get into like a good sleeping schedule and shit but like no matter what i do it's just like two hours three hours four hours 20 my hours shit, yeah it's like, my shit has fuck? been fucked up lately too man like i've i i've always done this thing where it's like my bedtime gets later and later and later until right. it's absurdly like the the sun's up when i'm going to and bed then you, you do know? something to adjust it like all right fuck this right like today just, happens and drift. then all of the like tomorrow i'll probably be up at 8 a.m you know and then the cycle right. begins anew i i can't get like a <laughs> steady sleeps dude we're getting fucking old listen to us oh my aches and pain i know that's what i'm saying isn't it great isn't it great getting old and just fucking yeah, being able to sit here and bitch about like my body hurts my foot's weird my back hurts i can't sleep well fuck this <laughs> and since neither of us have children which with uh with which to foist our fucking problems on you guys get to fill that role yeah but you know what a lot of them i mean I, I think i think a lot of them are younger than us but i think a lot of them about our same age too are probably like yep that's how it is yep, yep. they right that, that's something, true <laughs> like i don't think about it much but the misery and misery you know what i mean there's something slightly disconcerting is there not about your body starting to break down and hurt you know what i mean it's like okay well i'm on the downhill side now you know yeah and like, that's who the knows how like, steep the hill is but i've been you know i've been you know eating better and you know exercising all that shit and stuff and like it, it helps but like yeah. it doesn't it doesn't really mitigate the shit that's going wrong it just kind of like some other stuff is getting better while other stuff is still getting worse. Cause you can't fight the degradation of age. Like that's still happening no matter what you do. I mean, you can mitigate it but to like, a certain extent, but yeah, yeah but like, you, you know, I mean, but and, and like at this point, like, you know, no, I mean, I, I like you, I fucked up enough in my formative years of life that there's no way I'm going to like get to like that peak place. But like, I can try to like repair some of the damage, but some shit's just like fucked. How but, how many years do you have left till the big four zero? Um, two, three, two, three? Or are you thirty seven? I'm thirty seven now, but I'm you know my birthday is I don't know five months from now, six months, I don't know something like that. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, I've, I'm I'm two years over the forty line, and yeah. uh, it, it doesn't get better, man. It does. I'll, I'll tell you that goddamn fucking. Much. It, it gets worse. Get yeah. 
Well, that's why that's why I'm like, man, if I'm going to fucking get in any kind of shape, I'm going to do it now. Because like the longer I wait, the harder it gets. Yeah, you can do. I mean, you could do it later on in life. Like there have been people who fucking have turned their shit around at fucking 50, 60 something. But like that's it's a lot just, harder. That's harder, a lot yeah. taller of a fucking order because like, you know, the older you get, the more your body is working against you. Yeah. I'm trying to focus on little things. Like I want to, I want to try and get a little healthier myself because, you know, remaining as fat as I am into my fifties just seems like, you know, spoiling for disaster. So, yeah, um, I feel like you gotta, you gotta make the, uh, the, um, what's his name? Guy that died, Chris Farley, you know, a lot of his friends told him like, look guy, you know, you can have a couple bad habits, but you got all of them. <laughs> you gotta yeah. get rid of some of these motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. Dude, you're gonna I, fat, speaking you of, can't be fat and fucking do coke, man. You know, you got to fucking choose. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of Chris Farley, I watched like a pretty sad video the other day. It, it was oh. his last. You, you remember that? Um, that uh, character, Matt Foley, the motivational speaker or whatever that he, yeah. he did. Yeah. The van down by a river guy or whatever. The uh, van down by the river. Yeah. Yeah. His la like one of his last sketches on SNL was that. And like he is. It was like two days before he croaked. Does he and look bad? Uh, oh man, dude, he's just like he—he's out of breath. Like he, it's like he's <sighs> having trouble getting a breath, and he's fatter than you, I've ever seen him. You know what I mean? Like he was always a big fat guy, but he was—he's just huge and wheezing and and shit. And you can tell it's just hurting. Oh man, that's sad. Um, yeah, I mean, but you know, you what do you really expect when you see him two days before death? You know, right. That's crazy. Cause you know, I mean, it just seemed like when I, I remember when, you know, his, his death just seemed like it came out of nowhere. Like, cause you know, even I guess as a kid, I didn't really make the same association of like fat and being dead, you know, like, yeah. And I didn't know, of course he was on every drug known to man either. Well, that was a shocker to me too. I mean, everybody, like I knew that, you know, being fat, it was dangerous by the time he, he died, but like, I didn't know that he was, on top of big and fat, he was, you know, railing coke and doing speed balls all the fucking time and drinking constantly. Yeah, I mean, just like a drug. I mean, like he indulged. I mean, he lived his life to the fucking fullest. I mean, like he lived a lot in the, the years he had, but, you know, he, he paid for it pretty dearly. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, his, his life was short and uh, towards the end there, kind of rough. See a lot of fat people, a lot of old people, not a lot of fat old people. That's just not true. But I see know, a lot like, of fat old why, people. That's why I'm, yeah, I mean, that's, I, I see a lot of fat old people too, but like, also we, you know, I know we bring him up like every week seemingly, but William Shatner, bro, fat, old, sharp, yep. vital, vibrant, active, you know, I mean, he defies every fucking thing that you're told about how you're supposed to live and longevity and all that shit, doesn't he? Oh yeah. The exception to every rule. William Shatner like I don't know what fucking crazy I mean like and you hear about him and his youth and shit like realizing that like on Star Trek back in the 60s the 60s this motherfucker was already bald wearing a hairpiece motherfucker was already fat wearing a girdle to look yeah. fucking svelte and yet somehow still alive and vivacious and like sharp as he ever was to this fucking day at the age of 91 92 something like that yeah like give me a fucking break like give, give me those fucking jeans yeah, it's literally give me uh, your jeans because they'll probably fit me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, uh, man, I miss it. I don't know. What do I miss? I don't even know. I miss not. I miss having the jeans that I've never had. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, we'll go and watch a very frustrating video in a moment here. But before I, we do that, I want to go over some of these. Um, the goals. Yeah, the ghouls. So we yeah. got some goals today and we've already met the first two just sitting here oh. yammering so that's kind of cool hey cool beans i know right we didn't even have to do any work for that um so uh what we got here is maybe i could make that a little bigger than it is now you probably could yeah yeah a little bigger a little bigger on that so first we got a uh, stupid ass quizzes with 50 bucks which you guys have already paid for so you can just whatever that's already done yeah uh cringe raps including jesus christ baby a parody of ice ice baby you guys have already paid for that. Uh, for two hundred dollars, you get Ben Shapiro Zone Sector Alpha. What the for fuck three is? I don't even want to know what that is, man. Well, Sector Alpha, because there's there's a bunch of Ben Shapiro videos we got. We got four videos. The first two are Sector Alpha. The second two are Sector Beta. Oh, I see. So I just, What's I going split on? Them up, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, three hundred dollars is Matt Walsh a video called "They Want to Take Motherhood Away." I put I'm the one who put the quotes around "they" because it's always they. funny to me that the the nebulous "they" are out to get us. Yep. Uh, and then four hundred dollars Ben Shapiro Zone Sector Beta, and for ten new patrons, we have a mini gauntlet of Jordan Peterson shorts. Now at least, Ugh. so at least we can't. The thing about the shorts is maybe it'll be more tolerable because he can't really bloviate in a short because it literally has to be under a minute. Yeah, but then it's just distilled. It's like him distilled. It's like, um, but then know. at least maybe at least we can like process it and counter it in a more effective way rather than just sitting there like shut up. The only upside to that is, uh, you know, that they're short. That's it. Yeah, yeah it's it's gonna be just as tough getting. But well, we've just got a little boring. mini gauntlet of them. We got, uh, you know, I, let me see how many we got here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of them. Oh. It, we we definitely need to toughen up though i it, because yeah because we do, do want to we do want to do an actual gauntlet of jordan peterson one of these days so but, yeah i don't think we're quite ready yet we got to get it in our bloodstream before i right before we went live i actually came up with a good idea for one of these challenges maybe we'll do it next time you and me are together yeah uh, a fart off oh shit yeah where like no matter whether we have to or not the two of us have got to try and out fart each other you know what i mean back and forth oh you know what i'll i'll take that challenge you know what i'll take it i'll take that fucking challenge i've been i've been extra farty i recently. will go ahead i'll fucking eat i'll eat commi commiserate with uh with how like i'll just eat a bunch of fucking broccoli and other like beans and shit. legumes man you yeah i eat mean, a legumes. bunch of legumes and beans and broccolis <laughs> and like fibrous stuff I'll take fiber supplements, you know, and then I'll fucking Eat nothing but broccoli rob for like a week. You know, I'll what fucking I mean? put a cap on that ass too. You know, I'll get a little butt plug or something to hold all the farts in. I might and shit my britches in that case. You know, if you're really hey, you like know, pushing you to shit, get a fart, you shit your britches in the, in the course of a fucking fart off, you know, that's just, that's collateral damage. That's acceptable. You'll never live it down, but it's still, you know what I mean? It's better than just accidentally shit. Better than britches. losing the fart off though. You know what I mean? Like that guy, TJ Kirk. Yeah, you, you ever him? heard of him? Remember that guy? Yeah, that, that guy. <laughs> he, he like bent over to fart into the mic during a live show and crapped his pants. Remember that? Yeah. No, I don't remember that, actually. I don't think that's how that happened. Um, <laughs> I am literally paying money for the fart off. Okay. You know what? I think that this will happen, honestly. I think this, the, this Kenny and Spenny or whatever the fuck the, the bullshit did this, but we're going to do it better. Um, yeah. Well, it'll be real because Kenny's cheated. You know what I mean? Yeah, he like injected air into his ass beforehand. That doesn't yeah. count. You can't fucking do that. But anyway, if we get 10 new patrons between now and the end of this show, we will do that mini gauntlet of Peterson shorts. There's 14 of them, each of them at least a minute long, or it has to be under a minute long. Yeah. Um, but they're all probably about that length because like how much can you really shorten Jordan Peterson? Yeah. Um, Let's see. I, I guess I should look. Uh, it looks like we've already gotten one patron. Okay. So we were at 4,579 at the start of this. Now we're at 4,580. So I'll, I'll keep my eyeball on okay, that. Okay, so Paul is going to keep his eye on uh, that stuff there. We'll check back periodically. TJ and Paul versus Michael Moore in a fart off $1,000 goal. Yeah, well, we can't. I mean, it's not as if we could just reach out to Michael Moore and be like, want to be in our stupid fart off Michael Moore? And he's just going to be like, in my hometown of Flint, Michigan, I was challenged to a fart off. No. I don't know. Maybe I don't maybe think I don't think we'd stand. I don't think we'd stand a fucking chance. You know what would happen if? Yeah, you're right. You know, if we fucking did, if we laid down that gauntlet, even the combined might of me and Paul, we like. Here's what would happen. All right. Yeah. Me and Paul would step to the mic with some respectable, normal person farts. It'd be like, <laughs> or like, <laughs> right. And then Michael Moore would like dust off the hot dogs from his fucking chest and shit be like that was cute he is mine <laughs> and me and blow Paul the just mic out away yeah like he just literally blow us out of the fucking <laughs> it's another like thing i i pitched Matrix way back fucking like shit like ah! i pitched i pitched a fart off way back in the day on 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 dp and nobody wanted to do it because i wanted to have like judges like i i wanted to do not only like loudness and length but also smell you know what i mean and finding an impartial fart judge i think is the hard thing because who's who wants to sit there and have somebody fucking air shit in their face for an hour yeah well we could have got that fucking uh that one dude 
white guys farting in my face matters. That's okay. another one. I, yeah. I used to I used to say like we could get that guy, the white guy's uh, cream brulee fart or whatever you used to call it. Yeah, that guy. We could have got him on the show. Easy fucking peasy. I know, and, right? And everybody uh, was too creeped out by him. They didn't. You he know, was didn't a creepy fuck, but you know, yeah. in retrospect, you were right on that. We should have done that. We should have done the fart off for sure. Does Scotty got a good sense of smell? I don't know anything about Scotty's sense of smell. I know that mine, I have, I, I mean, if it weren't for bacon existing, I don't even think I'd have, I don't think I have a sense of smell. Cause like I can barely smell any goddamn thing. People are always like, can you smell that? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, but you know what? Yeah. I, you know what? The second, a, the second bacon is cooking, like within a fucking thousand yards of me, I'm like, who the fuck's cooking bacon? I smell bacon. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the only thing my nose knows how to smell. That's the only information it conveys to my brain. Everything else, it's just like, eh, garbage bin, garbage bin, garbage bin, bacon, bacon happening. I think Scotty's sense of smell would be just fine, but the the problem with Scotty in that role would be that Scotty has too much fucking pride and self esteem. You know what I mean? He yeah, we need someone that like either does, has none or just like has a weird thing for it. farts. Yeah, yeah, they either got to be like. Don't care about life. It's just like whatever. I'll judge the fart contest. I don't give a fuck. Or they gotta be like, oh my god, yes, fart on me. Yeah. Either way, give me your 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 brown funnel noodle fart. Oh yeah, it's so good. It's so good. I should right. wear diapers for the fart off. That's actually a smart idea. Get some adult diapers. Yeah, but what if it traps in some of the fart smell though? Oh, that's something like th that diaper shit reminded me like that's one of the signs like one of the indicators of an aging society apparently in japan like 10 years ago mm -hmm. sales of adult diapers exceeded sales of infant diapers so that's how you can tell man if you if your country is selling more adult diapers than infant diapers you're basically fucked oh man yeah I mean, I think it's a good thing because I don't like the population growing and growing and growing out of fucking control. But, well, you're, but I know it's bad for the economy and stuff because the way that our economies are structured is all about like perpetual growth, which is not necessarily a good thing. Yeah, well, but, maybe it, maybe that needs to be torn down and replaced with a more sustainable idea. I would uh, agree with that. Um, okay, so speaking of, well, there's no transition into this. This is just the most frustrating thing I've ever seen, and I wanted to share my frustrations with you guys. God damn it. This woman, this woman is the worst fucking driver I've ever fucking seen in my fucking life. That's a tall order, so. She is the I've worst fucking driver I have ever seen in my entire fucking life. Okay? That's what she is. All right. Already, you can see. So she, what is she trying to she do? She's trying in? to back into that driveway. Oh my God. Look how big it is. Look, why is she cutting the wheel that way? What is she doing? <laughs> Boom, hits that car. What a fucking idiot. She's got a person directing her too. Yeah. And you would think now all she, I mean, literally all she has to do is just cut the, nope, she's cutting it the wrong way again. What are you doing? No. Why are you cutting the wheel that way? Yeah, this person too is in the danger zone, man. The person trying to help she's her gonna is going to get the way. crushed. She just hit the car again. This is so fucking stupid. And then instead of, nope, and then she goes that way. Is she Asian? Yeah, I think she is. Oh, man. I'm pretty sure she is. This Sorry, is her... Asians. I didn't mean. I don't mean for you to guys to get stereotyped like that. But what the fuck is this? Yeah. See, this is this is. Uh, what? I know. I know. <laughs> like how? How do you do this? That's a Maserati, by the way. So that's an expensive car. There's a bunch of expensive cars in this neighborhood, so I'm assuming this is like a desirable area to live. And she's driving a Lexus herself. Oh, my God. And look God. here. When she goes into this, she look how she cuts the people off when she pulls into this fucking road, too. She just pulls out in front of people. Yeah, look at, look at the per person to honk. 
Yeah, she just pulled out right in front of that person there. Oh, my God, man. The fact that this person is out there it, it, on the streets. All she has to do is turn in that. She's just, okay, she's going to try to back in, I guess. Which she is needs already to a stop. bad idea. She's going to hit that mailbox. She's definitely oh, going to hit yeah. that mailbox. Yes, for sure. That mailbox is fucking doomed. Okay, she missed it so far. Okay. Why does she have to back into everything? I don't know. Okay. Oh my god, is she gonna hit the fucking Maserati again? She does not. She has no idea how back out shit works. She never. She just like look at her indecisive. She turns the wheel both ways, trying to figure out which way to turn the wheel. Like, how do you not know this shit? She's this is shocking. Box. Like this woman should not have a fucking driver's license. If she no. does, I mean, maybe I don't even know if she does because I cannot see how this person could pass a fucking driver's test. How does she get from A to B without just uh, getting in a horrible wreck? I don't know. I mean, look at this shit show. This is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> it's so frustrating because the stuff that she's trying. It's so, why whoa, it's so easy to do. Oh she's not God. demented. Look at her. She's not old. She's not an old woman. Just a dumb look at woman. This shit. Look at this shit. And look at look at her. Look at her cutting that. What are you doing, you stupid bitch? It's like she doesn't understand the physics of the vehicle that she's operating. Yeah. And eventually she she's gave up. She's she just gave like, up. No. She's like, now fuck she's this. trying to go in that one and she can't even get in that one. You see that attempt at a turn just now? Wonder if she's like a drunk or okay, something. Okay, now she's trying to like wait, what is she trying to do? She's trying to just go forward into it? Yeah, she's she's given up on And she still can't do it. Look, right, she's, she's, she's up she's on the, the fucking curb, curb threatening to and hit then the she's building. On that curb. Oh my god, no. Oh, okay. And there's another person that like this person has to just help her. These people that are trying to help this one, the only way the only way you can help her is to reach in there and grab those keys away. Yep. She's gonna hit that car. She hit that car. Wait till she parks that shit. Pop the fucking hood and fuck that engine up so that she can't go anywhere in that car. That's oh my god! Look her. how she's cutting it. No! 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 Yep. No! Bump. She's about to bump the fucking shit. What are you doing, you stupid bitch? Stop it! This is this is almost unbelievable. I know. I don't understand how anyone could be this bad at this. This is not hard. This has got to be like the stupidest person. It's like every fucking instinct she has is the exact wrong instinct. Yeah. It's like now, like, why is she stopping? She should keep backing up. Yeah. Like, there's no reason for you to stop right here. We got the wheel the right way. Yeah. Just keep going. Yeah. Keep, keep going. going you as you're it. going. Now I stop. Like, I think Turn she's just like super wheel. indecisive and second guessing herself with everything. Yeah, this is this is just a this is an absolute fucking nightmare. Here's if I was that one. person helping her, I would just tell her get out of the car. Let me park it for you. Here's a person oh. that like okay, yeah, yep. okay. into the into the garbage can, garbage uh -huh. can over, and that's just gonna stay there, I guess. Yeah, not not like she she feels that's another thing about her too is not only is she stupid. But she's thoughtless and careless too. Like she's sideswiping people's vehicles, knocking people's shit over. And there's, like, you can tell there's no attempt. There's never even a thought that goes through her brain. Like maybe I should try and fix this. <laughs> I mean, some states do. Uh, you know, Tucker. Some some states have a requirement to retest. You know, at a certain age or whatever. But most yeah. of them don't. This woman's brain is just wired backwards, and she does not understand. I mean, like, look at this. She doesn't understand how to go in things from the front either. Like, look how easy this is. Any person who has a vehicle should be able to do this with the, like, greatest of ease, no effort whatsoever, just turn in. But look at this woman struggling with this. Oh, my God. I mean, literally, she's worse off now than she was a moment ago. She's like making the fucking problem worse. Look at this guy just like standing there, too afraid to go down while this woman is fucking on the road. I wouldn't go anywhere near her. She's the type of person that would just like panic, hit the gas, and run over your foot. <laughs> yeah, no sh This is fucking ridiculous. All right, that's all of her. Ugh. Wow. 
I can't. That I is mean, absolutely unbelievable. I know, right? Like it was less frustrating though than I thought it was going to be. It was it, like it's frustrating because I just want to jump in that car and park it for her. Yeah, you know it's I mean? frustrating because I want to just take the keys away from her. Honestly, <laughs> I yeah. cannot. I cannot believe the ineptitude on display there. It makes me feel so good about myself in everything that I do because at least I'm not that. I know there are people that are like really tentative drivers and shit. Maybe she's just the extreme of that, but I almost feel like that there's like some drugs or alcohol going on. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's unbelievable because how the fuck does she even do things? Like <clears throat> just seeing how much she struggles in that one spot, like that there being that many instances of her fucking fucking up in that little one range of that one camera like, what is she doing out there in the world? Like, what? how the fuck has she not been in a, in a fucking hundred wrecks by now? You know what I mean? Like, how the fuck is her car still in reasonably good condition? I don't even get it. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, like, I, you know, that's the kind of person you're on the fucking road with, basically. Did I tell you the <sighs> fucking thing about the dude with giant fucking ears? No. Okay, so... Um, we were driving, we were driving behind a guy, this car that was fucking, fucking like going all over the road. We're just like, oh my God, what the fuck is going on in this car? And Chelsea's like, look at this dude's fucking ears. I'm like his ears. How the fuck am I going to see his ears from here? We're behind him in a car. How the fuck are you seeing his ears? And so I look at the guy, I'm trying to feel, like see this, and his ear, and he, she was right, his ears were like sticking out like Dumbo ears, like this fucking, like, rah! I'm like, holy shit! Motherfucker's Whoa. gotta have the biggest goddamn ears on the planet. Is he an old man? I don't know, because I couldn't, I couldn't tell that, but I could tell he had gigantic, like, Mickey Mouse ears. Because you know, like, old men, and their ear, your ears yeah, never really stop they growing. they fucking start getting bigger and bigger. I've seen that. Yeah. So, but you know, you know, another thing, though, is as he's driving down the road, swerving all over the place, he's like, screaming and hitting himself and i'm like well this is concerning <laughs> this is not he's like Aah! i'm like uh yeah <laughs> i hate i hate pulling up behind a person like that and no. trying to look for opportunities to get around them you know what i mean because it's just like you're taking your life in your hands passing a person like that i know just erratic it's like, as at fuck. any moment they could just be like swerve into you some of these dash cam uh, compilations you can find on YouTube, they're fucking nuts. But that's that's um, that's some crazy shit right there. Usually Ugh. it's just normal stuff like this person cut me off or this person had road rage or whatever the fuck or this person's entitled. But rarely do you see something of the magnitude of that bitch who just cannot fucking drive. Yeah, that was out of control. I've, I've never quite seen something that inept before. Uh, well, here's here's something about as inept. <laughs> Officers who failed Uvalde children and mask are allowed to continue working this fall. Why? Uh, I, <laughs> why? Got me, man. You got me. Yeah, good question, though. Why, why the fuck? Why? Huh? You know, because, like, local families demand the officer's suspensions until evaluations are complete. How about just no? Not, like, not until, like, evaluations are complete. Just, like, gone. Just every single yeah. one of them fucking gone and, like, barred from ever holding law enforcement positions again. How about the that? evaluation is complete. Their evaluation was the day the shooting happened. Yeah, and on the it day is that complete. a bunch of kids were getting massacred, you uh, hid in the hallway checking your phone. So, uh, yeah, your evaluation is uh, you suck and uh, fuck off, basically. Yeah. I don't know what, what more evaluation is needed. At the very least, I heard that they voted to fire the fucking chief who, you know, like, honestly, he's more at fault than anybody else. Really you know, cool to see a bunch of ads on this story. I mean, like, okay, I get, I get what you're saying and stuff, but like, um, like these new, like news agencies have to fucking play ads and shit to make. I mean, they have to make money. We're living in a capitalist country. There's, there, what other way are they going to do it? <laughs> Otherwise, there's just no news. Because like, if there's no money in news, they can't be any news. Because that's where a country where unless there's a capitalistic incentive for something to happen, it's not going to happen. So I don't know. Maybe it's better. We don't know the news. We could just like live in, in ignorance or whatever. <laughs> and then we don't have to do this show. We could just be like, hey, guys, it's the Onion Nuggets show where all we do is just go like, we <laughs> might be a better show. Yeah, we could I mean, just focus the show on like, let's fart against each other. Yeah. And then we don't know that like 
there's like geopolitical tensions or the world is ending. We're just ignorant of all that shit. We're just like, we, <laughs> I mean, that's how I spend most of my days now, you know, until, until, uh, onion nuggets time. I don't pay attention to the goddamn fucking I mean, like news. really at a certain point in the news, you kind of like, unless there's like some sort of really like, wow, things have, this is a really unusual story that like is very like, otherwise you pretty much know what the news is going to be. Yeah. Bad, huh, a bunch bad, of horrible bad. shit happened. Okay, the planet's dying. Okay, geopolitical tensions heating up. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. World War Three. Okay, yeah. Civil War. Okay, yeah. Uh huh. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> you know, it's just like okay, we got it. We get it. Because it's basically the same every week, but you know, with like we just get little updates on it. Here's what hor here's what horrible shit happened this time. You know, I, don't, I didn't even see a news article about it or anything. I didn't pull anything on it because I didn't. I didn't actually honestly come across it. Because I guess people are just we're at the point now where we're just kind of ignoring it again. But uh, there was a story out of Columbus oh, yeah. um, it, where I, um, some cops basically like within they open a dude's door and within like a, a black dude, of course, within like a second of opening his door, they shot him. He was laying. He was just sitting on his bed, basically. And their excuse Great. was like, well, he had a vape next to him. It looked kind of like a gun. We had to Aww. make a split second decision, y'all. What is like, idiot. OK, cool. And I was just like sitting there like burn it, burn it down. But then, you know, I'm like, well, we're not going to burn it down this time because people are back to just like, well, you know, that's how it is. That's how it is. Dude, the more I think about the way things are going to shit and the way that it's usually like all of it is connected to either stupid or self-serving people. Yeah. Like all of it. Yes. It, it, where it's all it's all, uh, you know, uh, crises of our own creation. The more. Mm -hmm. Like I'm having these like really super hard authoritarian type of thoughts, you know what I mean? I've always kind of tended towards that a little bit anyway, but yeah, man, I, I was thinking about it last night. It was just in a sour mood. Yeah. And I was sitting there thinking about like, I was thinking about like a cart, right? And the most of us are riding in the cart and there's a few intrepid people that are pulling the cart. You know what I mean? They're putting in the, the, the real work to progress society. And we really have too. Like, yeah, sure. uh, despite the climate crisis and all that shit, the level of abundance that, you know, many people live in, uh, even even poor people in the West, is fucking unheard of in human history. So you can't deny the progress. So there are people that are pulling that cart of progress, right? And then there's the mass of people kind of riding in the cart. And there are these idiots that are behind the cart. You know what I mean? Like holding on to it and grabbing it and trying to stop it and slow like it down anger. and everything. And shit like no gotta stop the cart yeah scary up ahead y'all stop the cart <laughs> and i'm just like those those people should be fucking dealt with yeah. you know what i mean they're not gonna be but we're talking about the the big should here those people should be dealt with yeah uh, take that to mean on youtube whatever you think it means they should just be dealt with <laughs> there's no way that we can be need, that tolerant of a society that we're so tolerant I think that what we Paul is saying is they need a stern talking to. Yeah, a very stern finger wagging. <laughs> they need a good solid lecture, right? Yeah. You know, I'm I'm actually coming around to your like freedom of speech ideas too. I was just like, you know, people that are just outright telling lies or so misinformed that it's just demonstrable, they should be dealt with. They should, yeah. they, you know what I mean? They can't, they, we can't allow them to keep bloviating their stupid fucking opinions. Maybe dealt with in their case just means like, you're not allowed the internet. Like you're not allowed to have a presence <laughs> anywhere on the internet. You're not allowed to do any public speaking. You're fucking ass. Just sit at home and marinate in your stupidity. Uh, music to my ears. And you know, like once again, yeah, the demonstrable liars I honestly don't really mind people having whatever opinion they want to have, but when people out, go out and just like knowingly spread misinformation or even just like they're so stupid that they can't discern fact from fiction. Yeah. I don't know. I'm starting to think that like the, the tolerance of opinion is part of the problem. You know what I mean? If your opinion is just demonstrably false and destructive to everybody around you, you shouldn't be allowed to have. Well, here's opinion. the thing. Any, if you can't lie, then any opinion you have has to be at least based in like, like you, you would have to at least come out and say your true fucking motive for shit. Like if you're yeah. fucking, you'd have to instead of being like, you know, I, I'm I hate gays because they're grooming our kids or whatever. You can't just like lie. You have to be like, 
look, I just, I hate gays because I'm a fucking bigot and I want things to return to the way they were in like 1955. It's like, okay, finally. Yep. The fucking truth out of your stupid ass. Now we can actually deal with you. Yep. Gaffle them up, put them in a re education camp or some shit. Is idiots hoarding guns? Just deal with them. You know what I mean? Like, Did like you help- see that fucking, you see those people training the other day? The uh-huh. little fucking like arm, the, the little right wing militia group doing it's like battle drills and shit. No. Hold up. I'll fucking pull it up. I got to fucking, I got to show you this stupid shit. Can't av- we can't fucking avoid this. Rich fucks that have, you know, uh, 10,000 times what it takes to sustain them and, and continually lobby for more. They just need to be dealt with. Take their shit, redistribute it, and make it to where that they can never accumulate that much ever again. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I, I think our tolerance is going to be the end of us when it comes to stupidity and people that are just directly against humanity. Like these idiots. I can tell yeah. just looking at this still that this is a whole group of people that need to be dealt with. You know, I, I, I feel like they will be, honestly. Because, <laughs> like, okay, uh, we'll, we'll look at it for a minute. And they got their little Captain America shields. Isn't that cute? Can you imagine just you're like walking? You imagine just like walking through the woods, and you just like walk out into the field, and you see this shit. You just like turn right the fuck around. Like, nope, (laughs) gotta go. Not before I rolled a grenade in their midst. Oh, they've got shields. They can deal with it. Look, they're trained. Can we try that again from the top? What are you like? It's just LARPy choreography know, for right? fucking white people. And I basically said, I basically said, like, well, I'd be worried if it was 1850. This is still how warfare went down and shit. I'd be real worried. And then someone said to me, well, you know, I think these are more like the brown shirts. You know, this is for like urban confrontations and shit like that. I'm like, yeah, but you know what? Pretty soon into that, the government's just going to send in the fucking uh, helicopters and shit, and these motherfuckers are going to get mowed the fuck down. Because these guys aren't going to be fighting against... Someone's like, you know, this is the kind of stuff the left should be doing. The left needs to do this. Like, no one in America should be doing this because this is ineffectual garbage. If your plan is to fucking take on the U.S. government, this ain't going to fucking do it. This ain't going to fucking do it. This ain't even going to fucking come close to doing it. These guys would get fucking massacred in like two seconds. That's kind of what I'm wondering with my whole card analogy and shit. It's like the reason these guys, these people exist is because we've developed a level of tolerance that allows it. And it's like, at what point do we look at this and go like, all right, this is fucking dangerous. People are literally like, (laughs) yeah, like, like, you know, it's going to be too fucking late. It'll be too fucking late. These people are going to hurt people. And uh, there's no reason for it. What's, I whatsoever. love these people, man. I love these people. Are just, the government will be able to send. Yeah, it's that's true. We want the, the same government that literally has sustained years long war efforts across the globe is going to have a lot of trouble sending troops domestically to quell fucking a bunch of fucking doughy white boys with fucking captain america shields that's what that's the downfall for sure you're right my that's bad a, that's always been my uh like, give me know. a fucking break i don't know you could do you guys just have like there's like a group of people out there that are just delusional because like i every time i make this argument about like this is not going to defeat the u.s government people like act like our government is this like lily livered fucking like oh the supply chains are weak we just we fall apart it's like uh excuse me have you seen the fucking U.S. military, bitch? Like they they ain't weak. They pretty damn strong. Okay? They also they also <laughs> have a strong. very well documented history of uh, being deployed and used against the citizenry. Yeah, you know what I mean, there's this idea that they would never do that. Or oh, dude, it happened. I've dude, it happened right here where I'm sitting. Yeah, I mean, well, maybe not in this. Maybe like over in New Orleans, anyway. Dude, I heard stories, and I mean, you know, these are like some, you know, like you know things get churned through the rumor mill and shit so who fucking knows but i remember there was a story that i heard from somebody who claimed to have seen it about you know a bunch of fucking you know during katrina a bunch of fucking thugs took over a fucking hospital basically we're fucking trying to get all the drugs out of there and shit like that 
And, uh, you know, of course, Bush had sent in the fucking, um, uh, um, what's the fucking one they always send in domestically? The National Guard. The National Guard. Yeah, they sent in the National Guard. Yep. The National Guard came in there and basically just mowed those motherfuckers in half with machine guns. Yep. Just like insane force instantly just broke broke like pop through windows like some tom clancy shit <laughs> gunned them the fuck down gunned yep. them into mincemeat before they fucking even knew what the fuck was going on so uh, this like idea that this fucking little ragtag group of fucking <laughs> i don't see one person on the screen right now that i i'm, I'm i could confidently say I, I have a fucking fighting chance against any person i'm looking at right here and i don't know no, for fucking sure. the first thing about fighting yeah, like are, look at this guy of dorks look at this soft bitch look at him this guy is soft yep this dude's Fresh doing a bed, battle drill soft this dude's a fucking yeah. He's a muffin. He's a cream puff. Yep. He's a creamy little fucking bitch. These shields look like they wouldn't stop a fucking fly, let alone a bullet either. What are they like? Just aluminum shields with holes all in the area yeah. that you want. You don't want holes <laughs> in that holes? area. Yeah, like I guess you can see through them. Right, but like you know, like on riot shields, those are tempered bulletproof glass, not holes where you've got a good chance of just. You know, angling a bullet through one and noodling the person looking looking out from behind it. It's just so stupid. These people exist because we didn't complete reconstruction out of the Civil War. Let's finish what Lincoln started, dude. I agree. I that's that's kind of what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? When I'm when I'm talking about like our tolerance of you know, oh, people's opinions and people, you know, they're allowed to think what they think. It's like yeah, to a certain fucking extent. But then when they when it starts to like threaten the cohesion of our society, they need to be dealt with. And that's absolutely fucking right. Uh, reconstruction dealt with. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. I don't know any better way to fucking say it. You know, and no, that's, I, the, that's a good because it's nice. It's nice and vague. It's nice and vague. <laughs> Emancipation. And not, look, reconstruction was not about annihilating anything. No. Reconstruction was about like, OK, you guys fucked up. You right. need to be brought back into the fucking fold, but it was honestly it was like think dangerous, about it. these dangerous ideas that led to this happening in the first place got to go, and then yeah. it got dropped because it's like I forget the exact de like get the I forget the deal it got dropped in, but basically it just got dropped be well before it was complete, and just then political you know, jockeying led to all this like South will rise again shit. No, no, it won't. It, it just it, they needed to be fucking occupied for like twenty thirty years brought into the fucking fold and then you and you don't fucking just end it you fucking just phase it out as it's no longer needed <clears throat> but now you got this shit unless your militia is being supplied or and funded by russia and china the billy bob gun club will get mowed down by a drone from a thousand miles away yeah someone That's is funding this by the way i mean like these guys they got equipment i mean it's shit but yeah, someone's garbage. paying for it like look at all this shit they got all these flags by the way, fucking pretty pretty funny to see a, 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 a fucking army that's clearly like training to like overthrow the government and do civil war, flying a bunch of U.S. flags. Like we're the real. Like how confusing is that going to be when both armies are flying the same fucking flag? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, one of them will be well trained, uh, you know, killing machines, and the other will be these doughy fucks. You know what I mean? So it'll be pretty easy a to tell the <laughs> I mean, like, it's not even like these guys act like they're, there's like the, these wouldn't these guys probably wouldn't even get in a confrontation with an actual U.S. military force. It probably be it probably would just be a matter of a drone strike. Or like a fucking helicopter, someone shooting them down from a helicopter yeah, or some I mean, shit like that, like a single helicopter would deal with this whole platoon. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, like it's one it, helicopter with Arnold Schwarzenegger manning a minigun like in Terminator 2. And these yep. fuckers are just gone. You know, they're wasted. You know who loves helicopters? Rambo. He's always oh, got yeah. there's there's a big helicopter scene in every movie. That's true. Especially uh Rambo 3, man. That that one has the, the helicopter duel in it. TJ, it's these like, guys are uh training to fight other civilians. Yeah, I get that. But I'm saying like at a certain point, and probably not that far into their little campaign of that, the US military is going to get sent in. Yes. And at that's that the, point, that, that's the point. Yeah. At that point, <laughs> these motherfuckers ain't going to last long. You know what I mean? Like, this no. is not going to fucking, this ain't going to hold out too much longer. 
My, if what? it actually came to that, I'd, I'd wager that all these all these people standing around, all these people participating in this drill, I'd wager that if it actually came to fighting in the streets, over half of these people wouldn't even show out. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, I was there for, like, the little LARPy training thing, but I'm pretty sure in a real fight we're going to get our asses kicked. So, uh... I'm gonna just uh I got some stuff to do. Sally says uh I need to do the dishes, so uh, I'm gonna catch up with you guys after the dishes are done. And yep. uh, you know. <laughs> uh yep, they, they I, like you know, and I, I really don't think there's too authoritarian a response to shit like that. I I you know, I would I would be fine with the government swooping in and sterilizing that whole group of people so that they oh, don't that create nice. more like them. Yeah, just like you know, okay, you guys can do your little drill, but just so you know, um, we're just here to like kind of spray you with this little chemical here. It's, don't worry, it's not. It's, it's just gonna be fine. <laughs> Heck, the cities would probably beat that military to it. Uh, look up the move bo- bombing. Yeah, that was in Philadelphia. The police uh, were like c- trying to contain a riot. In yeah, a, we covered that a few times. Yeah, in a, in a in a block of houses, and they basically dropped bombs from a helicopter and started a fire that killed a bunch of fucking people. Yeah, black so, people, by the way, surprisingly. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's hard to yeah, believe. Shocking. Elephant that ripped owner in half for overworking him hailed as working class hero. Fuck yeah! <laughs> you Normalized see? ripping your oppressor in half. Nice. This is what I'm talking buddy. about. This elephant had a problem. Yeah. That problem was not going to be solved by somebody wagging their finger at him, going, "You should treat that elephant better." So the elephant dealt with it. Yeah. And now that person will never abuse another animal as long as they fucking live. It's a problem dealt with. You know what An I mean? An elephant in Thailand killed its owner by stabbing him with its tusks and ripping his uh, body apart after he made the animal work in extreme heat. Now the internet is showing support for the elephant. Local news outlet Tiger and Chaos, I can't pronounce it, Chaosad, uh, reported that the attack occurred in the Takua Thong district of Fangya province at a rubber wood uh, plantation. On the uh, morning of August 17th, police found the dismembered body of 32 year old Supachai Wong Fei. Man, you guys got some tough pronunciations over in Thailand, I'll tell you that. Uh, in a pool of blood at the plantation, the elephant was still around and had to be sedated with a dart by animal rescue workers so that uh, Wong Fade's body could be retrieved from the scene. Officers uh, determined that he had been stabbed by the elephant's tusk multiple times before finally being ripped into two pieces. Wong Fade was working with the animal at the plantation. Investigators believe the elephant lost its cool after being forced by the owner to work and haul rubber wood in extreme heat. Since the story went viral, people on the internet have come out in support of the 22-year-old beast with a harmless sounding name, Pom Pam, for standing up to the owner. Yeah, this elephant fucking uh, kicks ass. Yeah, that's fucking right. Um, yeah, you know, you fucking make this elephant work in extreme heat. It's elephant fuck. I mean, like making an elephant fucking work for you in general, go fuck yourself. But like, especially like in extreme heat, making this elephant fucking do this horrible fucking manual labor and shit. Like, fuck you. You deserve to get ripped apart. Uh, someone raised General Sherman from the graves to do some uh, cooking in the South. Wink, wink. American Christian authoritarianism started with CSA. There you go. Yep. Uh, normalize ripping your oppressors in half. I love that one. Elephants low-key have the biggest haters, and I strive to be on the level of uh, hating someday. Yeah. What is the opposite of quiet quitting? That's that's a good one. I hope they don't kill this elephant. I know they probably will, because it's fucking... That's all usually the way it works out. All these animals that fucking stand up for themselves against these fucking brutal humans get fucking killed because it's like, oh, well, he harmed a human. Let's not fucking bother looking into uh, what the human did to fucking deserve it. Well, he solved a problem on his way out. It's good for him. Good for him. He dealt with it. Good on you, Pom Pam. You a good elephant. We all support you here at uh, Deep Fat Fried. We love you. We love you, Pom Pam. <laughs> um, truck spills 150,000 tomatoes causing California crash. Look at that, man, dude. That's just like, like some marinara sauce just being made. I know, right isn't that nice? D- delicious. Just throw I some spaghetti go, on that. Yeah, just fucking get some, dude. I have ideas. <laughs> I think my horny is showing when I when I think of them though. I was thinking, get some of them fucking big ass like Instagram models and shit to like roll around on these tomatoes to crush them up real good. Oh yeah. Get some pasta, you know. Dump that pasta in there. Eat that shit right off the road. Well, I mean, the road not, might be man. a little nasty, but you know, 
whatever. Eat the top layer, the ones. Yeah, that, you, know, that, you know, you leave the fucking. You get a protective layer on the bottom so that there's not too much gravel in it and stuff. But you know, I mean, hey, that's good shit. So yeah, this is uh, this happened pretty nearby. I mean, California's a big state, so I don't know how nearby you it was to you actually. It depends. A truck uh, had spilled more than 150,000 tomatoes across a busy motorway in the U.S. Uh, state of California, bringing uh, traffic to a standstill. The spattered tomatoes caused seven cars to crash and closed much of the Interstate 80 highway on Monday. Three people had minor injuries, and a fourth is in the hospital with a broken leg. Uh, during tomato season, lorry drivers, you can tell this was not written by an American, uh, used the major motorway to transport the fruit across the, straight, the state. An initial collision caused the tomato truck to swerve into the uh, central divide of the motorway, spilling fist-sized tomatoes across a 200-foot section of the motorway. Uh, so, yeah, they said it was about uh, the, the sea of red sauce about two feet deep, cooking in the California sun. Lovely, man. Just ready for some pasta. And you would think that this would be the only story like this, but you'd be wrong because Alfredo sauce spilled partially uh, cl- across a Tennessee highway around the same time. Whoa. Yeah. A portion of uh, Interstate 55 in Memphis, Tennessee, was forced to partially close Tuesday after a tractor trailer wreck sent Alfredo sauce pouring across the roadway. The wreck was reported before 5 p.m. local time. Traffic camera uh, video from Tennessee Department of Transportation shows a white sauce covering all three northbound lanes of the interstate. Yeah. Yeah. I looked it up, and it has this didn't happen too, too far from me. Vacaville, California. It's about Mm -hmm. an hour and a half, two hours away from me. Yeah, so I, mean, I just love that there's like two Italian sauces uh, covering. I mean, like this is a sign of something, right? This has got to be like I don't the, know what, but yeah, it's a yeah, sign I mean, of I, something. I can't figure it out, but you know, hey, there's something going on here. Just saw Paul's face and made me happy. Have a good day today. Aw, aw, it is kind of sweet. It is sweet. Uh, World Gravy Wrestling Championships return after two year break. What? There's a gravy championship? A gravy yeah. wrestling? Yeah, gravy wrestling, dude. How did I live my whole life and not know that this was a thing? I don't know, but I want this. I want to be this ref. I want to be the gravy wrestling ref, dude. Yes. Yes. Fancy dress, ro- uh, wrestling, and lashings of gravy were on o- order of the day. Were the order of the day at one of the craziest culinary competitions returned after a two year COVID induced hiatus. A host of wrestlers took part in the 12th annual World Gravy Wrestling Championships at the Rosen Bowl Pub in Rosendale, Lancashire. Man, you mean to tell me that the fucking goddamn limeys came up with this shit, not us? Boo. We need to appropriate this sport We're, immediately. Yeah, this is ours. You're not allowed to have this anymore. We're taking this back. Yep. Take it back. Do, 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 do. Take it back. The event sees competitors grapple in a pool of gravy in two-minute bouts. Pub restaurant manager Carol Lowe said it was amazing to be back. Oh, yeah. Gravy wrestling. Oh, man. The purest of sports. Yep. Yeah. Gravy wrestling. Wrestling in the gravy now. You got to have, like, you know, some good bread to sop that up with, too. Oh, yeah. While you're wrestling. Oh, yeah. I think at the end of it all, they should just dump a fucking truckload of mashed potatoes in that shit. Just to get yeah. everyone gather around with a spoon, man. I like grits more than gravy. What the fuck does that even have to do with anything? Yeah, that's like saying, like, I like cars, not whales. You <laughs> yeah, know? I mean, like, like, what the what? fuck? You know, who cares? Like, that's not even, huh? What are we talking about here? Like, what a non sequitur. Uh, legalizing recreational cannabis increases its use, research shows. No shit. Like, why the fuck did, w- was this research necessary? <laughs> when it's legal to buy it, more people do. Huh? Give me a break, man. Yeah, of course. People in U.S. states that legalize recreational cannabis use it 20% more frequently than states that didn't legalize it. Yeah, because you know what? There's a shit ton of people out there who want to smoke weed, but they don't because they respect the law for some stupid reason. So well, I see this one. This one doesn't make sense to me because in, if you're in a state where it's illegal to smoke weed, how much more likely are you to lie on the survey? You know what I mean? Like, do you smoke weed? No. You know what I mean? Like, but if true. you're because even because even like and even the situations where I don't need to lie, like you can tell your doctor you smoke weed, but I don't. I don't fucking yeah. put that shit on. I don't tell anybody about that shit. I mean, I tell 
my audience, I guess, which is, you know, um, because I can't really hide it because I smoke it on the fucking show and shit. But I mean, I smoke legal tobacco on the show. What am I talking about? I'm pulling up on two weeks with no weed, zero weed. You know, you and Chelsea are doing that around the same time. She's not yeah, smoking she, weed right now either. She texted me about it because she, I think she probably heard through you. And I mean, it just like a quick, like, just kind of like a quick little back and forth telling, telling me that she was kind of having the same issue that I was where it just felt like it wasn't helping. Cause I think she and I probably smoke for some of the same reasons, you know, how yeah. our anxiety and shit <clears throat> makes it, sense. That's why I stopped, man, because it, se- it seemed like instead of helping with my anxiety, it was like Make exacerbating it, it. So mm, yeah, fuck that. It can definitely do that. Um, oh, for sure. For me, uh, I don't really, I'm not like a, a daily smoker anymore, but I mean, I still smoke and I, I do it probably like, I don't know, three days out of the week or something like that. Yeah. And honestly, I do it more when I'm doing shows like this because it kind of helps, I don't know, keep me, keep me level during a show. Because I feel like otherwise, like a lot of this new shit would like make me more, <laughs> I don't know, ornery or something. Maybe people want that though. Yeah, maybe they do. Maybe, but I ain't doing it. Fuck you. Mental health comes first. More Americans now smoke marijuana than cigarettes for the first time ever. Gallup reports. So yeah, um, more Americans now openly admit that they smoke marijuana or eat cannabis infused edibles uh, than say they smoke cigarettes in the past week. According to recent uh, data, so this is the first time in history, of course, this has happened. Yeah, I don't know if this is the first time this has been true, but this is the first time that you know that that data is out there. Which, you, if you're like Marlboro or something, you got to be kind of sweating that. Like, <sighs> what? No, because the Marlboro and the big cigarette companies and shit have been heavily investing in weed in the legal states and shit. Like, yeah, they're, they're pretty soon you'd be like Marlboro Green. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, now with fucking a bunch of chemical additives, <laughs> we they've, they'll they'll ruin marijuana. Watch them do it. Yeah, no, no, bought weed no farms, crescent yeah. slice, no cap, man. Two weeks, close to two weeks now. I haven't I haven't taken a single puff or eaten an edible or anything. I think that's cool. I don't really miss it either. Like, yeah, I kind of do. Like, there's the, there's the, there's like this thing in my brain that goes like, oh, you should smoke a joint. Then I go, nah, and that's about that's the extent of it. You know what I find is that um, habits are tied to location and like oh, for triggers sure. and shit way more than people fucking give them credit for. Because one yeah, thing I sure. noticed is like I had I've always struggled to get my binge eating under control and treated it like a willpower thing. But now I treat it like a it's happening because I'm in the area where the food is kind of thing. If I'm in the kitchen, I'm going to do that. So right. when I feel like I'm starting to do that, I leave the kitchen and it goes away. Well, because, yeah, you can't get your hands on it in another room, you know? Right. But I mean, I, I like the even the urge to like, I want to go back in the kitchen and do it some more like that goes away. But like, as long as I stay in the kitchen, it's like, ooh, eat mode. We're in eat mode now. Yum, yum, yum. But if mm-hmm. I just eat, if I go in there and I like eat a couple things, then I'm like, all right, time to go. I sit down. I don't think about food anymore. So it's like, OK, cool. That's how you do it. It's about being in that room. It's that's the trigger for it. Because if I'm in there grazing, I'm going to think eat, 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 eat. But if I remove myself from that environment, it's not long before that fucking thought fades away. And I'm just like, okay, I'm cool. Yep. So like stuff like that, way more of a factor than you people think. Like people always talk about willpower and shit. Like willpower, relying on willpower is a fucking sucker's bet. Because your willpower ain't gonna fucking ain't gonna hold up against the little voice in your head going, yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta fucking avoid the triggers for that shit. That is that is very true, very very true. At least that's what I've discovered. Uh, so New York banned sale of cans of whipped cream to those under twenty one years old. People doing whippets, whippets, yeah, like, whippets have been around forever, dude. They're really like, dangerous, though. I, I know no, they're dangerous, no but like you know, I mean, like this shit's been around forever. But the people that are really into doing whippets, they're not they're not going through endless cans of whipped cream. They're 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 doing yeah, they like get, they get their they hands get the on cartridges. products, you know. Yeah, they get the little cartridges. I mean, you shit. can buy them. They're not those aren't illegal, you know what I mean? Like Whip you it can good. you can buy the little CO2 cartridges or whatever they use to make the whipped cream and get a little whipped cream bottle like they have at Starbucks. And so apparently in. this thing has been on the books since 2021, but uh it's only now they're they're starting to enforce it basically uh they didn't they didn't uh, enforce it for a while but now they are Uh, the legislation was sponsored by uh saints saint 
is that state senator? That's state senator Joseph P. A, a, a boat Adobo Jr. of Queens. He says it has been a major problem with young teens abusing the cans to get a quick high off the nitrous oxide inside the cans, also known as whippets. Whippet, whippets, whippets, just different spellings of the same phrase there. Uh, the new law is an important step in combating the significant problem, blah, 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 blah. You know, I, I refuse to believe this is like a fucking major issue or something. See, teachers quoting Atomic Habits, thanks for the wreck. Yeah, that was the fucking book that opened my eyes to that kind of shit. I want to read that again because I've already like lost some of those lessons, but that's definitely the most... Th I think that book... I hate to fucking shill a self-help book of any kind, but it really it really does have some fucking good shit in there. Hey, if it helps, it helps, you know. Um, I always pace myself. I would buy a bag after I'm done and go three months without smoking. Yeah, I mean, I'm at the point now where, like, I, I used to go through, like, an ounce in a month easy. Now I'm at the point where if I buy an ounce, it's, like, pretty much going to last me, like, a quarter of the year. So it's, like, yeah. three months now. And now that I Chelsea mean, ain't smoking, it's going even slower, I think. So I've never been able to pace myself with that shit. Like I I've been a daily, all day, every day smoker for close to 10 years. I mean, I not maybe not when I was working a job or whatever, like a real out in the world <coughs> job. But you know, like as soon as I got home, got stoned. You know, so yeah. You know what I started to do, Joe? I don't know if you have like a bathtub or something. I started taking like baths and like listening to audio books while I'm like sitting in the tub I like put on a chapter and I just kind of listen to it that way and just kind of chill in the tub and like relax because like it's really hard for me to relax I'm not like a, a person who's like really prone to relaxation so I find that like doing that was like a, a, a an actually relaxing activity I could do I should probably get back into that habit honestly because I kind of fell out of that but uh yeah Man, whatever place I move to next, uh, I hope it has a nice bathtub because the bathtub in the place that I'm in now is just like it's built for somebody like a quarter my size. Oh, yeah. I mean? I mean, the one I'm in is ridiculously small for me. Like when I first moved here for the first year and or some, some change, I lived in this house. I didn't use it because I just assumed it was too small. But now I just kind of like try to make it work, even yeah. though like I'm hanging out of the thing at all sides. It's like <laughs> sitting in like a uh, I don't know. It's like 10 pounds of dough in a shot glass, you know, that's right. what I feel yeah. like. That's basically what it is. But I fucking, I make it work somehow. I mean, it's like, I think it's like just barely accept, but like, I would love like a big, huge tub. Like I used to have at my previous place. Like, ah, yes. But yeah. Am I worried about water in California yet? Of course. I mean, I, I gotta, I hate to bring it to you, but unless you're in some very uh, specific places, you should be worried about water too. Yeah, water is a concern in a lot of places right now. <laughs> it's not just a California issue. Fresh water is going to become, uh, you know, one of the most valuable, it already is one of the most valuable commodities, but it's going to become the, you know, the uh, impetus for war and shit because it's dry, you know, it's disappearing. So I brought this up a little uh, earlier on a previous show we were doing, but I figured we might as well cover it a little bit more in depth here. Right. Shaquille O'Neal's theory on why the earth is flat. I flew 20 hours today. I didn't tip over. Oh, shit. See, this, this is one of the Jeez. dumbest fucking things. Uh, once again, Shaq needs to be dealt with for this. But um, yeah, <laughs> so the, the, for those of you that can't visualize this, this is what a flat earther will say. All right. So here's the earth, right? My fist is the earth. And here's the plane. Doo -doo 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 -doo. If you fly far enough on the plane, doo -doo 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 -doo, you get around <laughs> the other side and you're upside down. <laughs> you know, and that doesn't make any fucking sense oh. given what we know about gravity and, and shit. It just doesn't work that way, man. And, you know, we've given Shaq's props on this show in the past for being a great entrepreneur, which he is. Like, he's got business sense. But yeah, sure. obviously, business sense and common sense ain't the fucking same thing because this is ridiculous. So, yeah. um, for example, I flew 20 hours today. Don't you explain? Not once did I go this way. I didn't go straight. I didn't tip over. I didn't go upside down. It's still a straight line, said O'Neill. You don't go under. It's just a theory. Another theory, they said the world is spinning. I've been living in this house on a lake for 30 years. Not once did the lake rotate to the left or to the right. That's not it, how it works, Shaq. It's true, O'Neill said. The earth is flat. There's three ways to manipulate the mind. What you read, what you see, and what you hear. In school, first thing they teach us, 
oh, Columbus discovered America. But when you get get got there, it was some fair skinned people with long hair smoking on peace pipes. What does that tell you? Man, we need to call in a, an audible from oh God, what's his name? I'm gonna forget his name now. Black science guy. Yeah. We need a uh, uh, yeah, we need fucking Neil deGrasse Tyson on yep, this. Yep. Get Neil deGrasse to fucking have uh, See, people don't like Neil deGrasse Shad. Tyson anymore because they find him too pedantic, but this is exactly why he's needed. Yeah, no. Because otherwise need, this shit goes rampant. You need fucking are, Neil deGrasse Tyson to go smack the shit out of Shaq, dude. There are people that you need to talk to like they're a second grader or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Neil deGrasse Tyson needs to show up and fucking like explain to Shaq that he's a fucking moron, okay? That needs to happen. Yep. <laughs> uh... While the Earth appears round, wait. So what is this? This is not Shaq here. This is the National Ocean Ocean Service. I'm gonna go take a leak. I'll be right back. Okay. Is this a, this is a flat Earth group? I think. While the Earth appears round when viewed from the vantage point of space, it's actually closer to an ellipsoid. However, even an ellipsoid does not adequately describe the Earth's unique and overchanging shape. Our planet is okay. So this is a, an act, this is actual science. They're just not saying it's not like a perfect circle, basically. Why Neil? Lol. Why not Neil? Because he's like, wait, are you saying it's because he's black that I, we want? Neil? No, it's because he's like one of the foremost science educators in the fucking country, dude. I thought people disliked Neil D. Tyson because he touched women with her explicit permission and later felt slightly awkward about it. No one cares about that, okay? Like, that was, there, was a, there was a few people who pretended to care about that for about two minutes. That was fucking, like, that was the most nothing burger of fucking Me Too accusations in history. Neil deGrasse Tyson was awkward on a date with a woman oh my god <laughs> he touched her hand and she didn't explicitly want her hand touched at that exact moment he misread the room he's a monster basically a demon no fuck that no one cares about that that's that's stupid anyone who does care about that should be fucking i guess we'll use the term of the day dealt with they should be given a stern talking to. They should get a long lecture about what they done. It didn't even blow. I mean, like it did. It was nothing. It was nothing from the inception. Oh no, no, no. She absolutely agreed to it. Whatever. Then I don't. I don't care. It's 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 nothing either way. It's a nothing burger either way. If you reach out, like there are certain things that you don't do without explicit consent. Grabbing a hand is not one of them. If you're on a date and it seems like it's going well. And you touch the hand, that's not like, oh my God, rape has happened. Like, shut up. You're a fucking imbecile. You're fucking trivializing sexual assault at that point. Neil deGrasse Tyson took Carl Sagan class in uni. Everything he knows a white guy taught him. Is that what you're saying, you racist piece of shit? I, I thank you kindly for your money, but you can keep your racist remarks to yourself, good sir. We don't need that shit around these here parts. Nah, nah. Uh, let's see what's next. As Biden goes on offense, Trump goes unhinged. What is it? so? Here's my problem with this headline. I don't know what this what the content of this article is going to be. But what do you mean Trump goes unhinged? Like when was he ever hinged? Do you guys remember a period where we had a hinge to Trump? I mean, I thought that motherfucker was unhinged even when I saw his ass on that that Apprentice show back in the day. Oh, yeah, he's you know, been I'd unhinged. Be, I'd be flipping through those channels, and I'd fucking turn on, I'd see The Apprentice, and sometimes my, I guess my family used to watch The Apprentice. So, you know, sometimes I'd be over there, and The Apprentice would be on or something, because I don't watch that shit on my own. But, like, you know, I'd see him sitting there with his little pouty lips, this, this orange mafioso-looking goon, just like, be defied. You fired. And then people would be like, oh, man. You know? didn't, you, didn't you and Scotty watch that? Or was it, maybe it was you just on a stream. I, I thought, yeah, that's what it was. You were doing a stream and you watched that um, fucking um, Jamie Foxx has the best Trump. Oh, my God, dude. It was like perfect. It's insane how perfect it was. Perfect fucking it nuts, dude. If when you I, close your eyes, it's him. You know, When what I, I mean? showed like, that clip to Chelsea, she was literally confused because she's like, where's Trump? Yeah. Like where she's like looking for Trump somewhere. Like they, she, is he on a video? Is he in the room? Where the fuck is he? Yeah. it's. And nice. then when she realized it was Jamie Foxx doing the voice, she was like, holy fucking shit. But you know what, you know what this is? It's like, I think a lot of people would look at this and go, 
oh, the media didn't learn its fucking lesson after 2016. The rabid coverage of Trump, even if it's like 99% negative, only helps him. But I, I really think that they did learn their lesson. They want Trump back. Dude, Trump was a fucking gold mine for them. He was just cover everything he tweets, cover every fucking restaurant he eats at, everything he says, every stupid fucking just, ad nauseum. It was just Dude, free all, news. I mean, like, I mean, you can look at the fucking ratings of CNN and all these. Like, they CNN and MSNBC and like Rachel Maddow and places like that, they were all fucking doing buku ratings when Trump was in office. Now, yeah, no one now they've tanked. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, because like these guys got way more. Co I mean, they they did fucking way better with Trump in in power, because oh, yeah. there was because the people who hate Trump tuned into that for their like their dose of of Trump hate. You know, like oh yeah, I want to see Rachel Maddow fucking hate on Trump. Yeah, hate that son of a bitch. Fuck him. Fuck him. Yeah, yeah. Fuck him. Arr! Yeah, and there are tons of people too that are going like, oh, he his goose is cooked now. Trump is there's no way he coming back from this. And it's like, man, th those those are the people that have not learned a fucking thing. <clears throat> yeah, like until his ass is dead or in prison, <laughs> you can't say that. Yeah. Um, President Joe Biden has sharpened his rhetoric against Republicans lately, liking them to fascists and saying they don't believe in democracy. I mean, at least he's not going out there fucking uh saying that we should all get along at this point. <laughs> Cause that was always a fucking note. That was always a non starter. Yep. Uh, former President Donald Trump, meanwhile, shared a photoshopped image of Biden pooping his pants. <laughs> it's it's spreading. The poop your the the shit is britches meme is spreading around. Man, poopy pants Biden. The contrast between the current and former president has never been starker as Biden signs landmark bills into law. Landmark bills. Trump readies a possible 2024 campaign while squirming on the various federal investigations into his potentially illegal conduct before and after leaving the White House. Trump He's... unraveled. Unraveled. Tuesday on Truth Social, his social media platform where, unlike Twitter or Facebook, he can share gross and inflammatory content unchecked. The former president spent the morning amplifying bizarre memes of Biden, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and Nancy Pelosi. It followed a similar meltdown, meltdown Trump had on Monday when he demanded a do-over election that would presumably reinstate him as the president nearly two years after he lost to Biden by 7 million votes. Uh, Dude, I love these idiots, too. Do-over like election, Aaron, bro. <laughs> this Aaron Rupar guy, it's like, they, they'll, they'll talk in one breath about how, like, Trump has been cordoned off on his own weird little site or whatever. Here's a reposting of everything he says minute to minute on that weird little site right here on Twitter and Facebook and everything else. It's like, you know what I mean? Like you're just, you're yeah, just you gotta helping frame, this. But before you show it to people, you got to frame it. Trump yeah. has meltdown. It's like, whatever, man. He's melting down. Look at it. Look at the meltdown, y'all. Yeah. Trump disheveled. Trump I mean, yeah, like I love the adjectives in this. It's just like Biden's bill, landmark. Oh, land. It's like it's okay. It's an all right bill. He signed an okay piece of legislation. All right, good, yay. Right. But it's not, he waited. It's not he landmark. Yeah, waited till like the midterms. The midterms like, to do two it. Fucking ticks of the fuck of your watch away, which lets you know. Like, like I guess I guess I shouldn't like you know poo poo it because even if he does something good for a cynical reason, it's still you know something. Yeah, that's I mean it's like it's, good, it's, but... it's the best you're gonna get, right? Right. Yeah. Like that's as that's as good as it fucking gets until like until there's actually some kind of fundamental change. This is the best. Like within the context of this system, that is literally the best you're gonna fucking could fucking hope for. Is like, all right, here's a here's a fucking one twentieth measure of what I promised. Yep. It's like, but it's okay. Well, I guess like. You know, I mean, uh, Chelsea's student debt's wiped out by that. She, I'm personally going to benefit from it. She's personally going to benefit. I can't fucking totally be like, it's shit. But is it like really what was promised? No. We were told yeah. there was, we were told about, we were, we were sold the fucking lie about the eradication of student debt. Not like a little bit of, like little sliver of relief. It was like, we're going to get rid of this shit. This shit's holding too much. This shit's holding our entire country back. It's holding our economy back. People are fucking spending all their money on student loan debt. They're not fucking going out there and buying shit, which is like we live in a consumer culture. Yep. So they're not buying things, which means they're not creating demand, which means the economy is slowing down. 
So let's get rid of this fucking mountain of fucking debt these people are under because it's too much. We need to fix this whole goddamn sh uh, system. But instead, it's like, all right, well, well, we'll, we'll knock a little off the top for you. Because I know people who have $100,000 in student loan debt, and they, they're down to 90 now. And that's good. Yeah. And they're, they're grateful for it. But they're still kind of like, well, you know, I still got a mountain of student loan debt here. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely doesn't help people that are in that uh, dire circumstance yeah, at all, I mean, like, like, really at all. That's a lie, TJ. What's a lie? Biden only promised 10K relief. Dude, Biden kept shit very vague on the campaign trail. There was definitely times when he promised much more extravagant measures than 10K. He yeah. did not just be like, oh, yeah, 10K. No, he talked, he talked very vaguely about student uh, loan relief while he had other more radical voices in the Democrat Party fucking go around touting complete relief. Basically trying to fucking capitalize on the populist fucking message of Bernie Sanders in a very cynical way. So there you go. 20K if you got a Pell Grant. Yeah, that's true. But not everyone got a Pell Grant. And not everyone fucking had a federal loan in the first place. And that's only for federal loans. So this is far, it's a far cry from what was needed, but still. Uh, so yeah, I agree with Paul. Like if you're going to fucking, if you're going to cordon off Trump, don't bother reporting on everything he fucking says or does from his little cordoned off space. Because then you just defeat the purpose. Yeah, I mean, if that's, just, if, if, if that's really want really gone, just ignore his ass. That, they don't though. Even even the people that like claim they want him gone and shit, the 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 uh, you know non media figures on social media don't really want him gone. You know what I mean? Because if they did, they would realize that every time they breathlessly retweet some stupid shit he said over on Truth Social, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're just amplifying his message beyond what he would be. Uh, What's know, going on at Truth? What's going on at Truth Social right now? What's happening at Truth Social? Maybe I should get a Truth Social since my Twitter got banned, you know? Maybe it's time for me to make the jump to Truth so you'd Social. Be, you'd be banned within a day over there, too. Well, you know, probably right. <laughs> be like, fuck Trump. Actually, it's actually against the rules of Truth Social to criticize Trump, so I'd definitely be gone. Yeah. No criticism of Trump. Trump God. It's like, ooh, what like, a free speech platform. <laughs> yeah, the freedom of speech platform. Yeah, gotta love it. Don't criticize Trump, no. No criticize Trump. No criticize people who own Truth Social. Criticize others. Biden announces plan to curb gun violence. Oh, boy. Plan. I don't know what the plan is. Let's hear it. Today yeah. in Philadelphia, yet another bullet-riddled car. A father shot dead at a gas station. A 14 and 10-year-old survived. Little more than 100 miles away, President Biden defended his record on crime ahead of this year's midterms. When it comes to public safety in this nation, the answer is not. Public safety in this nation. When it comes to public safety in this nation, it's not the pages of the bargain It's just like, man, <laughs> fuck. Mush mouth. When it comes to public safety in this nation. So, so see, you guys just visit it. <laughs> Dude, he's more, he's more unintelligible than Trump. I know. I feel like his 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 speech patterns are more, unless you know, aside from when he just trails off into nothing. But like his speech patterns are more coherent. I'll give him that. But um, the actual way he talks, he's way more mush mouthed. He just kind of like this. Tell you something, Jack. You can't fucking see that with no in there. It's like you're turning into Boomhauer or something. Like what is going on? There's so many slurs. Not racial ones, just like old fashioned. <laughs> not defund the police, it's fund the police. His Yay! Yay, police! Yeah, that's the solution is police. Yay! This is just the like left wing. Just like in Uvalde, wing. the solution was police. Yep. This is the left wing of American politics, by the way. Yeah. More cops. Hey, y'all, I'm here to be the alternative candidate to the other guy. And all he says he wants to fund the police. Well, I want to fund them even harder, y'all. So what about all the people who are like, fuck the police? What about all the people who have criticisms of the police? What about people who think policing in America needs fundamental fucking change? Fund the police. You have you have no representative. Yeah, you get yeah. you don't get one. No. Nope. Just like on Israel, you don't get one. Nope. On Wall Street, you don't get one. On US foreign policy in general, you don't get one. 
economics. You don't. Yeah, get you don't get. You don't get. A, you don't get a fucking representative in any of that shit. Ninety percent of issues, you got no representation. Ha 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 ha. Fuck you. You fucking. Uh, all right. Administration's plan to curb gun violence includes thirteen billion dollars over the next five years to hire more police officers. Biden just won the fart contest, Paul. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> man, dude, we just got decimated in the fart off, man. I can't even summon one up that good. Stinky. Thirteen billion. Yeah. I guess uh I guess we how how quickly we forget, huh? How about how thirteen quickly we forget? How about thirteen billion dollars to reform police departments and change the paradigm of hiring the dumbest fucking dupes among us to to give them guns and run around and take out all their fresh. Were you a people. high school bully who is now looking for some place to continue to feel that surge of power? Do you have a deep seated need to impose yourself on other people despite your lack of ability to display leadership traits? <laughs> Join the police. You know what I mean? Uh, meanwhile, right when always asked, how are we going to fund universal health care? How are we going to do it? I talk about it constantly, like the fact that, 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 that that's the truth. You know what I mean? That like police uh, recruit the, the like dumb people, like yeah. the, the, the biggest dupes, the most aggressive fucking Dunning-Kruger idiots. That to me is like just a sign of like our our utter fucking uh, worthlessness as a nation. Like you're you we're getting the dumbest, most aggressive people among us and giving them guns and power over everybody else. That, I remember like a um like a year ago or so, cops came to my door looking for someone who doesn't fucking live here, like you know Bradley Jenkins or some bullshit. Yeah, and I said, is a Brad is there a Bradley Jenkins here? No. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, sorry to bother you. We don't we don't on Bow's way. But I remember when I opened the door and like went out to go talk to him and stuff, just like I walked out there, you know, because I got animals and stuff. I don't want to fucking have them uh, run out while I'm standing there opening this door for this cop. So I just walk out my door and you know, I'm pretty tall and stuff. This dude's mm -hmm. like a really short cop, and I could tell like he's apprehensive standing next to me, which makes sure. me worried because like, you know, he's got a gun. Yeah, he's got a gun and right. a bunch so of it's other like, shit. And he's there, like, really nervous to be in my presence. Like, you know. Yep. Like, I'm going to do something. Like, why am I going to attack him just for coming to my door? I'm not going to do that. But he's scared. He's scared of that happening. Like, it's on his mind that that could happen. Yep. So I got to be very... So that means I got to be very nice and, like, not make sudden movements and be, like, very friendly. Because I got this nervous Nancy standing on my door that could fucking pull a gun and shoot me in the fucking face. And yeah. no one would fucking do anything. Well, he's legally justified in doing it. He's the yeah. only public like, official oh, well, that's you know, legally he made justified. A, he, made a, he, made a, you know, he made a threatening gesture, and I had to make a split-second decision. Yeah, and of course, there's probably no body cams where you're at, so it'd just be his word. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He gets so, something you know, in his head very, that you're... I gotta be very fucking, you know, nice to this guy. I gotta be very fucking non-threatening. I gotta make sure my hands are where he can see them. I can't make sudden moves or anything like that. Yeah. I got to be very pleasant and very friendly and let him know I'm not a threat to him. Which sucks because, like, you know, this dude shows up at my house, wants some information about some dude don't fucking live there. And I got to be real fucking careful not to fucking incite this guy's fucking fear reflex because he's, he's there. He's there in terror. Just for make. I mean, like, I'm uh, because I'm just because I'm standing there. Yep. Like I talk to people all the time. I go around the world and I talk to all kinds of fucking people in this in the goddamn world and shit. I mean, I'm not like a super social person, but like I talk to people sometimes. People will talk to me. How tall are you? Um, I'm about six six. Oh wow. You play basketball. You know, so like whatever. And no one's fucking scared. No one's standing there. <gasps> a tall person. <gasps> Little old ladies come to be like in the grocery store, like, can you help me reach the peas? Like, oh, sure. Here you go. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure your your size and height and stuff has something to do with it. But these motherfuckers are nervous and jumpy yeah. around everybody. You know what I mean? Well, it was because he's a short little guy. I'm like standing over him, looking down at him, which a lot which these guys remember are very insecure dudes. So they don't like the fact that they're being looked down on, even though there's no other way I can do it. I can't get on my fucking hands and knees to look up at you like, oh, oh, oh. You know, you know, you know what we need to do? Get some like 
sci-fi TJ, nobody asked you if you play basketball ever element dude you're such a fucking moron dude i get asked i get asked that to this day to this day i get asked that and football too dude if you are tall it doesn't matter what physical shape you're in you will get asked if you play basketball you're pissing me off like you no one's ever asked you that tj how the fuck would you know you just make an assumption because i'm like kind of chubby i'm not even that fucking fat dude just another idiot that needs to be fucking dealt with, dude. But you know, like if I fucking uh yeah, deal with him. Scotty beats TJ nine to ten low diff. Uh like in basketball? I don't even know. Or just like in life. I don't, I don't know what the fuck is happening. But yeah, I get fucking asked that shit all the time. You're too unathletic, bro. That do you that, do you think that a person just looks at me and like can assess that? Like, oh, that guy's not athletic. That guy's not athletic at all. Uh, they don't know that. They don't know that looking at my ass. All they see is sick. All they see is like big giant guy. Wonder if play basketball. Wonder if play football. Even dumber question I get. How did you get so tall? How? There wasn't. It was. It's not a fucking skill, bitch. <laughs> like there yeah. was no decision making. Anyway, I'm I'm banning this guy because he really annoys the fucking shit out of me. Yeah, I don't man. like him. You know, I don't like him. I don't like his stupid question. He insulted me. You know what the me. sad thing is, is you just you just fulfilled what he wanted by banning him. I know. Like that's now where he, he go, now I guess go around and do his victory trot. Like, oh, I got to him. <laughs> I got to I him. I made an impact on somebody. <laughs> I matter. <laughs> uh, yeah, the first time in my life I did something that somebody took notice of. Yes. Sterilization. I win. Steril like well, actually with that person sterilization would probably be a moot point. He's never going to get fucking. Yeah, you know, anyway. that's, that's going to take care of itself, bro. Right. <laughs> okay, we still need to hear Biden's gun violence plan. We got off on a tangent. Sorry. Three billion dollars to help courts clear backlogs and a 13 percent increase in the ATF's budget for new investigators to help. I hate this plan. I hate this plan. I hate this plan. This plan fucks sucks. It sucks balls. It's horrible. It's a horrible plan. This is a horrible plan. This is a nightmare. This is a Republican plan. This is not good. This shouldn't be done. Yeah. Fuck this plan. This sucks. Do this you know like, that? This is like a Trump plan. I don't mean to get carried away with this fucking guy you banned. Maybe, okay, you know, gotcha. But, We're but gonna, he's more interesting than this, I guess. He made me think of something. Okay, it, it's it's like a phenomenon on the internet where it's like like people will search out these lol cows or whatever. Huh? So like, there's a dude you probably haven't heard of him, like named Wings of Redemption. He was like a Call of Duty streamer or whatever that everybody hates. He's a big fat guy that like raised a bunch of money to get gastric bypass surgery and then ate his way. He beat the surgery basically. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got, you. um, you know, which is a shitty thing to do. And he said some stupid shitty racist things in the past or whatever, but like he is completely outshined in shittiness by this community of people that have gathered to like troll him or whatever. When you read their comments and shit on videos that are trolling him, they're just like monosyllabic idiots. You know what I mean? You can tell like this is the shining moment in their day. This is where they get to feel righteously superior I've to another potent. fucking person. I yep. destroyed wings of redemption. <laughs> I'm the like, greatest. We we guys, we got him. We got him, y'all. <laughs> yeah. And they'll just repeat the same shit over and over and over again. And he's he's at least just as dumb as them, so he doesn't know how to ignore them. So it's just like this ecosystem that of a of self, yeah, a self fulfilling system of fucking people yeah. screaming. It's just like where the below at one another. The, it's where the 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 frightfully below average can go to get a little ego boost. You know what I mean? Well, I guess they need it. It's Good fucking insane. It really is, dude. There are people that just like live their lives basking in like the shittiness of another fucking person on the internet. And, you know, they're doing nothing but like help him. They're bringing views and discussion and shit. I just fucking hate. I hate the fucking internet, man. Like once again, here's some more authoritarian shit. One of the worst things that ever happened was the internet. Like, not necessarily the information gathering part of the internet. Like, that's what it really should have been. It should have been like a library so you didn't have to go to the library. That's really where the internet should have stopped. Making it a big social place where every little fuck stain can have his, like, moment in the sun, even if it's only in his own, own mind. You know what I mean? That's the, yeah. that's the worst shit. That's how that's what we do though. So fuck that. I want <laughs> I need this. 
<laughs> well, I mean, you know, like I can rant against it all I want. And it's not. Yeah, going it's not going away. At least it's uh, it's only going to get worse. It's and people, safe. You know. I don't have to worry about it. All right, I'm going to try one more time to remove this fucking paywall. No, I guess it doesn't work on this site. They've countermeasured the countermeasure. Okay, hold on. I have to fucking figure out a different site source for this uh, this story. Judy, because I don't want to miss this Giuliani story. Oh, there's a Giuliani update. Yeah, there is. The, the Giuliani Chronicles uh, continue. All right, here you go. This is a this is a good follow up to the Biden. Let's more cops, Jack. Got too many guns. Need more cops, Jack. So Rudy Giuliani says police can't. Uh, police have a hard time because they can't punch you. They can't. Yeah, they're not. They they're not allowed to punch no more. So since that's when? the problem. I don't know. I don't know since I don't know since when. But Rudy Giuliani lamented that police officers can no longer punch civilians in an interview over the weekend. You can't touch anybody. Here, let's just watch it. Well, you no, can't what, use your gun. You can't touch anybody. Because, right. You know, one of the reasons the cops are having a hard time. Oh my God! Like, Listen to that voice. <laughs> he sounds like a. He sounds like a skexy. Dude, what is going on? His what is voice has totally fucking straight up gone away. Yeah, that is. Just, he's uh, man. He's on the fucking decline. Holy shit! That didn't even sound like him anymore. <laughs> Not strong enough. They're not allowed to touch you between here and here. They can't punch you. I had an uncle who was the most decorated police officer. That just sucks. That the cops can't brutalize people anymore, even though they can, and that's not even true. But if they couldn't, that'd be horrible. You know what I mean? Yep. You know what I mean, I would. Dude, I, it, it would just be poetic justice if Rudy got pulled over by one of these rage beasts who didn't recognize him and got the fuck beat out of him. You know what I mean? Like right after this interview. Well, then I'd have to support cops brutalizing people. I know. <laughs> be like, you know what? Maybe Rudy did have a point. See me. See for me. I, I, as I get older, I'm starting to learn that it's not that the cops, uh, like brutalize, like are brutalizing people that bothers me. They're brutalizing the wrong people. Yeah, it's just know? like wrong, right idea, wrong demo. You know, just what poor I mean? black guys just going about their fucking business. Poor people just sleeping in their fucking homes. You know that they, stop stop harassing those people and go find some of these militia assholes, these shitty politicians. Fuck them up. You know, I immediately Maybe back the blue if that happens. Bernie Carrot, two three people down from the top of the Brooklyn Bridge, right. has two Navy awards. Great hero. My uncle had a knockout punch. All he had to do was blow it past. Yeah, you know. Oh my God, he's <laughs> such a doddering my old fool. Uncle, basically, my uncle had a knockout punch. You punched you one time, you flew to the moon, and you never did no wrong again. But nowadays, can't punch nobody no more. Like, oh my God, dude, just die already. Yep. Just die already so Paul can make the episode. Yep, please. <laughs> he was 6'4", but you can be 6'4 and not have a knockout punch. Right. This guy had it. My right. It's right. Like, so weird hearing a real human voice next to his. Yep, right. I can't even I can't even like sound approximate that horse horse. I know it's hard. You have to like really fucking gotta really destroy your throat to get to that point. Yep. Giuliani fucking was like he smoked ten packs of cigarettes and sucked a horse dick before he did this fucking interview. I could put you down with one punch. Nowadays, if he he when he think of the people he didn't have to shoot because of that. Right. Oh yeah, true. True. Better to punch him than shoot him, right? Yeah. One punch, you're done. He, He's basically saying his uncle was one punch man, dude. Yep. <laughs> he just fucking, you show up, one punch, you're done. You're done. Any man, any do man, a, woman, or child, my uncle could knock him out with one punch. Do a two or three parter. I mean, it might end up being that, but I am n I'm not going to commit to doing any of those fucking shows uh, until there's an end to the story because... Every fucking week, at least, if not every other day, he's doing some stupid fucking shit. My uncle was a police officer. I say he used to subdue criminals by tickling them. It works. I think your uncle just had a tickling fetish, all right? And, like, found an, a fucking demographic that couldn't say no. Because that yeah. sounds very suspect to me. Because <laughs> there, there are dudes out there who are super into, like, tickling. So I'm thinking that maybe, and it's like, a lot of times it's gay dudes, by the way. And uh, yeah, I think your uncle was one of those dudes. 
and just found like, oh yeah, I like to tickle the criminals. That uh, incapacitates them very effectively, honestly. Oh, dude, that's it a good point. Really good. <laughs> Rudy's all all about the tough talk about how cops should be slugging people, and this is the pussy that like fucking oh, claim yeah. claim somebody tried to tackle him when he just got a back pat from yeah, a dude. some dude pats him on the back and he's like, oh, he nearly he acted like it was like the reverberations from it was like knocking people next to him down, like that video is deceptive. Yep, I actually got it real bad. <laughs> Oh my god, what a fucking twat. What a dumbass. Die already, man. God, he looks weird. It's time to fucking it's hey, Grim Reaper, if you're watching, it's time to take this motherfucker away, all right? It's time it's time to take him. Dude, somebody I said I don't care that- what your little book of life and death says, dude. It's time to just fucking, you know, this one's bump, bumping up the schedule. It's time for Somebody him to says go. he looks like the crypt keeper and I feel like that's that's really like unkind to the crypt keeper. Right. What did the Crypt Keeper ever do for that comparison to be drawn? I know he's like a, he's got like kind of a, a wicked little sense of humor, but we've never seen the Crypt Keeper actually kill anybody or anything. Yeah, I know. Quick, uh, the Crypt Keeper is way more spry and way more attractive than Rudy Giuliani. Dude, if I, I mean, dude, if it came right down to it and they, you know, someone fucking gun to my head is like, you got to suck the dick of either Rudy Giuliani or the Crypt Keeper. Like, you know what? Bring, bring me down, the, bring me down to the Crypt. Yeah, uh, I want to fucking do, I want to go through the whole intro and shit of that fucking thing. But at the end, instead of him just laughing, I'm going to get down on my knees and suck his Crypt Keeper dick because I do that a million times. I do that every day for the rest of my life before I suck Rudy Giuliani's dick once. All right, dude. Uh, yeah, I would I would uh, like suck the Crypt Keeper's dick every day rather than even look at Giuliani's weird <laughs> shriveled fucking salsich, dude. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Yeah. Agree. Agree. Agri. Cool. Y'all stupid AF. Ha <laughs> Man, look at your look at this brain rot on display, man. <laughs> I talk in emojis and fucking shortened acronyms. That's a person that's just been raised on the fucking internet, dude. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be the people taking care of us in our twilight years, dude. They'll be in charge in our twilight years. Think about mm-hmm. that, dude. It'll be fine. Vegan mom gets life in prison after malnutrition death of boy who ate only raw fruit, vegetables, and breast milk. Sheila O'Leary, 38, was convicted of first-degree murder, aggravated child abuse, aggravated manslaughter, child abuse, and two counts of child neglect. A vegan woman in Florida has been sentenced to life in prison after the malnutrition death of her young son... Sheila Leary, 38, was convicted of six charges last June. First-degree murder, aggravated child abuse, aggravated manslaughter, child abuse, and two counts of child neglect. Authorities have said that O'Leary was responsible for the death of her son, Ezra. A strict vegan, O'Leary and her husband, Ryan, fed Ezra only raw fruits and vegetables as well as breast milk. According to police reports obtained by NBC15, Ezra was 18 months old when he died. In September 2019, he weighed only 17 pounds, the size of a seven-month-old baby. When paramedics answered Sheila O'Leary's 911 call on September 27, 2019, they said that they found Ezra not breathing and his two siblings, ages three and five, showing the effects of extreme malnourishment, said Cape Coral Police. Uh, the O'Leary's told police officers their diet comprised only of raw fruit and vegetables. The medical examiner ruled the boy's cause of death to be complications of malnutrition, including dehydration, affecting the liver and swelling of the child's hands, feet, lower legs. I love how these people are so fucking devoted to this vegan lifestyle they'll literally ignore the evidence of their own eyes like your children are malnourished your life your diet is clearly wrong your lifestyle is clearly shit should just Just be dealt with this should have been dealt with before it got to the point of them having children these people should have been identified as too stupid to breed by you know the breeding authority or whatever and uh you know just non-invasively fucking get their fucking tubes tied and shit that's done you know what I mean? This doesn't happen. These two people would do, do nothing but sit around and make each other miserable while they eat cu- nothing but cucumbers and shit. Yeah, like, can you know? t- pass the cucumber. <laughs> like, I'm fine. Like, that's the thing. It's like, I, I don't think that that should be a fr- infringed. If you want to sit around and fucking slowly starve yourself to death by eating shitty fucking vegetables and nothing but, you should be able to do that. But you shouldn't be able to bring a child into it. You know what I mean? That should just be... 
We we need that. I think that would solve more problems than any other fucking authoritarian. Look at all these damn type. vegans in here trying to defend. Well, you know, be out the only vegan, vegan diet. It's actually like, can be. Nobody yeah. said you couldn't. You fucking eat. like. Do what you want. I, I hate vegans, man. I fucking <laughs> I hate you, people, dude. dude that I will never eat a vegan so diet worse. just to spite you, fucking people, because you're so sensitive. You're like a fucking just. Oh, cause you're just like a, the, the clitoris of humanity. You know what I mean? It's just Dude, like, they come uh, to me. They come in and like they, they've got this new tactic they do now. And I know it's a tactic because it's multiples of them that do it. Yeah. They have this new thing. So the way they used to argue with you is they would just fucking like try to guilt trip you. Now they do that. But they also have this thing where they like pretend to like know your soul. And they're like, you know, deep down inside, you know, it's wrong. These animals being eaten. And I know that you feel the guilt and you've just repressed it and it's okay to let it out. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have that actually. Oh, you do. You do. Let it on out. Let it on out. That's just like gaslighting you. I know. That's it's like, like attempting, it. attempting to gaslight you into uh, uh, agreeing with their fucking vegan shit. Dude, you know what? Yeah, we got gaslighters in the, uh, we got gaslighters in the fucking family. I won't say who it was. But Chelsea was talking to a family member and uh, the family member was like, you know, you know, uh, can I ask you a question, Chelsea? Not too long ago, I was on the phone with you and I heard TJ come in the room. He's like, are you on the phone with fucking bleep again? And this like person's like a known gaslighter and shit. And it's like, we're actually starting to sit there because they said this statement and like give it the benefit of the doubt. Like, did I say that? Yeah. And I'm like, I know I didn't fucking say it. I know for a fact I didn't say it, but like the fact that they're putting it out there, even though I know that this is a gaslighting fuck yep. that does that shit, I'm still tempted to give them like the benefit of the doubt. Like maybe I did. Maybe I was just joking and they didn't. Maybe, maybe it was this way. Maybe they misheard I was saying this. I'm like, no, I'm being gaslit. That's all the fuck that's going on. Yep. So, you know, but it's hard because like some of these people are such expert gaslighters that they fucking will like confuse you into thinking like maybe. Well, yeah, most of them don't even know they're doing it. You know what I mean? It's just natural to them to uh, undermine your own fucking position to the point of making you question yourself. Super weird shit. Super weird shit. I, I think it's creepy, personally. I'm not down with that kind of shit. Okay, I'm going to give a brief uh, recap before we go on of, um, of our, uh, our perk levels and shit. Um, so, for... Uh, $50, stupid ass quizzes that's already been met. Uh, $100, cringe raps, including Jesus Christ, baby, a parody of Ice, oh, Ice, no. baby. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, let me see. And we're actually already at 200 so we've, we've already, we've already uh, funded Ben Shapiro's zone sector alpha. We are not quite to the level of uh, the Matt Walsh, they want to take motherhood away video yet. We have not yet Damn. funded Ben Shapiro's zone sector beta. And we are not yet at 10 new patrons, which will get you guys a mini gauntlet of 14 Jordan Peterson shorts. Yeah. Go become a patron. Some of you like credulous fucking fucks in the audience. Let me get like you want to become a patron you, that you said that to me. I remember yeah, you, you know, what you, remember, remember you guys actually the other day, I remember you saying you were sitting, you know, I was on the phone and I overheard you saying, I want to join the fucking pessimist productions, Patreon. And I noticed you still haven't done it. So it's like talk is cheap for you, I guess. Talk is cheap. But I know I heard you say that, so it's time. It's time to just fucking bite the bullet and do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've got we got two number... new patrons during the course of the show, so uh, or maybe I'm misreading that, but uh, I think we got two new. So we don't we're yep. we're eight away from that. So you guys maybe not get this uh, Jordan Peterson gauntlet. Nope. You guys have funded all this shit. I'm gonna highlight it for you. This is what you funded. This is what you have yet to fund. All right. So there you go. Um. Alex Jones claims Deep State will stage mass shootings to steal midterms weeks after admitting Sandy Hook lies. <laughs> Lesson learned. Yeah. Lesson learned, you guys. Sued almost into oblivion, and he's still out there doing the same shit. Because what else can he? Well, I mean, like, what else can he do? Right. This is what he's. This is where he is. Yeah. Keep your word. Listen to Coolman, y'all. Keep your fucking word. It's time. It's time, and you know it's time. Uh, I'm not even going to bother reading the headline. I just, it's just like, yeah, he's still out there. He's doing the same old shit. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it, it would actually shock me if he changed. I would be yeah. way more shocked if he actually changed his tune and, 
you know, uh, admitted wrongdoing and shit. But yeah, no, you know, is... guys, I said some fucked up shit, to be honest with you. So this is about Alex that. Jones in a nutshell here. <laughs> yeah. True be that. True that be. Dude, he's gotten like, not not that I have any room to talk, but he's gotten like enormously fat. Oh, well, I mean, I think it's the stress, you know? Uh, yeah, the stress, stress of being under eating. the trial and shit, you know, all that stuff. Which is bad, you know, it's a bad thing for him to do because, you know, he's trying to sell those fucking supplements that are supposedly going to put you in, like, some kind of peak physical condition, and yet look at him, he's just like, They're trying to, they're trying to, they're going to do a bunch of flags, false flags, trying to steal the election again, midterms. Remember when Alex Jones at least used to be, like, an outsider to the whole political process, and now he's just like, Republicans. We love Republicans here, just so y'all. Yeah. Like, man, when did you just become a mainstream Republican? Or did they just become you? I'm confused on that point, I guess. Thank you. Um dun, 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 dun. Imagine Alex Jones eating vegan and losing hundred pounds. He'd lose so many fans. He really wouldn't. They really wouldn't give a shit because they don't you'd act like you act like anyone on the right actually cares about hypocrisy at all. No, they, they don't. don't. They don't give a fuck about that. Dude, I remember. Alex Jones used to mercilessly rip on Kanye West. He used to be like, oh, he's a globalist. Hiding all this Illuminati imagery in his fucking songs and blah, 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 blah. And then as soon as Kanye started sucking Trump's dick, he was just like, I love Kanye. Yeah, Kanye, you know, he put those Illuminati things in his videos to raise awareness of the, that stuff's going on. It's what a hypocrite. And I've actually had several conversations with Kanye. He's a very bright guy. I love Kanye, and I think, you know, you know, he's putting out a lot of good stuff right now, a lot of great Christian stuff. Stand up for Jesus in a world ruled by Satan. You know, it's like, all right, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Settle down, bitch. It's another thing that needs to be handled by uh, new reconstruction. You know what I mean? We need to, like, scoop yeah. people like that up off the street. act two. Send them to irony class so that they can learn it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, and learn how not to do it. I miss sucking my gut, Alex Jones. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. More than 150,000 people in Jackson, Mississippi, are once again trying to survive without reliable, clean water. Oops. Oopsie-daisy. Good old Miss Mississippi's Shepard. capital, capital city, right, uh, was struggling to keep the water flowing for more than 150,000 people on Tuesday after floods deepened ongoing problems with the city's aging water system. Mississippi and the city of Jackson have declared emergencies as they work to distribute water to residents and restore water pressure across the capital city. On Monday night, Governor Tate Reeves announced that the city's main water treatment facility had started to fail, and it was unclear when it would be fully operational again. Uh, residents had already been told not to drink from their taps without boiling it first. Dude, I've been under these boil advisories here because like every time one of these idiots that's doing like any kind of construction work hits a water main, which they do all the time because I guess the maps of where they've been placed surprisingly are not very good. So every time one of these morons hits one of these water mains around here, you know, there's a risk of it getting like bacterial infections. So out of an abundance of caution, quote unquote, they fucking put boil advisories on us. Right. And boil advisories fucking suck. Oh yeah. Having to boil your water before you can fucking do anything with it is, is fucking trash. It sucks balls. I hate it so much. Um, until it's fixed, you do not have a, we do not have reliable running water at scale. Reeves said at a press conference, it means the city cannot produce enough water to fight fires, to flush toilets, or meet other critical needs. Ah, welcome to paradise. Mississippi. Come on down. Dude. Mississippi. This Mississippi story Mississippi. made me think of Pimp Monk. And I don't know if you know, do you know Pimp Monk is TikTok famous now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Monk's got it. like a million fucking TikTok followers. Yeah, he's God. He's the God of TikTok, dude. You it's know cool. what? I, I don't mean to. This is going to come off like sour grapes or jealousy Sa uh -oh. or whatever the fuck. Paul's but I'm going to say it. That is a sign of the fucking apocalypse if there ever was one, dude. The fact that Pimp Monk has been elevated. You know what I mean? That's it. You know what I mean? When I literally the, have watched this dude when, fall uh, oh, asleep dude. while streaming to 10 people. You know what I mean? Like, there's no fucking way. Yeah, you know, maybe short. I mean, short form is his friend because long form ain't. I'll tell yeah. you that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, because Pimp Monk realized what everyone else has already known about Pimp Monk for a long time, which is that, like, Pimp Monk works best in, like, a big burst. Yeah. Boom, Pimp Monk in your face. Then he's gone. You know? 
because over that long haul, it just kind of gets like, kind of like, everybody, you know, and it's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing against Pimp Monk. I like Pimp Monk, but like, you know, that's just how it is. Yeah. And, and now he's found the fucking content where he could shine, which I always knew there was fucking talent in Pimp Monk and shit. Sure. Yeah. There was, you know, because he, I mean, he, had, he always had a spark, you know, here and there. But that's the problem is like, you can't capture the spark in a long form content. You got to yeah. hit when the spark is there. A burst Boom, spark. And burst then, TikTok energy. is perfect for that shit. And then so I'm not surprised. Map. I'm honestly not surprised at all. Um, it, it, it is. It's surprising to me. Honestly. I'm not, I wasn't, I'm not even remotely surprised by it. It actually makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Um, I was going to fucking open something up here. What the fuck was I doing? It was something, was oh, it something shit. to do with this? Was it something to do with Pimp Monk? I think Pimp Monk was the distraction. What was I looking up? <laughs> Pimp Monk. No. God Snake damn it. I, ha- I was going somewhere. Oh, well, whatever. I forgot. Who gives a fuck? Okay. Crews hope to halt an Oregon wildfire before heat and wind cause disaster. Cool. Yeah, so there's a big old wildfire in Oregon. Raging. Yeah. Raging I mean, like a Cajun. This is just, this is one of those stories that's just become like rote at this yep. point. So there's, here there's you go. A million of these fucking wildfires burning all over the goddamn country at this point. Yeah, they said it's 11,000 acres with no containment in sight. Sadly, TikTok doesn't pay shit. Well, whatever. Is that really sad? I don't know if that's sad or not. Uh, 10,709 acre rum fire, rum Creek fire already doubled its size over the weekend, claimed the life of a firefighter and burned a home to the ground. They said fear over uh, predicted hundred degree uh, days and potential gusty winds is inspiring a scramble to secure fire lines along the blazes back end. Good luck. That's all I got to say to you. We actually do TikTok too. We actually do have a TikTok. I think it might be linked down below. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. And then five bucks for nothing. Money for nothing, chicks for free. Yeah, we got a TikTok. It's not as it's not as popular as the TikTok as the Pimp Monk TikTok, but it exists. Yep. It exists. And we do decent we do decent little numbers on TikTok, I think. Last time I checked. I'm not, I don't go on there because to me, TikTok is cancer, but we're there. We have rep we're represented there. Um Climate change. Avocados and exotic plants grow in hot UK summer. Oh. There's a good thing. You know, yeah. like, hey, there's a fucking silver lining, right? Yeah. Get like, avocados and shit going. Those Brits might get something more than just like soggy fish and like woe begotten yeah. potatoes. You know what I mean? Maybe British people will actually have some good food for once. That could be a positive thing for them, right? Say what, when I went on my European trip, you know, uh, the one place that there was not, there was good food everywhere. And the one place there wasn't was fucking England. That was where we had the shitty, that was where food sucked. That was I mean, where it was I'm like, sure, oh man. I mean, it's sure probably some somewhere, but, but like the, the base cuisine of England is just gross. It's like blood sausage and, you know, fish and chips. And that's about it. And yeah. a bunch of shit that they've taken from uh, areas that they colonialized. You know what I mean? Like. They got like shitty Britishized Indian curry that they well, sell. People, yeah, people it. will tell you basically like the best shit is like the curry. It's like yeah. going to like India. It's going to eat an Indian food in fucking England. That's where that's where you get the good food. So their yeah. fucking good food is not even like of their own area. The shit that they got is like fish and chips, spotted dick, <laughs> like whatever the fuck. Gross. Bangers and mash. It's like whatever. Bangers and mash is actually pretty good. I think that's actually Irish though. Um, not really sure. Oh, they love their beans too. Goddamn beans. It's because there's nothing else to eat over there. They got canned Let's beans. Eat some beans. They got woe begotten cod that they fished up out of their fucking trashed ocean. And they got like potatoes that grow around in their fucking stony fields. And that's about it. Apparently, no, they're yeah, you're gonna get some avocados. Good for you. Yeah. Avocado isn't gonna save British food. I mean, I know, but maybe it'll it'll help. I don't know. It couldn't hurt, right? Avocado is pretty fucking bland when eaten on its own, so the Brits will probably like it, you know? But, you know, the thing about avocado is because it's so fatty, it really, like, enhances any flavors you put around it because well, fat yeah. is, like, a good way to transfer flavor to your tongue. Well, that's the problem, though, that they don't have anything to surround the avocado with, yeah, you know? that's true. What are they going to do with it? Some wet-ass wet wet really fucking uh, unsalted beans and shit. Yeah. They're they literally like their beans is literally just like bean and beans and ketchup. Here's some avocado beans. beans. And ketchup. Sophisticated flavor palette. Watch that. <laughs> like, all right. You guys kind of suck. Sorry. 
Uh, Pakistan floods are a monsoon on steroids, warns, warns UN chief. So uh, on, Antonio Gut Guterres urged the world to come to Pakistan's aid as he launched a $160 million appeal to help tens of millions of people affected in the disaster. He blamed the relentless impact of epical, I think that's how that's pronounced, epical, epical, uh, levels of rain and flooding. A, at least uh, 1,136 people have been killed since June, and roads, crops, homes, and bridges washed away across the country. This year's record monsoon is comparable to the devastating floods of 2010, the deadliest in Pakistan's history that left more than 2,000 people dead. In a video message, Mr. Gutierrez called South Asia a climate crisis hotspot where people were 15 times more likely to die from climate impacts. Uh, let's stop sleepwalking towards the destruction of our planet by climate change. Today, it's Pakistan. Tomorrow, it could be your country. Well, dude, I, I'll tell you this. I've seen the news story. I don't know how true it is because they like to, you know, the news loves to catastrophize or whatever. But sure. Uh, I've seen the news story floating around that, like, there's a bunch of climate people that think that California is about to get some epic floods or whatever. Like, I guess El mm. Nino is gearing up to have a really wet couple of years and like you'd think like in a drought part state that would be good but we're actually at the stage of drought now where a bunch of rain would just slough off the top yeah you know what I mean? your, your uh your soil's so dry it won't even absorb yeah. it it'll yeah. just fucking kind of like sit on top of the soil and so they're like yeah once in a hundred thousand dollar flood or a hundred thousand dollar hundred thousand you tell where my mind is hundred thousand <laughs> <Mommy>. year <coughs> flood event in california it's just like man you can't win you can't win. No winning. No, not enough win rain. Losing. Not enough rain. Too much rain. Too much rain. He's just like fucking. When are people gonna wake up, dude? It's and lo, God has passed His judgment upon the Californians for their sinful and decadent ways. I'll tell you what, though, as, as shitty as I know flooding can be, I I will absolutely love if we get like a few rainy years here in California because I hate this dry fucking baking ass sun shit. I mean, you guys like even though you it will cause flooding at least initially you probably do actually need <laughs> that moisture inter introduced because uh, like yes. the drought conditions there are not sustainable. Yeah, dry, giant mudslides and just you know street flooding in towns that haven't had rain in forever because gutters are all plugged up and you know it's just gonna be fucking crazy. Brutality, flawless victory. Watching oh, the sorry, I was trying. Uh, to... it's, it's okay. Yeah, we're uh, both okay. clicking it at once. I'll do it. There okay. you go. <laughs> Watching the scary true stories episode, and this for Paul busting out a Chrono Cross reference. Love that game and love you guys. Yeah, I never yeah. could get into it. I kept putting it against Chrono Trigger in my mind, and I was just like, yeah, this ain't no Chrono Trigger. It's not. It's not as good as Chrono Trigger. It really isn't. It's it. But I, I, I loved it back in the day. It, so it's very nostalgic for me. It's got a great soundtrack. Uh, which is true of both of the Chrono games, I yeah. think. Uh, but yeah. But Chrono Chrono Cross has a great soundtrack, and you know, even though it's not as uh, fun, I don't think to play as the Chrono Trigger is. There's there's I love that there's tons of different characters that you could recruit in it. There's something like fifty or sixty different characters that you can get and have them on your team and swap them in and out as you want. So that's kind of fun. I love that about it. Lots of characters. Uh, so yeah, the world's gonna flood and all that. That's cool. Uh, historic monuments resurface as severe drought shrinks Spain's reservoirs. Hey, there you go. Upside. So prehistoric stone circle and the 11th, uh, 11th century church uncovered as a uh, country's reservoirs hit 36% of normal capacity. Yeah, some, some old stuff that's long been underwater has now started to emerge as the, uh, the water recedes down. Well, if this I mean, is a product of global warming, then why was the water that low in medieval times? Mm. Oh, shit. <coughs> yeah, or prehistoric times. Prehistoric stone circle and 11th century church. I mean, that's two times in history this place was already exposed. So this is natural. It's part of the natural fucking cycle of the earth. I was reading this popular mechanics article the other day that was kind of cool, although it's probably just like, you know, um, clickbait or whatever, but... Apparently, there's like a bunch of scientists that are, you know, like at least allowing for the the possibility that there could have been a pre-human civilization on the planet. Like maybe one of like some of our ancestors, you know, it, and, it, and it stands to make sense, right? That we didn't just like Homo sapiens was the first capable member of our 
genetic line. You know what I mean? Like the what directly came before Homo sapiens and what directly came before that, they had to be capable of building shit. You know, and so they're 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 looking into the idea that you know there might have been like pretty massive civilization on the planet. 30 40 million years before humans appeared. i think it was the lizard people yeah maybe it could be personally i think there's i think that they lizard people fucking just went underground and let our civilization rise up here and now they're fucking pulling the strings and they send up their fucking best and brightest to fucking make sure our society doesn't fucking pass theirs up but you it's know like, like oh, yeah we we like to think, think that we've ex we've explored every little corner of the planet or whatever, and that like everything is laid bare to us. But we just keep discovering shit. Like they're doing that lidar shit in the the jungles of South America, and they're finding that cities that they thought, you know, oh, yeah, this maybe had ten thousand people in it. Like the like most of the what's left of the ruins of the city was swallowed by jungle, and it had more like a million people in it. You know, crazy. If global warming is real, why did it snow in December? That's a good point. Amen. Check, checkmate. There are Freemasons and there are Tez. France uses AI to spot and tax undeclared swimming pools. There you go. French authorities found some 20,000 undeclared pools using AI technology. So basically they had AI like scan the fucking satellite imagery and then anyone who had a pool that they didn't fucking get like authorized or whatever the fuck <laughs> you suddenly found themselves like you owe taxes on your fucking pool bitch why do they need an ai for that can't you just see it i, I mean i guess the ai I could probably do it faster but yeah you could have just got you could have done this manually if you wanted seems like you could is there supposed to be a pool at this address no okay send them a bill send them a fucking bill uh, so, yeah, some 20,356 undeclared pools have been discovered since officials began using software developed by Google and consulting firm Capgemini in October last year. The system uses AI to pick out the outlines of pools in aerial images, which are then cross-checked against official property databases. It has so far netted close to 10 million in additional tax revenue from nine French regions and will now be generalized across France, uh, tax officials announced Monday. So if you got an undeclared pool in France, watch out, Buster. Your fucking carefree days of not paying for that pool are done. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Sorry, I'm just, a, I'm just a pissy guy today. Oh yeah. Yep. I don't oh, know why, I but you. I'm I'm having a I'm having a, a piss fest today. Apparently, piss fest. Sure, that's uh, I'm such a hypochondriac, dude. If I'm pissing more often. Oh than man, usual, that's a symptom of something. Prostate piss, cancer or something. I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, piss plus this like weird coming, going back pain I'm having on the right side of my back. It means I'm fucking dying, dude. I got liver cancer. I'm fucking. <laughs> death is imminent. Death is imminent. Imminent death. <laughs> I wish I could get over that shit, honestly. Like yeah. that, that is like at the root of a lot of my anxiety and shit. Yeah, is not necessarily a fear of death, but a fear of like there's something going on with my body that I don't know is going on. You know what I mean? And I'm sick and I'm this and I'm that. I wish I wish there was a way to do away with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, especially was, since like, I mean, I think a certain degree of that is healthy to like worry about, and, you know, be like, OK, yeah, I mean, like that's I mean, realistically that could be going on. So you should be aware of it. But like, yeah, getting to the point where it's stressing you out. I mean, that's just like the stress is taxing your body probably more than whatever you think is going on. You know what I mean? Well, it gets me, it gets me, you know, everybody has like little aches and pains that are unexplained. You know, your shoulder will start hurting real for a minute or two and then it's passes or whatever. And every time some shit like that happens to me, like my mind goes into full blown, like, you know, Oh God, what the fuck is I'm having a heart attack. I'm a fucking uh, got lung cancer. Oh God. Uh, you know, it's it, like not outwardly, but inwardly. You need to be a mechanicus tech priest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn off my emotions and pains. I love it. Slight sudden chest pain. Oh, this is a big one. Yep. Goodbye. I'm dead. Dead. What is this guy saying here? Uh, some archaeologists think that the Amazonian civilizations influ influences in the Andes, like some of the pre Yeah, I mean, it's clear that we just don't know much about, uh, like, you know, the really ancient so uh, human societies. It's kind of hard because there's no, like, written forward. records and stuff. Right. Well, that's another thing it said in that article is like, you know, it's not like 
if you're talking about some like a like a a civilization that was 20 million years before humanity you're not going to find rubble or buildings or whatever like you've literally got to look at the strata and see cuz like you know the yeah the earth has scoured everything that was built into nothingness at that point so you've really got to like look at the climate trends and compare it against ours and you know we can see this rise in temperature with industrialization have there been any other peaks like that and there have been you know in, in the past there have been these kind of inexplicable co2 jumps and shit that here was know, the one of the here was one of the other times we uh invented industrialization yeah this is the but first time did. we ruined the planet yeah check it out pretty cool pretty goddamn cool y'all California legislature passes landmark fast food workers bill. Here's that word landmark again. Let's see. Uh, California legislature passed a bill Monday to create a government panel that will establish wage rates, working hours, and other standards in fast food restaurants. The division of labor standards enforcement would have to enforce the standards. And there is a carve out for valid collective bargaining agreements. AB 257 or the Fast Food Accountability and Standards Recovery Act creates a fast food sector council with members, including workers, union representatives, employees, employers, and two state officials appointed by the governor, assembly speaker, and Senate Rules Committee. A late amendment would cap any uh, minimum wage increase for fast food workers at chains more than 100, uh, with more than 100 restaurants at $22 an hour next year in comparison to the statewide minimum of $15.50 an hour with cost of living increases thereafter. That's pretty based. Um, the Senate passed the first in the nation legislation in a 21 to 12 vote over bipartisan opposition. The uh, Assembly then sent it to Governor Gavin Newsom uh, on a final 41 to 16 vote, while proponent measures say the measure will give uh, more than a million, half a million fast food workers more power and protections. Restaurant owners warn it will drive up costs for consumers. Well, I already know whose side I'm on. It's pretty easy. I'm, on, I'm not on the side of restaurant owners. They have it good enough. Based uh, I think, California, I think they got a fair uh, deal. So yeah, I would agree. I think based on what I'm reading here on this Fox Business article, this legislation based sounds good on to what me. you're reading here. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, based. It's, it's on Fox News. As long as they have comments on here. Oh no, they don't have it on this one. I guess, but whatever. I don't think there should be comments anywhere. Yeah, that's my no idea. more comments. Boo comments. Get rid of the comments. Remember they were like flirting with getting rid of YouTube comments and shit, and I was like, oh please. Please do it. Please do it. But then they didn't. You know, I do my very level-headed best not to delve into that because I, I, sh I shit you not. Every time I do it, it's like I, I'm like, I'm like a kid that touches the hot stove but never learns not to touch the hot stove. Because I'll go in <laughs> and I'll and I'll read a, f a, a few and I'll be like, oh yeah, you know, here's some people making jokes or you yeah. know, positive I mean, feedback you, on the show. Usually pretty safe reading like the top comments. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah, and you scroll you scroll about halfway down and there's something just unfathomably dumb or insulting, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh and you're just like, what what the fuck, man? Fuck you, man. Get rid of these comments. That's why I only ever I just look at the top 3. I'm like, okay, good. Cool, cool, cool. Don't go past that cuz the further down you get, the further it's going to be like Actually, blah, 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 incoherent gibberish, blah, 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 or it's gonna be like fart butt, ha ha ha, yeah, or like some dumb emoji, or like some stupid, I don't know, some stupid shit's gonna happen, dude. You know what gets me? I, I, I immediately have like murder fantasies about a commenter if they use y o u r instead of y o u apostrophe r e, your, yeah, your, so your oh my god, <laughs> stop that. No. It's like these guys are always complaining about this, that, and the other thing, but you're the reason why it's happening. I'm just like, man, how did you fucking get old enough to have an internet presence and you never learned basic fucking grammar, man? You're, you're, you're. It's got, it's gotten to the point now where it's just like that's a new colloquialism. It's like, okay, they're gonna start putting in the fucking dictionary because these these fucking idiots can't do it. You know what I mean? Like you're. You know, it means uh, a possessive noun, meaning something that uh, belongs to you. Also, you are misnomer or whatever. It's going to be in there. <laughs> Weak argument, Paul. Weak uh, yeah. argument. Thanks. You just destroyed. Yeah, destroyed, utterly fucking dismantled by you. Could have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have. Oh, of. yeah, that's, I hate that. That oh. could have shit, yeah. 
Dude, I am such a basic, like, I'm not a fucking hardcore grammar Nazi. If somebody misspells a word like Tenochtitlan or whatever the fuck, like, I'm like, okay, it makes sense. You know, you tried your best, but like, I also the don't really mind if people shit, with like, I don't really mind if people are like in comment sections or whatever, a little bit lax on like punctuation or whatever, no, as long as you can understand it. I don't care about punctuation. I don't care about capitalization, proper capitalization of nouns and shit. I'm not that, that level of grammar. It's just like basic shit your your and your you know what i mean like uh, they're there and there yeah yep, they're there and there it's like fucking uh yeah you know like not it's not could of could of retarded there's no it doesn't make any sense could of that's not that's just gibberish oh yeah Some dude a lot, a lot of students with better grammar a lot of English second language people are way better grammatically than people that have just come through. The That's because they're actually system. forced to learn the rules. And I, well, I think it's because they actually want to learn the rules. They don't want to be seen as somebody who can't speak the language. And so they work extra hard to learn all the little ins and outs. Whereas like, just like native speakers are just like duh, 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 throwing their slop all over oh, the fucking yeah. wall. Supposedly. Supposedly yeah. Oh, don't man. Uh -huh. Oh, we Supposedly. just go on and on with this shit, but every time I bump into one, it literally, <laughs> it takes my day down like 10 points. You know what I mean? I'm just like, oh. Ferris Bueller actress Eddie McClurg is victim of elder abuse, family claims. Oh, man, the, the secretary? Yeah, I think. Uh, in court documents seen by the Post, the family of the Ferris day, Bueller's Day off star who lives in Los Angeles and suffers from dementia allegedly uh, that she alleges that she was abused abused by a man claiming to be a longtime friend who reportedly attempted to take her out of California to marry her. The documents filed in the Superior Court of California name the alleged abuser as Michael L. Ramos, who reportedly has been living at the 76-year-old's L.A. home since 2017. According to the documents, Ramos is unemployed and does not pay rent or any expenses, was able to finagle his way into McClurg's life, reportedly attempting to move her out of California in order to marry her despite her dementia diagnosis. The documents also claim Ramos allegedly sexually assaulted McClurg's care current caregiver with a report filed in with the L.A. Uh, Police Department. In addition, the caregiver was worried that Ramos has or may be assaulting a conser conservatee? Conservati, uh, and that she did not even know it was happening to her, according to the court filings. Uh, McClurg and Ramos have been involved in a romantic relationship with the caretaker now concerned that he had been sexually abusing the actress. They reported that he wants to marry her out of state despite knowing that she lacked capacity and uh, living in her home for companionship with the judge, uh, which, with, which the judge of the conservatorship had allowed. McClurg is under conservatorship to, and got protection from a ju judge as per the documents who ordered that Ramos ordered Ramos that he may not enter into a valid marriage with McClurg basically just saying like she's not mentally fit to do that uh, he's just out of he, he's just after money you know what I mean she's probably yeah. got a little money from oh, she yeah. was she was in a bunch of shit not just Ferris Bueller and, yeah you know, you know, she, she was in that uh she did she delivered one of my favorite lines from a um in a, a planes trains and automobiles too so yeah you're fucked <laughs> Uh, the evaluation also known McClurg allegedly bef was befriended uh, by Ramos in 2012, 2013, blah, 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 blah. She has number 200 acting credits, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, did voice work on The Little Mermaid, Bugs Life, Cars, Rugrats Movie, etc. She's been in a bunch of shit. Yeah, she's got some, she's got some cash stashed away and some fucking, sc she doesn't have a family, you know, that's looking after her anymore. She's probably outlived them all. And now she's just, this is a huge problem, by the way. Like when, oh, yeah. when old people start losing their capacity to take care of themselves, if there's nobody around looking out for them, they, there are people out there that don't give a fuck. They will move in, take advantage in whatever way you can imagine. Well, she's supposed to be under a conservatorship. So you'd figure that would like, you know, yeah, do something for her, but apparently not doing much. Cause uh, this is going on. I don't know. Maybe this article is sensational and maybe this dude's not, what this article is making them out to be, but it seems like pretty cut and dry from the information presented here. But obviously, information can be manipulated. Um, anyway, Alabama pastor who was arrested while watering neighbor's garden speaks out. Huh? Okay, pastor arrested by Alabama police as he was watering his neighbor's garden while they were out of town. TJ Holmes is with us now. Uh, is it just Holmes, a, huh? I, I thought it was like my mind. This just goes to show you like my mind when I when I heard the headline of this was like, oh, he was violating water regulations or some shit. Nope. It's just racism. 
He says, why is there a black guy over there on that lawn? I saw a white family there last week. Let me gaffle him up. Like, oh, fuck. Here we go. uh, Could you murder? uh, Could you murder murder our lawn? Could you water our lawn for us, uh, Mike? Oh, sure. No problem. Has, has Paul filled out? Is he still a tanky? I'm only a tanky when it comes to my desire to throw your dumb ass screaming into a fucking gulag re-education camp until you come out like not a monosyllabic idiot. I'm a tanky on uh, just you. Just, just you. you. I want you to be oppressed by the state. I want you to be gaffled up and thrown into a gulag and disappeared from society. So yeah. Everyone else is fine, but you in particular, you. Ryan B. You just go. Ryan B. Just Ryan B. That's it. I think I think we can all agree Ryan B is the source of all evil on this planet. Yeah. And what Pastor Clear. Michael Jennings is saying after the ordeal. Good morning. Uh, all right, Stray. Um, driving while black, walking while black, golfing black while and black, while black, swimming while black, watering your neighbor's lawn while black, napping while black, staying at an Airbnb while black, sitting in a Starbucks while black, bird watching while black. This become a part of our vernacular here. And look, you and I talked about plenty of these stories here. I wish he would just like start fucking like laying into the two fucking white people on the panel. This is your fucking fuck. Yep. <laughs> It'd be pretty funny. <laughs> uh. Add to this now, watering your neighbor's plant. What? This, this fucking, this dude's gonna be like, I am deeply fucking, this is, yes. Yeah. Him and, him and the, uh, the white lady are just like, yes. But there's more pressure, there's more pressure on him though. <laughs> Her uh, too, of yeah. course, because she's like she's very Karen looking, especially. So she's really got to fucking work hard. Like, gotta look haunted by this stuff. Yep, haunted, you guys. Come on, plants while black. That's what this pastor was doing, and police were called on him. And now we have this police body cam video that shows how he goes from literally a water hose to handcuffs. I mean, you know, what was he planning on doing with that water hose? Flood the earth or something? You know, like we've seen these stories about all this flooding going on. Who yep. do you think so, who do you think is up to that? He was going to sneak it under the door and fill the whole house with water until the door burst open so he could go rob them. Black men with Clearly. hoses, man. I mean, it's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous trend sweeping our nation. It's happening. In just a couple of minutes. All right, let's see it. I ain't did nothing suspicious or nothing wrong. Listen. Told him I'm a pastor. I passed until I don't eat. Sir. You want to lock me up? Lock me up. Nobody. This newly released. <laughs> they will. Yeah, and they did. For sure. Making that kind of statement, you probably expect, like, it's ridiculous that you'd even want to do that. So if you want to do something so ridiculous, you go right ahead. Because you would figure that, like, any reasonable person would be like, we're not going to do that. That's stupid. But no. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Narrator, they died. Released police body camera video shows the arrest of an Alabama pastor who was watering his neighbor's plants. Do what you got to do, girl. Don't me up. This past spring, Pastor Michael Jennings was doing a favor for a neighbor. I don't really care that he's a pastor, by the way. Can we stop trying to, like, make him good because he's a pastor? Because I don't, I don't care about yeah. that. No, it, it, it doesn't matter, really, that he's a pastor. It, it just He's just an innocent dude that was doing a favor for his neighbor. I don't give a fuck if he's, like... If he is a fucking like career criminal or something, if he's watering a lawn, if he's watering a garden, that's not sufficient reason to fucking gaffle him up. But I, I will tell you this, like good, bad, right or wrong, because he's a pastor, something will probably be done about this. Whereas if he was just a rank and file black dude, this probably wouldn't even be covered by the goddamn news. You know what I mean? So at the very least, it sheds a little bit of light on this and maybe some of the cops. Yeah, I mean, I hope that these motherfuckers, I mean, this is just like, Anybody who justifies shit like this, like you show up at a fucking house, a dude's watering the fucking plants, and you're like, what you doing here? Like, come on. <laughs> Give me a break. Who would ask him to water their plants while they were out of town. But police... That'll te- no good deed goes unpunished, eh? Yeah, I guess so. Just trying to fucking help out his neighbors. His neighbors ask him, hey, can you water our plants while we're gone? And the, apparently this is like, this is the, the result of that trying to help your fucking neighbors out, be a good fucking person and shit. Oh, here's the cops. Here's the cops that gaffled you up and treat you like you're a piece of shit for fucking helping somebody out. Yeah, we, but we need to fund, we need $13 billion more of these fuckers running our streets, right? That's the solution to our problems. Once that's again, the, reconstruction that's the Joe Biden too. fucking solution to our problem. 
more reconstruction too we need to have some soldiers around so when one of these fucking racist cops pulls up to a black guy the soldiers can go turn around leave him alone he's not doing anything wrong yeah we'll get your fucking hillbilly ass to the re-education camp dumb fuck (laughs) Uh, all content is satire arrived okay. and started uh, questioning except for that last part that was yeah, that was true not satire. But i just want you know the, the stuff paul said obviously is not satire but right. other things we said everything else satire here's a few bucks thanks for giving me something to listen to after work we're, that's what we're here for man i mean at the You're end of the welcome. day you know we can fucking kid ourselves that we're making some kind of difference or something like that but really we're just here to yammer for you to fucking have something to do while you're while we're all slaves i mean this is a this is while like, we're all cogs in the machine you can like at least listen to some anti-cog rhetoric yeah, the, you know? this is this is like a it's a codependent environment. You know what I mean? Like you you may get a little bit of uh, fun and entertainment and release listening to us go through the fucking horrible news of the day, but uh, going through it and laughing on it, laughing about it and shit is therapeutic to us as well. You know, I don't. I, I think I'll. Because I mean, yeah, me. I mean, like I'm I'm kind of with Paul. Where like when it's not a news day, I'm kind of not tuned into this shit. No, because it's like I don't need I don't need day, I don't need minute by minute updates like you know once a week is good for me that's yeah. about what i need you know cuz i i already know unless i mean cuz if something drastic happens it, it'll fucking filter to my ears you know i'm going to hear like if something really crazy starts happening i'll get phone calls and shit right like oh my god did you see what happened the president transformed into a lizard monster on the stage and ate 15 people i'd be like i knew it i knew it <laughs> biden pulled off his mask and revealed he really was the fucking alien from a uh, uh fire in the sky you know yeah and he's I mean, like, this bleh, 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 bleh. he actually speaks really well in his own language the slurs were all trying to say human words with his alien tongue you know you know that's how he's supposed to talk this shit like this type of shit this news stuff without this kind of an outlet for it i've been in the position where it's like it'll consume you you know what I mean? Like it'll, mm-hmm. it'll take you and make you more afraid and, and more unwell than you should be. And I've been in that fucking position. And so this is actually, you know, like this is good for me. You know, I, I, it's, it's not like ignoring it completely, but it's putting it where it belongs ultimately in my life in a place where, you know, hopefully I can get together with a couple of my good friends and laugh about it and make some money while doing so, you know? You know, I'm very sorry to any aliens that I might have offended with that uh, alien impersonation. That was very callous of me to, you know, I'm, I'm watching a story right here about intolerance. And yet I myself did not have the wherewithal to avoid intolerance of alien civilizations. And I'm very sorry for that remark. Um, I don't know I if never, sorry is going to cut it this time, TJ. I know. I, but I, I, I vow from this moment forward, I will never do another impersonation of an alien entity ever again. I'm done with that. That's in the past. Kodos is coming for you, TJ. You're not supposed to be Who's here. Who's saying it? I'm Pastor Jennings. I live across the street. You're Pastor Jennings? Yes, I'm looking out for their house while they're gone. Okay. Uh, while they fly. Okay. Well, that's cool. Do you have, like, ID? I don't know. I'm not going to be you no know, ID. Why not? I ain't... <laughs> uh, man. It's ridiculous, man. Would what is... you fuck? Hey, hey, pig. Hey, pig. Yeah, you. Fuck off. Get the fuck out of here. Quit. Why are you haranguing this guy? What is he doing? This, What's he this doing is, that you need what, to be fucking with him? He's watering plants, so that's suspicious activity in your book. Get the fuck lost, pig. This is what Biden's allocating $13 billion for, I know. by the way. This is fucking ridiculous shit. More of these fucking you know, I think KKK you know, stormtroopers. I've, I've been trying to figure out what to make a fucking amazing athe- atheist video about. I think I'm going to make it about Biden's stupid little fucking plan. Just like fund the police. Here's, yeah, like this fund the police bullshit. And there's Fuck endless that. there's endless amounts of this shit, too. This is not an isolated incident. This probably happens at least 100 times a day in a bunch of like every city on the fucking planet. There are too many of these fucks. This is a cop that has nothing better to do than drive around a neighborhood and look for a black guy to gaffel up. What, what you is doing he doing there? What, what's the suspicion? Like. He shouldn't be asking this guy for his ID unless the guy is suspected of a fucking crime. What is the crime he's suspected of? He's literally watering the plants with a hose plugged into his house. He's over there right now trying to water them plants against their consent, trying to drown them plants, attacking his neighbor's house with that hose. 
just just destroying their property and that stuff they work real hard for because that's what them folk do it's been a really slow day in whatever shithole town this is in there's nothing but slow days in alabama that's all they do unbroken window policing yeah (laughs) did nothing wrong and if you're not one to identify yourself who called y'all that's what we got to figure out i ain't did nothing suspicious or nothing wrong told him i'm a pastor I passed into our own heat. Sir. You want to lock me up? Lock me up. We're, we're just trying to talk to you, man. Come here. Look, man, let me see your phone. Let me we're see. just trying to talk to you because this is what happens during every conversation. We go, we cuff you up. Okay, look, man. I, I, who called y'all? You have to identify yourself. All I did is said, hey, man, do you live here? No. Nah. Is that your car? No. Nah. The pastor was eventually put in the back of a squad car. A woman soon arrives on scene, identifies herself as a neighbor, and vouches for Pastor Jennings. What a fucking... These cops? <laughs> look, at these, look at these fucking redneck pieces of shit. Dude. Look at this guy's posture. He just looks like a stereotypical Mad Magazine moron. You know what I mean? You tell me who lives right there? Let me see your ID, bitch. Oh, fuck it. Ah. Someone draw this guy. Draw this guy for me. My my Twitter DMs on my TJ Does Health Twitter are open. I want you to draw me a picture of this guy. I want you I want to see that. I want you to see an artist rendition of this. This pose, this fucking vacant expression, this fucking paunchy ass motherfucker just like boop. sad. Be I'm not water. promising any rewards or anything for it. Just if you're an artist, that'd be... Oh, my God. <laughs> the neighbor, too, honestly. But whatever. She's on the right she's side, on the right at least. Side so of this, I, won't yeah. block, I won't mock her. And their flowers. This is probably my fault. Okay. She says she is the one who made the initial call to police. Oh, my God. You stupid bitch. So, oh, yeah. Call never mind. Never mind. Yeah, yep, she she's, is. Yeah, I, she's, uh, she's get, she gets my... I mean, she did the right thing, ultimately, I guess. But, like, her first reaction, like, black guy in the neighbor's yard... Bitch called police. Fucking police. So you called not Garbage. because of the car, but because you thought you saw someone besides him. Right, I didn't know it was him. Yeah, he, I got uncuff him, him, you fucking <laughs> mongoloids. Why what? is he still cuffed? Why was he ever cuffed in the first place? <sighs> I was water while they died. You okay? Jennings. Sport. No, he's no, they're not. No, they're not. Don't tell him that. No, Don't they're not they're okay. okay. Not Nothing okay. about They're what horrible. happened to you just now was okay. <laughs> Your neighbor is not okay. The cops are not okay. He's still fucking cuffed while he's telling them they're okay. Are y'all okay? It's all right. That's okay. Is it? Spoke to GMA about the ordeal. You know, it was kind of uh, surreal at that moment because I'm wondering why is this happening. I was thinking if I did something wrong or resisted, that I could have been shot. So I was trying to yeah, cooperate, no shit. even though I didn't understand what was going on. I was agitated. I was angry, but I knew to comply. The 56-year-old maintains this was a case of racial profiling. Main, wait, is there is that even remotely in question? Is it's, that even like remotely be. fucking in question? Because I mean, not I'm not in my book. It ain't. And see, look at this too. Not one police unit to show up to deal with this non-fucking issue. At least two. I see another one back there. Two pigs with nothing better to do than come and harass a dude watering his neighbor's flowers. Yeah, fund the police, Biden, you fucking dope. (laughs) Guys, here's my gun plan. 13 billion in new cops. This Reconstruction 2 thing seems to be going. I I, I think I like Reconstruction Act 2 myself. Yep. Maybe that's too much of a mouthful, though. Because Act 2 makes it sound, I don't know. Boom, more official. Yep. Or like, you could even call it like the second Reconstruction Act or something, or like re-reconstruction. No, yep. re-re is a bad, bad term. Reconstruction reloaded. Oh, yeah, I like that. Racial profile. We're not racial profile. <laughs> three. Three. Shut up. Shut three, up. Three police units. There's probably more there, honestly, dude. There's probably more. There's probably fucking like six cars there. They don't show up. They show up in force for every little thing. Do with a garden hose. How many cops you need? Hundreds. Yep. As many as you could get. Put out an every APB. cop. Every cop in the area needs to fucking show up here right now. We got a fucking black man with a hose, y'all. We got a black dude who's watering his neighbor's fucking plants. Yep. Come on. 
Oh, no, sir. No, sir. We're not about I that. I told you. I'm oh, my God. Shut the fuck up, you cracker motherfucker. Yep. Now, you now they're, now they're being all like conciliatory with him. No, no, sir. No, we're not about no, gaffling no, up innocent no, black no, people no, for no, no reason. reason. That ain't us, y'all. You thinking of somebody else. Why you always got to judge us by the color of our uniform? Just because I wear blue doesn't make me a racist. I mean, what were we supposed to do? Your big fucking pimply, toothless breeding sow of a neighbor called the cops and reported a black guy with a hose. <laughs> what we supposed here, to do man. when we hear something like that, huh? Milk sop breeding sow across are the street. Just, oh, there's a donkey just over there. Like, we're just supposed to like hear that there's a... A black man watering a lawn and just let that slide on by? Is that what There's a black to guy. Do? Looks like he's got some kind of gun and it's spraying some kind of liquid all over my neighbor's house. Can you come help? I think that they invented some kind of new liquid bullets and he's firing them at all my neighbor's plants. <laughs> oh. I was in yeah. Alabama flap I doodle, know yeah. I, I had can... the one old in my hand. I was... <laughs> yeah, like, like, let's just say this guy's a criminal, right? What fucking criminal shows up to a person's house? Starts watering the fucking plants. This is he is he casing the joint? Is that the contention here? Like, what? We're not racist black man that we have in handcuffs for watering his neighbor's plants. What makes you think that? Throughout the video, police can be heard suggesting that the situation might have been different if Jennings had provided identification. Yeah, if, if, dude, if only you would have complied with our unreasonable demands of you. You know, I mean, yeah. this whole situation could have been avoided if you had just complied with our unreasonable requests for your ID, even though you've done nothing wrong and we're no, under no obligation to show us. Yeah, if you just roll over and give us your booty hole, there won't be no problem. You know, if, if uh, I wouldn't have had to have raped him, if he'd have just presented his ass and said, here you go, officer, I could have just fucked him consensually, but he didn't consent, so I had to force him. That's just the way it goes sometimes. Could have had consensual booty intercourse, but instead he chose anal rape. It's not my fault. <laughs> it's like, give me a break. These cops are like fucking pure psychotic evil, dude. 13 million more, please. 13 billion more in, in new cops. Need it. Yep. Want it. Love it. Solutions. Bring them on. Solutions for the future. More cops, please. Don't change them. Just like this. More of these. More of these. That's yep. what I want. Uh, Taiwan shoots at Chinese drone after President warns of strong countermeasures. Oh, Shit's heating up over there in Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan fired warning shots at a Chinese drone which buzzed an offshore uh, islet on uh, Tuesday. Maybe that's islet? I don't know how they pronounce that. Shortly after President Tsai Ing-wen said she ordered... Uh, had ordered Taiwan's military to take strong countermeasures uh, against what she termed Chinese provo uh, provocations. It was the first time such warning shots have been fired during a period of heightened tensions between China and Taiwan. Beijing viewed the, uh, views the island as its own territory, while Taiwan strongly disputes China's sovereignty claims. The drone headed back to China after the shots were fired, a military spokesperson said. Taiwan had, uh, has complained of Chinese drones repeatedly flying close to small groups of islands it controls near China's coast as part of military drills by Beijing, most recently by the Kinmen Islands. Uh, China has conducted exercises around Taiwan after U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited the island this month against Beijing's wishes. Kinmen Defense Command uh, spokesman... Shang Zhong Shun said that live rounds were fired at the drone, which had approached Erden Islet. I'm going to go with Islet uh, before 6 p.m. local time with flares being used previously. The drone then flew off back to China. No immediate response from China. On Monday, Chinese official uh, Chinese foreign ministry had uh, dismissed Taiwan's complaints about drones as nothing to make a fuss about. U.S. officials speaking on the condition of anonymity said it appeared China was using drones to harass the Taiwanese rather than escalate the situation. But they added that they were monitoring the situation closely and were concerned about accidents in general. So, yeah, this is uh, this is just going to go the same way as uh, oh, yeah. Ukraine, basically. This is uh, just Ukraine again. We already knew that even when Ukraine was going down, people were already talking about, you know, China and Taiwan as yeah. the next of these little uh, 
territorial skirmishes that we you know put our little fingers in uh taiwan of course manufactures a huge amount of our semiconductors um even like giant companies like nvidia and stuff even though they design chips here in america they manufacture them in taiwan so uh us has major manufacturing interests in uh in Taiwan. So of course, we're very reluctant to let uh, China take that territory uh, for that reason. Although I think you're going to see a lot of chip production move from there because of this pressure. Or, you know, the impending fucking in invasion, you know, yeah. like these, these companies don't, like, these countries don't like threaten each other like this if it's not meant to come to a head at some point. So it's just a matter of when. Yeah. 70% yeah. um, of the world's semiconductor. Uh, uh, fabbing, which mean you know, which China obviously looks at that and was like, mm, semiconductors. Mm, yes, that's going to be a big market moving forward. I mean, it already is a big market, but it's just going to get bigger and bigger. So yeah, China wants that uh, for themselves. That's why they give a shit about Taiwan all of a sudden. I mean, they've always kind of given a shit, but the reason for this like higher and higher level of giving a shit is that fucking man is that manufacturing base that Taiwan represents. They're like, ooh, yep. that could be ours. Um, under pressure. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot more chip manufacturing move elsewhere, though, to be honest with you, because, uh, having, this is like, this is like a fucking classic case of all your eggs in one basket right here. For all we know, the drone, uh, wanted to, uh, water its Taiwanese neighbor's plant. I mean, that's true. Why are we discriminating against this drone? This drone probably had no ill will, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep, be keeping a look at this, but I think we all kind of see how it's going to go. Ancient fish fossil suggests that teeth didn't evolve from inside the mouth. Huh? There are two theories about where teeth originated. They either evolved from external scales, the outside-in hypothesis, or from somewhere inside the mouth, the inside-out hypothesis. Researchers studying a fossil of the, oh, Jesus, Iskirhiza, Iskirhiza. Iskerhiza, Mira species, an extinct sawfish that lived in North America around 65 to 100 million years ago, I found more evidence backing up the outside-in idea. Like the saw sharks and sawfishes of today, the creature had jagged spikes around its snout to help ward off predators and forage for food. It's thought that those spikes, uh, called rostal denticles, are modified versions of the scales on the rest of the body. In an attempt to examine the relationship between rostral denticles and scales, the team analyzed the hard enamel outer layer of the snout spikes, but found, what they found was significantly different from what they were expecting. Surprisingly, Imira's rostral denticle enameloid was uh, anything but simple, says vertebrate paleontologist Todd Cook. It was considerably more complex than the enamel, uh, enameloid of body scales. In fact, the overall organization of the enameloid in this soft, uh, ancient sawfish resembled that of modern shark tooth enameloid which has been well characterized. Uh, I don't know what any of that fucking means, but sounds cool. Uh, it is likely that the bundled microcrystal arrangements of the enameloid of Imira's uh, rostral denticles also serve as a way to withstand uh, mechanical forces. So I don't know. What, I don't. Basically, I guess the fucking long and short of this shit is that these teeth were evolved as like outer, uh, or most likely evolved as like outer uh, things that just kind of like were around the mouth. And then, you know, they kind of moved in over time. Uh, I don't want to hear nothing about no scientists about no teeth until they explain baleen to me. Explain baleen. Explain Hashtag baleen. Explain baleen. I want to know how that fucking came about. I want to know what the transitional form of a baleen whale was. Like, what do you do with a whale that's got like half baleen and half teeth? What do they do? Teeth lean. To lean. Monster hunter. Monster Hunter. Indigenous man of the whole, last of his tribe, dies in Amazon. So, yeah, I guess there was like a dude who was the last of his tribe or whatever the fuck. The man of the whole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so speaking of... <laughs> I had a very crazy dream last night. Oh, yeah? I, I, I don't care about this guy. I'm just going to say... I'm going to tell you my dream instead. Um... So yeah, this dude, he was a tribe guy. He died. Uh, <laughs> I, I basically, I dreamed, I dreamed a Beavis and Butthead episode like in its entirety. Cool. But it had, it had nothing, like, it barely had anything to do with Beavis and Butthead. There was all kinds of shit going on in this dream, but it was all apparently a part of a Beavis and Butthead episode. And I'm not going to remember everything, 
But I remember there was this scene where there was like these two scientists and they were in like a bathroom at like, it looked like an airport bathroom almost. And they had this like weird little fetus thing that they had in like a, it was like a human fetus, but it was like tiny, tiny, but it still had like a human form. And they like unscrewed this little lid thing and they like put it in like a, um, like a, a wet paper towel. And then it started like growing. Like th- it was like they almost washed away. They almost like dropped it in the sink. And like one woman was like, if you get that in this, you better not get that in the sink. That was, that's very valuable to our company or whatever the fuck. And then like, you see all this like tendrils and shit coming out of it as it's sitting there in like the wet paper towel. Cool. It starts filling it up and stuff. And it's like, what is, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? And then I don't remember a lot of the other stuff, but there was like some weird shit with like a bio weapons company that was doing some kind of like shady human experimentation. And like Beavis and Butthead were kind of just like cut to intermittently. And like the plots never really seemed to connect that much or they were starting to actually because Beavis and Butt like Beavis was trying to like prove he was smart by solving a Rubik's cube. And like his solution was basically like he found he broke it apart and tried to like put it together, but he couldn't figure out how to put it back together. So he just got kind of like wrapped a bunch of like bungee cords around it and shit. I was like, ah, I got it. <laughs> what the fuck? Man? And he was like, they were standing on top of like a bunch of like cans and shit. And they were like, and for, for them, for some reason, like they saw like a dude at the bottom of the can. So they started trying to cause an avalanche of cans to like crush this dude. And Beavis kept like yodeling, Ricola, you know, at yeah. the fucking trying to make the cans fall on him with like sound waves, I guess. It didn't work. So they like went down to confront the guy. But th- he was like this big. He's like a tiny dude. I think he was like one of the like companies like bio things or whatever the fuck. Jesus. And uh, like they, what is your, he, what is your brain working I don't out know. in the wee hours, man? I have no idea. So the little man tries to like attack Beavis and Butthead, but ends up falling to his death. And they're just like, I think he's dead. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, maybe we can get like an award if we like give him to the police, if we like report this to the police. So they fucking like take him and they like crucify him on a little popsicle stick cross and like Jeez. bring him to the police station. The sheriff's like, well, ain't that the damnedest thing I ever seen? It's a little bitty crucified man, <laughs> you know? And it's like, the what's going on down Beavis there at that bioweapons company? Beavis and Butthead, you cracked the case. You know, and it's like, I don't know what, there was other shit. It was so much more convoluted than that. I have no idea what the fuck else was going on. But there was like a bunch of shit like that. And Beavis and Butthead were really like written true to character. Like they weren't doing anything that was like they wouldn't do on the shows. And yet there was this crazy like horror movie Resident Evil-esque sort of like umbrella comp corporation fucking bio weapon subplot happening and i kind of wish that would have been paid off but i think i woke up before it, it was so well you're insane tj I, I, yeah i agree i'm just that's, letting you know you're insane that's not a normal dream um uh okay so here we go uh M- mikhail gorbachev former soviet president uh, who took down the iron curtain dies so my reaction to this and i don't know if i'm the only one was um wasn't this dude dead already? I, I thought this guy was dead long ago. I had no idea this fucker was still kicking around. I didn't even know that. Gorbachev? I thought I, I thought that dude like died like decades ago. I didn't even know this motherfucker was still around. So it's kind of hard for me to have much of a reaction other than, oh, I didn't even realize. Is it mere does Ben Shapiro sound like Beavis? Um, well, you know, according to Mike Judge, the Beavis laugh and voice was kind of based on a dude. Uh, that he went to school with. And the dude was not like an idiot like Beavis. He just kind of talked like this, you know? <laughs> but he actually was like a, like, a pretty reasonably intelligent dude and, and stuff. He actually was kind of a nerd. <laughs> yeah, Gorbachev so, yeah. is definitely one of those dudes that I, I thought has been dead for like 20 years. Yeah, so. like, you know, because you've heard, I mean, have I heard any news about fucking Mikhail Gorbachev in the last de- few decades? No. I just assumed he was like long gone. I mean, I don't know. I was just like, okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, he's dead, I guess. Thought he already was, but all right, cool. I'm gonna go him. take a gotta go take a piss again because I'm dying oh, of a million cancers. Fucking, and AIDS. Uh, whatever's happening to you, cancer, AIDS. I got Cance it all. AIDS, cancer, AIDS, or oh yeah, got another Gorbachev story there. We don't need two. 
Take it back. Do, 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 do the Gorbachev effect. Yes. Oh. Damn it. Can we do it with me? I want to be the fucking main screen guy. There we go. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Putin is taking center stage in that country. Yeah, you're not even allowed to mention Gorbachev's name. Who even gives a flying motherfucker about no Gor Gorbachev? Who gives a shit? I ask you, who gives a flying goddamn motherfuck? Not I. Texas reports maybe first unit. Yeah, I don't care about that. Uh, baseball. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I'm cutting out some stories because we're pretty we're pretty good at this point. We're almost three hours in. We still haven't finished the news section, so I'm I'm cutting some shit. That one's good. That one's good. We already have enough depressing shit. Fuck that one. Fuck that one. Keep that. Fuck that. Okay, that brings us through it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. I, I, cut, I cut some fat out of the fucking stories, y'all. Watch the Tim Pool music video. Will I get, will I get copyright struck? Does he not copyright his shit? Because I'll do it, I guess. I don't give a fuck. I'll, I'll watch it. Whatever, fucking fuck you. I don't give a shit. What is it called? What's, what, is, what is his music under? What is, uh, what's the Tim Pool music thing called? What's his music project? Pim Tool? Pim Tool and the employers? I don't know. Give it to me. Gimme, 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 gimme. Tim Cast Records, really? Okay. Let's see what the fuck we got. <laughs> Tim Cast. Oh yeah, here we go. So yeah, I guess there is a song. All right, let's see. I mean, have you guys seen other people watch and react to this? Like, is it okay to do? Will he fucking sue? Will he get? Will he get booty hurt? Is he going to be mad? Is he going to, like, attack? Is it going to be a bad thing? Is it going to be a bad day? Can I rely on it not being a bad day? All right, let's take a look, I guess. I'm going to run the... I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. Oh, no. So you said that we got to watch this Tim Pool music video? No. So I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of scared. It's going to be copyrighted or whatever the fuck. Well, maybe, But I'm not sure. Maybe you can go on his show and take it up with him there. Yeah. He won't. I saw other streamers react to it. Okay, cool. He's worldly enough. All right. Who the fuck is this guy? Why am I, why am I, I seeing know. this guy? I don't know. One of the biggest podcasts I already laughed at this a lot. Oh, I guess I don't need to see it then, right? Is that it? Yeah, there you go. We don't need to repeat <laughs> their, their mistake. I don't know. I mean, what? I want to at least have a taste. Um, <laughs> oh, my fucking God. Oh, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Yep. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ha. Ah, hold up. I want to see that moment of re revelation once more. Give it to me. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. This, uh, this is one of those things that yes. just makes fun of itself. You know what I mean? I don't even really yeah. have to rip on it. It just, it, it, it's very existence is ripping on it. So, and just like that, Matchbox 20 got butch. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> not 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 uh, not extremely butch though. Uh, no, I'm saying like compared to this. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, oh gotta hear beautiful. these vocals, man. We gotta hear these vocals. Yes, please. Did you think I'd leave you there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Let the pure radiant oh. energy of the universe shine upon you. Dude, I hate to fucking do it. 
but cringe, bro. <laughs> cringe. This is fucking cringe. Oh my god. Yeah, after listening to that, the, the, the like, this is the band that Matchbox Twenty used to beat up for their lunch money, man. Oh. oh. Did you think I never keep my promise to? Oh my god. <laughs> And of course, like he's uh, he, even in this fucking video, he's got his stupid fucking beanie on to hide his bald pate. Get out of here. Hmm. Hmm. And at least sing like something that's like, I don't know, goes with your fucking brand. There's gonna Tim, be a dude. civil war. Tim Pool of Mud, dude. Oh God, yes, <laughs> yes, Pool of Mud. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh yes. Gotta put two Ds on HUD though. That would have made it perfect. Oh. Oh God, yes. It's easy when I'm lying there with you and every night. All right, that's as much as I can take. Sometimes when I'm alone, I like to put my finger in my butthole (laughs) just to see what it feels like. It's beautiful, Paul. I love it. Uh, police. Children playing with lighters started deadly Alabama fire. The four-year-old got a hold of the cigarette lighter. Uh, the cigarette lighter belonged to the mother. Uh, brought it back to the bedroom and was playing with the cigarette lighter in the bed when, uh, when the cigarette lighter caught the mattress on fire. The Mobile County Sheriff's Office says four-year-old Liam Barnes was on the top bunk and two-year-old Noah Gordon was on the bottom bunk. Sergeant Mark Bailey says Noah, the two-year-old, hid in the closet apparently after the fire started. He closed the door and at that point he was was unable to to escape um, once the heat and the smoke became too intense. Um, yeah, he was incapacitated at that point. Bailey says the mother was not in the house at the time the fire started. He, <laughs> of course not, right? Oh man! Once again, this could could have been handled, could have been dealt with with just you know just a just a light sterilization policy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just a, not heavy handed, just a light sterilization policy. You know? Come on, yeah. we just need like a sterilization gun. Yep, just more like that, that. That that really is the the fucking moral of this episode for me so far. Is like there's just people that need to be dealt with. Deal you know? with the people. What's ruining the world? I think it's a very noble idea to allow freedom of thought and freedom of expression and freedom, you know, pursuit of happiness and whatever whatever form that takes for you. But um, you know, humans just keep proving me wrong, man. Yeah, you'd figure it'd be, yeah, man. <laughs> why was no one watching them? I'll tell you why. Because no one wanted them in the first place, probably. And, you know, there was just like, either this is a place where it's like, life is sacred or some bullshit. And so people who never should have had kids had kids. And then they didn't want them. And then they want to go do stuff, but they got these stupid kids. And they're just like, well, they're fine. They're sleeping. Leave them home alone. And then the kids burn the fucking house down and kill themselves. Yep. And their short, pointless lives are com- are cut, you know, even shorter because they had parents who never wanted them in the first place and don't give a fuck. And you know that this woman will deal with her grief by going out and getting knocked up at the fucking local honky-tonk bar. You know what I mean? Well, this time it's going to be all right. This time I ain't going to leave them alone, home alone again. Learned my lesson. Learned it good. It does look like a lovely trailer park. I particularly like the the sodden, muddy, disgusting dirt road that's cutting through it. You know what I mean? Yeah, just, it's beautiful. Beautiful. You used a very classist statement there, Paul. Thought you were for the working class. I People am. are hating on them. Uh, they are, I, I meant it. It looks great. Yeah, it's a very beautiful about, place, man. honestly. Yeah. Uh, baseball fans caught engaging in alleged public sex. So someone figured out how to actually enjoy the sport of baseball. That's cool. Uh, yeah. alleged. I mean, can we see it? Oh, no, that's not alleged. They're yeah, fucking. They're, when you got to blur it and stuff, you know, I figure there's not much alleging there. You know, they are fucking. Two spectators were escorted out of Toronto's Rogers Center at uh, uh on Tuesday, E A E S T, after allegedly engaging in sex act in the venue's upper tier during the Blue Jays game against the Chicago Cubs. 
Footage of the riled up couple, which showed the woman in a white dress straddling a man at the back of the stadium, circulated across uh, social media on Wednesday with a 10 second clip registering more than 400,000 views in three hours. Another video shows security intervening, removing the, uh, the pair from the area. Uh, I filmed a couple having sex at Blue Jays game in the 500s, a patron said. The Toronto uh, service, police service said the Canadian publication had no information, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, you know, this, uh, this public sex thing, you know, they uh, leave them alone. <laughs> you know? It's the most know. exciting thing that's happened at the Rogers Center ever. I mean, I guess at least you might be preventing another one of these unnecessary births. So good for you on that, I guess. But yeah, you know, true. At least someone had fun at a baseball game for the first time in like a half a century at least. So that's good. Look at the bright side. <laughs> uh, racist rant in Fremont Taco Bell caught on camera. Check it out. Back to the East Bay where Fremont police are investigating a racist rant caught on camera. The victim says he was waiting in line at Taco Bell on Fremont Boulevard when the man seen in the video began randomly yelling at him. Crown Forest Taylor Bisaki has that story. Walk around with your toes out. This ain't India. You India up and you in America. Yeah. Yeah. Is that DJ Khaled? I don't know. What's he doing? <laughs> he's, doing he's engaging in a racist rant against Indians. Disgusting with your H1 visa. Krishnan Jeremy. Damn. Your H1 visa, man. Whoa. Mm. Is oh, the video buddy. behind the camera in this video? He says he began recording after this man started yelling racist comments at him while Jeremy was waiting for his order at Taco Bell on Fremont Boulevard last Sunday. A few minutes later. What the fuck? Some people like, what's wrong with you? What's going on in your life, man? You need some kind of fucking help. <laughs> if this is like, you can't even fucking stand next to a, an Indian dude in a Taco Bell line without being like, you know what? I got some things to say. <laughs> You got problems, man. You need yeah. some fucking intensive at like you need court mandated therapy. You probably need fucking Paul's uh, sterilization program. Yep. Gulag. Some things need to happen. Some things need to happen. For Reconstruction you. time on that motherfucker. Cause like he needs a head to toe fucking to, that man bun. The whole thing, man. It just not a good look. He again said, Hey, pick up your bean butter on leave. Um, you are a vegetarian, right? You you don't eat beef, right? Beef, uh, you guys should eat beef. You Indians should eat beef. You don't eat beef. <laughs> what? Why is he, why yeah. he got to wait? Why is he got to eat beef? Why is this guy having a? He's just having a bad day, man. This guy, yeah, like, see, that's why. That's the reason I don't want him to go. I don't necessarily think he's gulag worthy because I feel like maybe this dude is like getting shit on from some fucking somewhere else in this horrible system and is just like trying to like. Cause that's he's all these he's people though. Out on the, fuck, fuck you. That's all these people. We like, gotta fucking find the root cause of this shit and deal with that. Root cause. Paul's in a mood today. Yes, yes, I am. How how could you not be watching this endless cavalcade of horror? Welcome to the house of horrors. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, that's not the first time in the Roger uh, Center that that's happened. Back when it was called the Sky Dome, he had a hotel with tinted windows looking out of the field. People were literally have sex in those hotel rooms in front of everybody. Cool. The windows are tinted. Who cares? Yeah, I got tinted windows, you know. What you want. Some people like to fucking have an audience, you know. They want to show you, like, look how good I am at fucking. Check it out. I'm one of the best fuckers it's ever been. Jeremy says this was their only interaction before the man went on his tirade. You look nasty, all right? Don't come out. You look nasty. Oh, wait, excuse me. Uh, do, 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 sloppy, slovenly fuck. Do, 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 do. Like you don't. You like? Do you think you look sharp or something? Like <laughs> what? Oh yeah, he's looking real good, man. You look like you smell like that Taco Bell before you walked into it. Okay, give me a break. Public like this again. Sincerely. What is he wearing? Like, look at you. You're not like dressed fancy or something. Like, what is what is this dude wearing? Is he dressed like Borat behind you? Like, what's going on? Yeah, what was he wearing? Public like this. Dirty Hindu. I'm not Dirty Hindu. <laughs> what? Oh. What was he wearing? I want to see what this dude was wearing that inspired this, like, don't go out in public looking like that. Here to pick a fight with you. What? What do you want? And he said, you know, you. Hindus was he wearing are, this shirt? Uh, you know, a shame. <laughs> it's disgusting. 
and then he spat on me. Jeremy says oh, that's God, when he gross. and a restaurant employee called Fremont police. He says the man continued yelling for more than eight minutes. I love that he calls the guy dirty and then spits on him like a dirty fucking <laughs> scum. Yeah, and this dude is the this dude literally ranted for eight minutes straight in the Taco Bell. Hey, um, I don't know. Like, write an angry letter that you don't intend to say. I don't know what you want. See, there's, <laughs> there's no, like, there's, there's no, there's no helping this person. He's, yeah. he's beyond, he's beyond any kind of traditional um, help. He needs to go to the gulag. To the gulag with him. It's gulag time. Jeremy says he waited inside the Taco Bell for officers to arrive, worried that the man might be waiting outside for him. You dirty. Fremont police are still investigating this incident. I'm Taylor Bisaki reporting Cron 4 News. What's the, I mean, like, I never understand this investigation shit. Like, it's literally all on tape. Yeah, the whole Here's thing the video, is there. Like, what's to investigate? There it is. Here's the incident. Here it is on video. What what more can you get? What more do you want? Like you have every moment of the fucking the incident on tape. Another one for the mines. This dude would be no good in the mines. Look at him. Yeah. Couldn't even lift a pick over his head with those chicken arms, man. Poor bastard. Why is the newscaster uh, so deadpan? I don't know. Who cares? Who cares? You got us. You don't need the newscaster to fucking... What's the newscaster? Need? And the guy at the Taco Bell did a racist rant. Like, what, do you, what do you care? <laughs> Who cares? It's a newscaster. Context. I mean, they're fucking razzle dazzle you. Yeah, what's the context, though, man? Maybe we what the context about... is this? What happened? In the co what, what, what about before that, though? What about before he went on his racist rant for eight minutes? You know? Think about that. <laughs> okay good for him slovenly I all right man word. mauled to death by a lion after clamming in the zoo enclosure see there you go problem oh, dealt that's... with see the animals of the world have got the solutions down oh yeah they don't elephants, fuck around elephants have figured it out tigers have, i'm not tigers lions have figured it out you know Yep, pretty much any wild animal has got it figured out, man. They don't they don't have any empathy. They're not like, well, maybe this guy's just having a bad day. No, they just maul him to death. Like this guy got in my fucking space. He's dead. He dies now. I'm just gonna go see what's up with this lion, y'all. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what this dude thought he was going to accomplish with this. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, we can't ask him, TJ. <laughs> yeah. Like, man, I'm going to go pet the lion. Why would somebody come and try to enter, skill defense, and go inside to do what? Well, Benito uh, uh, Owusu Bio, uh, because <laughs> people are fucking stupid and need to be dealt with. <laughs> If you're going for the cops, the lioness, and the male will protect their cops. So please, this is a warning to people who have other intentions and ulterior motives. Yeah, I wonder if that was the thought process behind it. He was going to try and steal one of those I'm going to steal these lion cubs make me some money. Sell them to some rich fuck. And I guess that you think the parents of the lion cubs are just going to kind of like sit idly by and let that happen huh <laughs> just like oh yeah yeah no problem no fucking problem man this is a no go area is that the body is that his body parts and bags there I don't know. <laughs> it's what's left what's going yeah. on after dinner oh, I'll bring oh, at least it looks like, you know, that they're not planning on uh, euthanizing the animals for this. As I mean, they I think, I think people everywhere realize, like, okay, animal escapes and kills some people. Maybe it's got to die. But animal fucking, <laughs> you come into the animal's fucking uh, territory there. You climb into the tiger pit or the fucking lion's den or whatever the fuck and you get eaten. I mean, like, you're just a fucking dumbass. Like, what do you fucking expect? Yeah, you know, they'll fucking the zoo save some money on food that night. <laughs> it's 
It's like, oh, yeah. they they ate they they're full, full of moron. <laughs> Maybe that's what we should do. Maybe we should just like sprinkle Slim Jims and uh, ice cold cans of Milwaukee's own in in like wild animal cages. That'd, and that'd kick it, off and the cleansing. The, and then just spread the meme that you're a pussy if you don't fucking go in there and get it. Yep. Look, if you want to be, if you want to show you're really a fucking man, dude, you gotta get butt naked, go in that fucking lion's den, get that fucking ice cold Milwaukee, fucking come on, jump on out and drink that shit. Like a man would do. Bam. That a slim jam there in the tiger cage? Holy shit. Hold my fucking, hold my fanny pack. I'm going in. I'm going to get my slim jam. Free slim jam, (laughs) y'all. Ah. Uh, So this business body says children as young as 13 can be used to help solve labor shortages in Australia. Yeah. Child labor makes a makes a comeback. Cool. Yeah. yeah, put them in the workforce. What's them kids doing in school? What are they gonna learn there? Only thing you need to learn is how to be a cog in the fucking machine, bitch. Get to work. Get to fucking work. I mean, uh, not to, not to defend this corporation or whatever, but they are in Australia. I mean, what the fuck else are they gonna? Yeah, do? what are you expecting? Those backwoods motherfuckers. All right. We got two quizzes here. One is uh, about your darkest desire after you do this raw shock test. The other is, uh, wait, where's the other quiz? There should be two quizzes, goddammit. All right, here we go. 196 countries in the world, but which one should you live in? Oh, yeah. Mm, so do you want to okay. know which country you should live in, or do you want to see your darkest secret, Paul? I'll let you choose. I need to know what my do. darkest secret is. I'll do the darkest secret. All Here's right, one. let's find out. So... Obviously, you can't fucking say. I mean, I don't know what you would you actually see here. Yeah. Um, but here's your options. You got helmet, insect, weapon, something else, I guess, or skull. The first thing that came to my mind was a helmet, like like a Sauron's helmet or whatever the fuck. All right. So a cool barbarian type helmet. Next question. What's the first thing you see here? Oh, I see a face. Nothing. Two people screaming. Monkey. Two people tongue kissing. Something else. I guess monkey would be the closest. I didn't think monkey, but at least it's like a face. Yeah. Ooh. This is kind of like a moth or something, maybe. Yeah, moth. Moth or butterfly. Yep. All right. Looks like Satan to me. Oh, yeah. This is kind of cool. Yeah, this looks like a throne or something. Yeah. Yeah. So you got gate, horn, sea creature, tentacles, monster. Uh, I guess monster. I guess I shouldn't bias you by blurting out what I want, what I think. No, it's all right. Um, whoa, this looks like a house. Um, torture hands, something sexual, something else, nothing. It's like a house on fire to me. I guess something else then, because yeah, you don't see any else. of those things. Uh. Um, okay. I see a bear. See the bear standing over a person? Yeah, I saw. I kind of kind of looked like a bear to me, too, but I don't see that down here. It says something screaming, beans, dolphins, something else, or mustache. I guess I got to go something else. else. Yeah. None of those are even close. All right. Oh, yeah, this one looks like a goat or a deer, maybe. Yeah, it kind of looks like a Baphomet head. Yeah. Uh, bat, nothing, insect, blades, something else. Something Once again, else. None, of those, none of those are even close. All right, what you see here? Like a like a gnarled tree, maybe. Uh, fountain, mustache, something sexual, something else, or antlers. See, you're just gonna get something else for a lot of these. Uh, yeah, not, whatever, that's fine. It is what it is. This looks like. Oh, well, I shouldn't say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this looks a little pornographic. This looks like two Godzillas about to gang bang a chick. So would you say something sexual? Yeah, then? something sexual. Yeah. Two Godzillas about to bang a chick. I mean, this is an octopus or a squid. For so, sure. probably tentacles. Tentacles, then, right? yeah, I guess would be closest. Uh huh. Uh, what do I see in this? Like a guy, like I guess a figure holding his hands up. Okay. Maybe preacher would be the closest thing. Preacher, or something else. Angels, something sexual. Apocalypse. I wouldn't have made the preacher rep, but it does look like a dude, you know, holding his hands up like preachers do to me. So I, I do that. All right. So probably closest then. Preacher, yeah. All right. Hmm. What is this? 
This looks like uh, like two demons headbutting each other or something. Skull, something sexual, bat, something else, nothing. I guess something else for that one. Yeah, that something close. else. All right. Your result, anxiety. <laughs> your darkest secret is your anxiety. <laughs> yeah. To you, the world is full of threats, physical and emotional threats. Almost everything is a challenge too hard to overcome. Because of that, you hide away. You tend to waste your time with nonsense because you're afraid to fail. Sometimes you even just give up. But oh. maybe you were once filled with dreams, but something happened. You decided to let dreams be dreams. You need a boost in self-esteem. Move outside your comfort zone and try to be the person you want to be. You can do it. Believe in yourself. Man, I gotta, I gotta say, usually these don't do it, do anything for me. But I feel seen. I know. I feel like, like I, I need to do this now because. Yeah, you should go back and that. do it. I was just gonna have one of us do each, but since it was so accurate for you, yeah, I, I want to go back it, now. It might be hard Take though, since you've you've seen them all, you know. That's true, but I know what I I know what my initial reaction. You need to click retake quiz down there at the bottom. Where is it? Oh yeah, you're right. Thank you. Oh, they put them in a different order. So I I do see the horns, but I I guess like to me it looked like Satan. So monster. This thing I definitely saw a moth or a butterfly. This thing here I saw I don't know I see two faces kind of like here like these look like eyes and these look like noses and mouths. Yeah. Uh, but I don't see that down here, even though that looks really clear to me. So I'm just going to say something else. Something else. Uh, yeah, this looks like a fucking alien or something. I guess monkey is still the closest thing. Uh, yeah, this, I guess squid. Of course it's a squid. Um, something sexual. I see hands. Like the first thing I see is over here. I see like hands and I see other hands pointing. Yeah, like so the I'm bloody hands. hand prints. Uh, first thing, I, first thing I saw here is like a dog. To me, this kind of looks like a dog face, like through an acid trip lens, sort of, oh. like a devil dog. But that's not down there. So I guess I have to say something else. Um, antlers, something sexual, mustache, fountain. I don't really see anything much in this. This still looks like a goat to me. Yeah. But that's not here or not nothing. Um, nothing else. This looks very like an insect. Looks like an ant head. This to me looks like a mask, but I don't see that here. Skull is the closest, but. Yeah. I don't know if I should do skull because it is. I mean, I, I see eyes here. Yeah. But to me, it looks like a fucking, like, a, like the mask that a um, Skeletor wore in. Um, Masters of the Universe. Right. Yeah. I see that. But I, see that. Um, I guess something else. If, I'm going to go something else. I don't think it's that close to a skull, despite it looking like something worn by Skeletor. Uh, so for this, I the main thing that I'm drawn to is this thing, which to me looks like a fucking gremlin in a cowboy hat with a gun for a dick. <laughs> something evil. There yeah, I guess that's true. It does look evil. Lack of self-worth. Damn. Your darkest secret is your lack of self-worth. You may or may not show others how you feel about yourself. There are different ways how people behave with a lack of self-worth. One may act like they're perfect. The other hides away. The former constantly needs a pat on the back and seeks recognition. That's the kind of person that gets sad if their social media post didn't get as many likes as anticipated. The latter feels like they always do something wrong and try, to never, and try not to stand out. But what both have in common is their sensitiveness and their fear of being rejected. One bad word and their world begins to crumble. The best tip I could give you is to find your self-worth in yourself and not from the outside. You're a worthy, lovable person. Move outside your comfort zone to achieve self-esteem. Fuck. Just Damn. Pl just plunge the dagger in. Fucking Rorschach test quiz. Jesus fucking Christ. Ow. Man, this, this shit was like years worth of therapy in one Oof. little shitty quiz, you know? God damn. Why? Confront your darkness, TJ. Why are you like this quiz? All right. Uh, I don't know how long this one is. I don't know if both of us should take this. I guess maybe we'll see if it seems accurate for one of us. Sure. Which, one of us which one of us has to bear with this shit? Um, I mean, I guess we could just take turns. I guess it'll All be right. my turn. So it's your turn then. So take a pick dessert. a dessert. Uh, There's a lot. There's a oh, ton. Jesus. Okay, so it goes on. Lava cake, creme brulee, bread pudding. 
Japanese cheesecake, tiramisu, pavlova, brigad brigadiro, sticky toffee pudding, moon cake, apple pie, flan, or a chocolate fountain. Dude, I gotta tell you, man, creme brulee is some of the fucking best shit in the world. I'm gonna, yeah. uh, that's the one that sticks out to me. Creme it's brulee. hard to turn down some creme brulee. Yeah. So pick one of these animals: koala, wolf, sleuth, oh. red panda, spider monkey. Badger, elephant, lynx, humpback whale, bearded vulture, grizzly bear, or hedgehog? Hmm, sloth or hedgehog? I'm going to go with the sloth, man. I love sloths. Sloth. Pick a condiment. Ketchup, soy sauce, mango chutney, Dijon mustard. Uh, you got some Dijon mustard? Pesto, mayonnaise, cocktail sauce, honey. Relish, maple syrup, Vegemite, tzatziki. Uh, give me the ketchup, man. I love, I love some ketchup. Pick a celebrity. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Dolly Parton, Lana Condor, Harry Styles, Michael B. Jordan, Lizzo, Melissa McCarthy, Paul Rudd, yeah. Tracy Ellis Ross, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Elizabeth Olsen, or Dan levy scroll back up because i like i gotta be honest like, half of these people i barely know they exist so I have some of there's people on here i have literally never even heard of before, i'm gonna pick so. dolly she's clearly the best of those pieces of shit uh pick a fruit tangerine banana apple pomegranate avocado blueberries mango fig strawberries pear lychee pineapple hmm out of these big pineapple i love a pineapple pineapple is good as fuck France. Ah, uh, mais oui. to France, Paul Zigo. You uh, will be happy in France, eh? You are a daydreamer who has a soft spot. I'm not going to try to do that because I'm horrible. Uh, for good food and wine romantic languages, your friends and family have told you countless times you were born in the wrong era. It's probably true. What you really need is life filled with passion, excitement, and delicious pastries. You'll find that in France. Bon voyage, motherfucker. I mean, I've already got like a little head start. I can do the days of the week in French and I can count to 10 in French. So oh, yeah. I got a, I got a little head start on France. That was short enough. You could probably do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So for me, creme brulee does stand out, but man, I'll tell you what, if you get a really good ass bread pudding, that shit could be fucking dope. Oh, I also yeah. have a weakness yeah. for cheesecake, but I don't know nothing about no Japanese cheesecake. So I don't know on that one. That's too mysterious. Apple pie can be pretty good, but I don't think it's a hard hitter like creme brulee. I got to say, if I mean, creme brulee, you're taking less of a chance because you could order some bread pudding and that shit could be fucking just ugh, gross. Yeah, it could, it could just be soggy. It could be chilly. fucking a bunch of shit. It, sometimes it's too soggy. Sometimes it's too hard. They got to really fucking shine with the bread pudding. Creme brulee, though, you get that. It's pretty hard to fuck up a goddamn creme brulee. You don't get too much fucking like this creme brulee sucks. But you know what? I'm going to roll the dice on them bread pudding. If for no other reason than to stand out from your results. But I think, I think, I, I think I'm usually a, a dice roller on shit like that. Because I like creme brulee, but I almost never get it because I know exactly what it's going to be. Unless I'm somewhere that like specializes, maybe. Pick an animal. Koala, wolf, sloth. I know the fucking guys. Red panda. Da, 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 da. Um, I like this vulture. When I was a kid, I used to have a... I, when I was a kid, I, uh, I had a stuffed vulture. His name was Vulchy. Lost him. I wish I still had that vulture. Found him at a fucking uh, condo. My mom was looking at fucking condos or something. I think it was around the time of my parents' divorce. She was looking for some place to live. Uh, and I, we were just, like touring a fucking empty condo. And there was like, you know, sometimes people will just leave something behind. And the thing they left behind was this dirty ass, nasty stuffed vulture. And I immediately loved it. I'm like, I love this vulture. It was my second favorite childhood stuffed animal. I have neither of my favorite childhood stuffed animals anymore. It makes me mad. You had a my stuffed vulture. Lost. Yeah, I had a stuffed vulture. I had a stuffed. My favorite stuffed animals were a stuffed vulture and a stuffed donkey. Was he like? I see. Oh, that's crazy, dude. What? My favorite uh, stuffed animal was a donkey when I was a kid. Oh shit, mine was too. I had a. It was mine was just. I just called him donkey. He was fucking Ugh. great. You know? You what? kidding I, me? Yeah. Dude, yeah. I had. That's exact. Mine was named donkey. I wonder if it was the same exact fucking doll. That'd be pretty creepy. What color was it? It's gray. Mine was uh like dark gray and brown. Yeah. There was no. I don't think there was any brown on him. He was just he had like a gray. brown chest. 
Yeah, I might have like a white, like white paws or whatever. Not paws, I guess, but you know, you know, I think he had a white chest. But uh, you know, I actually had him into adulthood a little bit. But when I fucking went, I went off and lived with the first girlfriend I got. When when she fucking kicked my ass out, she kept my fucking goddamn childhood stuffed donkey. That fucking cunt. Yeah, I think I, I think when I got divorced, my donkey probably got thrown out. Yeah, fuck fuck women. It's horrible. Misogyny is good. Throw anyway. out my donkey, man. Yeah, like fuck that. You're allowed to hate someone who throws your donkey away. Pick a condiment: ketchup, soy sauce, mango chutney, Dijon mustard. Blah blah blah. Um. Okay, so uh, here's the deal. Um, honey is pretty good, but it doesn't go on much. There's only a few things you could put it on. Whereas, uh, it, so it really comes. I mean, like, really, at the end of the day, you can fucking fuck with all this bullshit. But if, you know, I'm an American, goddamn it. It comes down to mayonnaise, mustard, and ketchup. All right. Like, those are the fucking contenders here. Yep. Now, ketchup is too pedestrian for me. Boop. Oh. Mayonnaise, it's a more divisive one. I'm a pro-mayonnaise person, but at the end of the day, if there's one condiment I could put on a sandwich that's going to make me want to eat that sandwich more than any other, it's going to be some fucking mustard of any variety, Dijon being especially good. A fucking aristocrat, huh? Yeah. I'm like an Obama aristocrat. Dolly Parton is not even playing close. Uh, uh, but uh, but no. I'm not doing it. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You got to pick banana, dude. Actually, you're, not, uh, you're, not even, you're not even being honest if you don't pick banana. Uh, I like strawberries. God damn it. It's the same fucking result. Garbage. Terrible test. Terrible test. Went through all that trouble. Fuck you. We're both going to France. All right. So horror film franchises. All right. We have. All right. This was suggested before, but it was a me and Scotty one. So we're like, that's. You know, Paul's got to be here for that shit. And I'm going to tell you what I love about this tier list above any other tier list I've ever seen. They're fucking readable. Holy oh, shit. Wow. Oh, my God. What a fucking revolution in these. That is. Holy shit. Now, there's a shit ton, but there's at quite least a few of them. Fucking readable for fuck's sake. Yeah, that'll make it easier to get through. All right. So remember, we're rating franchises here. Not single film. Not right. I mean, that, no matter how good the single film is, you got to fucking think about the overall quality of the entire franchise. Okay. Right. Got it. So that's what we're doing. And, you know, obviously we're rating them as far as franchises go. Sure. Okay, I don't want to, I mean, we're, we're, I mean this is going to take a minute, but I don't want to spend too much crazy time on it. So let's not fucking get, well, well I guess what's going to happen is going to happen. So, um, so the exorcist. Uh, the, the first Exorcist is a masterpiece and every single other entry is pretty much shit. I guess yeah. I have a little bit of a soft spot for Exorcist 3, but it's not, it wasn't even really supposed to be an Exorcist movie. It wasn't even conceived of as one. They just threw it through the name Exorcist on it afterwards. I mean, it, it's got to be bumped up a couple of spots by just having one of the greatest horror films of all time in it, but you're absolutely right. It's The Exorcist and then Unwatchable Garbage. So yeah. I would give it like a D. All right. you know, it's the, it, like it, without the first movie it would be a solid f for sure oh yeah it'd be horrible so the thing i don't even really consider that i mean like i guess there's some other films in it so are we are counting there? the original film the 1950s film yeah and then of course there was the remake slash prequel I in 2011 that's enough to make it a franchise uh so i don't know i mean that that i mean uh, the old thing the, is pretty good. It's, it's a very right. different kind of movie. It's, yeah, it's and, not even really the same kind of thing. And then the, <laughs> the '80s old, thing is is great. So I'd give this like a. The solid... 2011 one is pretty bad, but it's what it, honestly. I mean, it was more like it was bad because it was insulting to the legacy. It really wasn't that bad in and of itself. It was just kind of like whatever. There are two prequels as well. See, I I'm not aware of those. There's not two prequels. I don't think there's only one prequel. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know, like a B or a C? What are you feeling? I, I say B. Yeah. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Okay, so let's talk about that. let's talk about that for one sec. I, I'm the one who said not to rant about these. Whatever. I'm. It's gonna happen. Fuck it. Yeah, you got to. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Okay, the first Silent Night, Deadly Night. I fucking love that movie. All right, I do. Pretty I know good. it's not good, but for as far as slash movies goes, it has a unique fucking premise. Yeah. It's shocking. It's bold. It fucking. It's crazy to watch. It's got some memorable kills in it. Probably most memorably is when the girl is, uh, you know, uh, topless and is impaled on the the deer antlers hanging on the wall. Right. Uh, that's pretty famous. Um. So yeah, there's some good shit in Silent Night Deadly Night. It's a pretty fucking interesting movie. The sequel to Silent Night Deadly Night is basically 
eighty percent of that movie is like footage from the first movie. Which, if if you imagine going to a movie theater to see a sequel to a movie, and then almost all of the footage that you watch is from the first movie. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that happened in a lot of budget sequels. Yeah, um, like uh, what was that? Demons, Demons Two, or something like that, or Demon Knight Two, or Night what of the Demons, Demon, Night yeah. of the Demons Two. Yeah, it was it's a bunch of all clips. a bunch of fucking clips from the first movie. It's like what? Are you shitting me? And then at, at, by the time this series wrapped up, it literally was no longer about Christmas. They literally got rid of the Christmas angle in Silent Night, Deadly Night. So yeah, that doesn't make I mean, any fucking sense. Like this is this series. I mean, like despite my enjoyment of the first one, I don't know what what was, what was E. Get E out of here. There's no fucking E. Okay. Uh, this is a I, I don't know. It's an F. Yeah. It just it falls too far. I don't care. That there's a good film in it. The rest of it is totally like destroys that. I would agree with that. Uh, Resident Evil series, um, kind of a guilty pleasure of mine, honestly. Um, they're bad movies. They are bad, but, they, they're, but they, I think they're, they're watchable, fun to watch. though. Like, I yeah. think they're pretty watchable fucking flicks. I'd give it a, I'd give it a B overall. Like, I don't, I don't regret any of the Resident Evil movies that I've watched. Yeah, so. like because they're all just like baseline, stupid, entertaining, garbage fun. I don't know. The Fly. Now, here's a tough one. So, I don't know if this once again. I'm, I'm kind of. Do we consider? the original two fly movies from the fifties. You this? almost have to, I guess you kind of, there was fly and I think son of the fly in yeah. the fifties. And then there was Jeff Goldblum in the fly in 1980, whatever. And then there was a sequel to the fly called the fly Two that is un fucking watchable. Yeah. It's I, horrible. I honestly have not seen the, the fifties fly movies. Uh, I've seen it. I've seen uh, the first one. I have not seen son of the fly or whatever. The, I know there's a sequel. I have a hold up. Whoa. TJ's going to go beat somebody's ass. Did you see that butt crack when he got up, too? Oh, he's grabbing his fly poster. Nice. Yeah. I mean, the Gold Bloom fly is, without a doubt, like a like an over-the-top classic movie. It's a Cronenberg movie. And not only, not only is it a Cronenberg so, movie, but it's Cronenberg at, a- like, his finest. That is an OG uh, fly poster. It's not like a reproduction or whatever. That's like yeah. from the movie theaters when it came out. This is another one where I just think like that the the Cronenberg fly elevates whatever flotsam and jetsam is hanging around it at least to a B. To be honest with you, like the fifties fly is a pretty goddamn entertaining movie. The first, the first one is I can't say on the the sequel to that. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean it has a, a um, what's his face? God damn it, you know. The, go- the goddamn horror guy, <laughs> Vincent Price. Yeah, it has Vincent Price in it. It's kind of hard to hate on any Vincent Price movie, to be fucking frank with you. And uh, yeah, the fly is good. For- I mean, the original one's good, and the C- the remake is is even better. Give it an uh, A. Yeah, I don't know. I I put it there, but then and just I mean I don't know. I can just kind of forget that the fly two exists because it's so fucking bad and forgettable. Candyman. Candyman. I never even really liked any of those. I gotta be honest with you. Neither did I. I know they're like important in some ways to black people because it was like you know it was one of the one of the original the first real black horror movies with a black antagonist and black black protagonists i think the first one had a white one but whatever i mean it was still i mean there were yeah uh but yeah you know i they just don't do it for me i gotta get it what (laughs) they bought me this like banana of like little beads and stuff to like sit here and squeeze and i just squeezed it and the beads shot all over the place oh shit you you broke your stress toy i yeah (laughs) yeah pretty much holy shit man i know Uh you're high strung tj you're high strung. i guess i am fuck i gotta give it an f uh they just don't they just don't do it for me it's not good i don't know none of them have been good for me i think i didn't like any other fucking flicks i didn't like the first one i didn't like any of the follow-ups they all kind of were boring shit to me this one I can't read, honestly. What is that? It says Camp Blood. I've never heard of that. Have you heard don't of that? No, don't remember. Yep. The Howling. Um, so uh the Howling, the first <laughs> Howling is pretty good. The uh the follow-ups are all pretty much terrible uniformly. They get worse with time too. Like they get like the further deep you go into the howling. I think there's like four of them or five of them, maybe. Uh, I think there's like five or six or something like that. Yeah, and they get less watchable as time goes on. The the original howling. It's not even the best werewolf movie. You know, it's all right. It's pretty decent. I think this might be our first 
C or maybe it's a D. Yeah, if we put the Exorcist in the D, we got to put the Howling in the D. Yeah, this has got to be a D. Maybe the even Exorcist, the good maybe the Exorcist ought to be, be bumped up to C. Yeah, yeah, maybe because we, we gave we gave we gave the we gave the Fly respect for its fucking first entry, and the Exorcist has been more shit on I think than the Fly. Yeah, but uh, Howling, Howling I think a is a D. Good movie in the first one, but you know, a bunch of follow ups that were terrible. Human Centipede. I only saw the first Human Centipede movie. I know they stuck pretty fucking close. They they rode the edginess pretty hard. So I kind of yeah, they did. That. I've seen two, I've seen the first two. Okay, uh, they, these are D, D level movies. To yeah, me. I, I mean, mean they're like, not they're not any masterpieces. The, their premise was uh you know interesting or whatever attention grabbing, but as far as like watchability and enjoyability, they're just it's not there. You know. Uh, attack of the killer tomatoes um i don't like them they're they're funny enough i don't know i don't like them i, no, I, I never I, I, too goofy for me like goofy in a, in the wrong type of way i'm just not a fan yeah i don't know i've uh i remember liking some of these movies uh but i'm not really gonna fucking go to bat for them if you want to give them an f i'm i'm down with it i'm yep. not I, you know because i was gonna say like i'm not gonna fight you tooth and nail over d or f because i'm not gonna put them higher than d yeah uh boogeyman i don't know do you know it uh yeah don't know don't remember couldn't tell like the the name boogeyman i think i've seen the movie but i w- i didn't know that there were like sequels and shit so i can't really rate that so friday 13th this one i've uh seen every single entry into this same so uh let me think about this first i mean the fact that we've watched them all i think it oh, it's definitely to gonna be in the top rungs it's just so where let me do see we here. Stick it? um so you're not as big a fan of slasher movies as i am obviously i'm more into slashers than you Sure. But, yeah, uh, but as far as these go, here's what I would say. The first one does not really interest me very much because Jason's not really in it. I'm interested in Jason Voorhees. Right. Um, the second one, he's not wearing his iconic mask. He's wearing a bag on his head. But they do go pretty hard with it. So I give it some respect. So the second one, first one, no good. Second one, good. Third one, uh, third one, pretty much the third one through like the seventh one, all pretty good to me. And then the eighth sucks. The ninth sucks. The tenth is watchable, but only accidentally. Yeah. And then the remake sucks. So basically like, you got a series where like half of it's been pretty fucking solid in my opinion. And the other half has kind of been like, I don't know. So, um, I would say for me, I love Jason Voorhees and he's, he's always gonna have a soft spot for me. I don't know. I would say a B for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with it at a, at a B. I'd probably put it similarly. Lake Placid. Uh, so these went, these went sci-fi channel original movie pretty quick. Um, this is the, the, the original is not exactly is, a masterpiece itself. Yeah. So it's it's a giant alligator movie. It's horrible. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's garbage. Uh, I'd say F. F. Yeah. Open water. I didn't even know this was a franchise. It is. Yeah, just um, people stuck uh, out. You know, like outside their boats. Yeah. And stuff. I've never seen any of these. This sounds like a boring premise. I don't like. I'm stuck in one place kind of movies. It seems like a dull premise. So yeah, I, I mean, them. it's a. Li- I don't know. It's a psychologically effective movie, but uh, they get worse as you know the sequel. So they didn't they didn't start amazing, and the sequels just kind of drag it down. So I give it a D. All right, I'll give. I'll trust you on that. There's F. only one scanners, right? No, no. Okay. There's multiple. Well, F then, because I've yeah. uh, even rewatching the original. It doesn't deserve any fucking hype. It sucks. Scanners are, is is just boring. Unfortunately, it's a dull fucking slog of a movie. Video drum is way better fuck scanners um the evil dead uh pretty much all these are good i don't i never saw the remake so i maybe that one sucks it does uh, but they, uh, they just kind of leached a, a lot of the charm out of it and shit i mean it's not a sam raimi movie so right you know you can't have an evil dead without sam raimi is just like eh. but uh it definitely it. doesn't drag down the originals you'd have to put uh army of the dead or whatever I mean, i'd is. say like i don't know if the, just based on the original trilogy he's got to be at least an a i mean yeah it's it, at least be, an a maybe i mean i don't know there's a fucking i, I put it in s you know what i mean because it, it maintains such quality over three full movies <laughs> you yeah. can't really say that over uh, for me yeah like none of these franchises. other none of these other franchises have really done that no. and i mean whatever the re, whatever the remake was i don't i think it was probably more of like a not worthy than it was like outright bad right Right, yeah. Like, if it wasn't called Evil Dead, it probably would be like, that was all right. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it could have been called something else. It just didn't feel like an Evil Dead movie. Right, so you just didn't capture it. Uh, Terror Tunes, this is not really my my thing. Yeah, me neither. Um, I would say F for me. Yep. If someone, if you're into it, I can get that, because it has its own vibe and shit, but eh. Never been into it. Uh, scary Movie, another F. I don't give a yeah, fuck about Yeah, same those. for me. I never Horrible. found these uh, funny. 
Uh, Wishmaster. Um, those are interesting. At least the first two are kind of interesting. Um, they're all interesting. It's I don't know. Like they're not good. Yeah, but I I don't think they belong down in the D and F. Maybe like another C. Maybe. All right. Lost Boys. Now this is another one I had no idea was a series. I thought there was just the one movie in the eighties, and I have no. Not they heard made of any a couple sequels, of sequels so. to the Lost um, Boys. I'm assuming they're terrible, right? Yes. I'd have heard of them if they weren't. Yeah, no, they're they're so probably they're F. I don't know. Uh, well, the original movie is pretty good, though. Yeah, it is pretty good, but it's not like is it good? It's not good in a way that's gonna like push this shit way up the list of like, oh, you gotta at least give this a C or something. I'm thinking it's probably D territory. Yeah, if the sequels D. are bad. Yeah, because the original movie is like, I don't know. I would give it a B at best, but maybe you you like think it's better than that. I don't know. Yep. Uh, Ginger Snaps. Me and Paul have talked a few times about how Ginger Snaps is a underrated werewolf movie. And it's my uh, favorite werewolf movie, honestly. Like, um, yeah, um, I don't know what my favorite werewolf. My mine would probably be the pretentious com the company of wolves. I don't know if you ever seen uh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really more like an art film. Yeah, I also uh, like Wolf with yeah, I do. Wolf with Jack Nicholson is pretty good. It kind of suffers from the like how <laughs> garbage the actual werewolves look at the end of the movie. But yeah, like the the lead up to that moment is all great. So I just love his uh, his performance in that movie. I He's love watching great. him go and from like uh, like a stepped on zero self esteem worm to like the ultimate Chad alpha male or whatever. That is pretty dope. Um, but yeah, um, Ginger Snaps. Uh, uh, I've never seen the sequels. I don't know. Have you seen them? Uh, yeah, I've. They're not good. Uh, but the original is good enough. I think we need we need to put this at the, at, a, at least a C. You know what I mean? Because right. it's, it's a great fine with werewolf. I don't know anything about this franchise. Feast. Yeah, Feast. Don't know. Uh, I Spit on Your Grave. I think that these movies have pretty much all been shit, including yeah. the original. Um, no, I have no affinity for it myself. If Paul wants to argue it uh, up higher, I'll let him. Nope. Okay. Uh, Phantasm. Um, I am a fan of the Phantasm movies, but I feel like they're very strange and hard to get into. And like... They're hard to understand, and I don't know if that's because of, like, bad storytelling or bad editing or whatever the fuck, or if it's just, like, I don't know, they're just, like, weirdly convoluted and complicated. Yeah. And they, don't, they don't really spell a lot out for you. They kind of, like, want you to fucking sit there and be like, what the fuck just happened? There's, like, some kind of funeral parlor, and it's, like sending dead bodies to this alternate dimension full of like demon Jawas to repurpose them into like flesh monsters for their race to continue or something. Yeah. <laughs> like something like that is going on. Um, the vibe of these movies is pretty cool. At least the first few. That's why I, I think it's the, I think it's not uh bad writing. I think it's just um, esoteric kind. Yeah. Of it kind of feels like, it's like watching the dream. Like people always talk about these dream movies, like these movies that are shot to have a dreamlike quality. And to me, Phantasm is almost like one of the ultimate examples of like it feels like you're dreaming. Yeah. Um, so I would say for me, it's at least a C. I'd put it up at maybe a, even a B. I mean, it's pretty quality throughout. I'll give it that. I have not watched some of the later entries. I know that they've, the budgets got lower, but I feel it's it's all by the same dude who has been telling the same continuous story. So that's kind of cool, just knowing that there's like consistency between sequels. Tips while it works, solidarity and much love from Patreon. Yeah, cool. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, so let me think about this, because there's a lot of movies in this series, and not all of them are very good. Uh, uh, yeah, you know what, though, though dude? I, I, I love them still. Yeah. First one's good. Second one, I honestly can barely watch. It's my yeah, that's favorite. definitely the worst of the of the, of the bunch uh, for sure. Third one is pretty good in a totally different way. It's way more cheesy. Yeah, but it still kind of rocks. Yeah, fourth one, uh, fourth one and fifth one are kind of like mixed bag for me. They're not totally enjoyable, but they're not totally shit. And there is a lot of creativity that goes into some some of the kills in those movies. True, like they do some pretty crazy dream scenarios with Freddy and some really really amazing practical effects work. Um, and then Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare is pretty much another almost unwatchable one. But it's kind of so bad that it's good. And then uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare really was like a breath of fresh air at the time. But if you watch it again, it kind of has not aged great. Yeah, I mean, it was it, it had this really interesting like meta 
where but you know, like the, the, yeah, movie... the meta thing it's like a it's like almost proto meta where it's like this wasn't really done that much back then so it had a lot of novelty at the time but now it's been done a lot and it's been done better so it's like not quite as like oh okay this is not the groundbreaking thing that it, it felt like at the time yeah uh, you know nightmare on elm street is definitely like freddy's my favorite slasher of the main slasher guys <laughs> we gotta give this at least a b if not an a i think i think b props are, are appropriate yeah honestly because there is just a lot of shit dragging it down but i mean it, it you know it, at its best i mean it was it's s tier shit which the only yep. thing that's made it, the only thing that's the only franchise that we've decided is s tier so far is the evil dead yeah uh so alien um this is a really rough one for you probably because you know this is almost like how many good what's the good to bad ratio at this point i mean the first the first three are great you know okay. what i mean they they're not necessarily equal in quality there's definitely a sharp fall off with three, but it's still better than most sci-fi movies, even uh, saying that. And then the franchise just kind of takes a shit. Yeah. Uh, it just like, runs like it runs completely out of gas. <laughs> I mean, it, and it happens so quick too. I mean, it goes from three, which is, uh, you know, like well, not the greatest alien movie. It's still an interesting entry in the franchise to utter action schlock. And then, you know, just kind of, stays there through its crossover films with predator and then turns into fart sniffing pretentious boring nonsense uh with the ridley scott prequel yeah i don't so. know what the fuck happened to that <laughs> that dude so yeah uh, uh alien you know like it's it, my favorite my favorite C? movie of all time is aliens yeah I, i'd put it at a c for sure because those those first two i mean for you for you the first three for me the first two films are just so fucking perfect it's like kind of hard to be like that really does elevate the whole franchise, even yeah. though it's been terrible for so long now. Um, but where the blob? I don't know why they, it's just not the blob, but whatever. Um, so the blob, there's I think two f movies from the fifties, maybe maybe sixties. Yeah, uh, the, the I think it's then, a sixties movie. They're, they're they're great. Like the the original uh, yeah. old blobs are great. The eighties the, remake, eighties uh, is... remake is really fucking great. Um, some of the, some of the good. best. Yeah, these are really good. I mean, it might be an A. Honestly, uh, I'm going to I'm going to go with you on that because I remember the I remember the 50s. I don't I've not seen the sequel to the 50s. One. I know there is one, but I do like the original blob and I do love the 80s blob. So I'll go with that. Yeah, they're great. Uh, the Omen. So you have two. you have a movie that's really good and then you have a, a sequel that's unnecessary, but still kind of watchable. And then you have a terrible sequel and then you have a terrible remake. The, I mean, the most unnecessary remake of all time. It's literally it a almost, shot it, for yeah, shot. It just like basically it does the same. It's the same movie again with like slightly updated movie making techniques, I guess. But somehow beat for worse. beat, shot for shot. It's just a recast and a refilming of the movie that drags it down a little bit. I don't know. The original Omen is great, but, yeah. uh, you know, there's too many bad ones. So I'd put it in a D. Yeah, because uh, if we if the Exorcist got brought down to C by its sequels, then the Omen has to be brought down to D by its yeah. sequels uh critters uh i like this franchise um uh, but too. i think it's because i watched it a lot when i was a kid same i don't man, know if man. i would if i was subjected to it for the first time as an adult i don't think i'd be like "Ooh, this is good but it's true for a lot of these for me it's honestly. got nostalgia goggles for me and i used to watch these movies pretty relentlessly um i love the first two critters especially and i love the the, the third and fourth one <clears throat> even like yeah the fourth one i think is when it took place all in space uh, but I love that the fucking I love that the running character that it followed was not the main character from the first movie, but like one of the side characters. It just kind of followed uh, the Charlie, the kind of like simple guy, you know, throughout yeah. these fucking films. And he's kind of just like a dumbass, but he's like the the running thread throughout all these movies and like the recurring character that's like you follow through the films, even though you wouldn't expect that watching the first movie. Yeah. Um, and I love the critters themselves. They got a lot of personality. They're basically rip off gremlins, I think, but uh, they're pretty cool. So um, I don't know. For me, probably at least a C. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with a C. They're they're enjoyable movies. Uh, now, The Hitcher, I don't think I've seen enough to to know. I think I only, yeah, I think the I, only one of these films I saw was the remake, and um, it was all right. But uh, I don't know enough about the franchise. I, I would probably do. Yeah, don't know. Don't remember because I'm in the same boat there. Uh, Cloverfield, um, F. Yeah. I'm just not impressed with Cloverfield. None of the entries in it uh, have done anything for me. Uh, I kind of liked Cloverfield Lane, but really only because I was enjoying the performance of uh, John Goodman. Other than that, I didn't really give a shit. So, and, uh, Children of the Corn is another F. 
Yeah, these all suck. These are all of good. them. Even though even the first one, the first one's the most watchable one, but uh, you know, only just. So creep show. Uh, as far as I know, there's three of these. The third one is a really low budget, decades later, fucking attempt to cash in. Yeah, and of course, there's been a TV show since then on Shutter. Uh, I won't bother factoring that in, but I did actually see Creep Show three. It is really bad. Yep, but I have to say it was kind of watchable. And the first two Creep Shows are classics, so it's definitely be, more watchable than some of the uh, entries in in some of these. So yeah, B or A. I mean, the the original, the first two of these are just fucking. I mean, they're great. yeah, they're fucking classic. I don't know. Pretty fucking goddamn good, in my opinion. F for this yeah, fucking this 90s, horrible. 90s teen trash horror, horror yeah. just like wretchedly unwatchable. Nothing memorable about any of those fucking films. Don't know. Do you know the Brotherhood? Yeah. Uh, don't nope. Don't know. I don't know it either. ABCs of Death. Um, those are kind of fun. I don't know. D. I mean, it, it, that those are hard to judge because it's like. Yeah, they're almost like it's like a series of like sm a small films and shit made by yeah. a bunch of different people that are and so together. even. Yeah, like each movie is a, mi a mixed bag, you know right. what I mean? I don't know. I say D because that kind of like the premise is kind of fun and there's yeah. some good ones in there. Sure. Um, I wouldn't say it deserves anything higher than that, though. No. Um, and you could probably stop. Ha, uh, F for me. F. I, yeah. I hate these movies. I don't like torture porn. It's so. not even that. I mean, to me, I, I so I watched the second movie because I'm like, ooh, torture porn. Cool. Because I do like it. Right. And it's not. It's like so tame. It's unbelievably tame for like its reputation. I'm like, what? Lame. This movie sucks. This, this there's like a thousand movies gorier than this. There's a thousand movies with more fucking torture than this. Why does this get some kind of fucking hard ass reputation? This sucks. I was so fucking bored watching that piece of shit. And yeah. like the first like hour of the movie is literally just a bunch of fucking people having co inane conversations that you would fucking tune out if you heard them in real life. Yep. Just to cash uh, in. Blade, not a horror franchise in my opinion, but um, horror imagery, I guess. So, um, yes, yeah. I don't know. D, yeah, first I mean, two are pretty good. Bunch of shit after that. Who cares? Yep. Shake, rattle, roll. Never heard of it. Have you heard yep. of it? Nope. Okay. Night of the Demons. Um. Hmm. Um, this has one of the most woe begotten remakes of all time. It is really fucking bad, and the sequel is not very good either, right? So no, the remake has uh, Edward Furlong in it, it, looking horrible, looking like he's about to fall over from drug addiction, and the hot uh, exchange student chick from American Pie is in it. It's just fucking bad, poorly written, shitty F all around. Yeah, F movie, uh, Amityville Horror F. Oh yeah, those are all those horrible. suck. Uh, cabin fever, D. Okay, the original one drives never it seen up any. from an F to a D. You never seen any of them? Yeah, yeah, so I'll go with you on that. Evil bong. I'm just gonna. I never seen it, but I'm gonna just yeah. go with F. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll give it a little sub that just for the name. You know, I've never yeah. seen it either. I'm kind of sad <laughs> but, you know, I well, I'm gonna boost you up just because you know you get you get something. Anaconda. Evil bong, you know? Um, F. Uh, yeah, this is straight F. Final Destination. Mm. These these movies, yeah, these kind movies of fascinating because you want to see the fucking crazy Rube Goldberg deaths that they fucking yeah. throw in there. Yeah, they definitely belong maybe up in the C territory. I'm gonna I put think. it up at C. Yeah, because it's like they're all even if it's a bad movie, you still want to watch it for the crazy fucking contrivances of these deaths. Yeah, it's fun. It's just fun to watch. The, oh, this thing hits this thing, and it's like you know, it's like a game of mouse trap. But instead of the mouse getting a little cage, she gets you know fucking maimed. Yep. Uh, Fright Night. Um, I love fucking, the original, and the remake is actually pretty can good. Can I do because, a fucking? Can I give? Can I have? Can I have a, fri a Fright Night hot take? Sure. Go can ahead. I please have a Fright Night hot take? Go for I it. I think the remake is better than the fucking eighties Fright Night. I uh, you know whatever not, like, I, mean, I don't honestly I don't know it's a it's a better all around structured fucking movie I don't fucking mean to go against eighties nostalgia and shit but like Fright Night is an okay fucking film from the eighties the fucking remake is actually in my opinion way fucking better way more tension and suspense I liked it I, liked I mean it I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with you about that I don't see it that way personally but yeah it's definitely one of my favorite remakes on this list probably because it's one that actually did. feels like they updated it in a way that fucking works for the yeah. time they did not try and make the same movie again, which is all I really ask for from a remake. So, you know, Hey, uh, I, uh, I, but I like, this, I like these movies. I like, yeah. I like, I mean, I liked all of them. I like the original. I like the, uh, sequels. Um, I was going to go B, but I'll, I'll do a sure.
Dusk Till Dawn. I know the first one's good. I've never seen any of the sequels, so I don't know on those. I yeah, know, I, you know, I, I have to do it all. Shit, I don't know so. either. I've never seen Dusk Till Dawn too. So yeah, uh, Ghoulies F. Terrible. Yeah, movies. I know. Well, TJ's terrified of the Ghoulies, dude. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna put those little toilet creeps anywhere higher than this. <laughs> So Halloween, this could be contentious because Paul has no reverence for the Halloween franchise like I do. But uh, I, even I have know. to admit there's a lot of shit in there. So let's just yeah, see there's... here. So let me fucking figure out how many bad to good movies there are in this fucking franchise, in my, my opinion. My problem with Halloween has always been like, I feel like Michael Myers is bland. You know he what is, I mean? But he's kind of intentionally bland, I feel like. Right. I, yeah. But I mean, in the face of such bombastic villains as Jason and Freddy and... You know what I mean? Like, it, to me, it's hard to make a case for Halloween being better than those franchises, but... One is good, two is good, three sucks ass, four is good, five sucks, six sucks, seven sucks, the remakes... Uh, wait, was there an eight? There wasn't an eight. Wait, there was. There wasn't yeah, there eight. was. Eight sucks, uh, and then... The remakes both suck. So remake, remake, and then I like two, I like the two new films in the franchise. That's two more. So for me, even as a Halloween fanboy, there's like one, two, three, four, five good ones to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bad ones. So I can't put this too fucking high. <laughs> yeah, because there's just too much shit dragging it down. There's been too many fucking botched attempts at this fucking premise. Um, C maybe you think. Uh, yeah, I mean, the fucking first movie is so fucking good, and I feel like, you know, even if you don't want, I know people are more divided on the sequel to the new Halloween series, but most people agree the first entry in that series is pretty fucking good. Hot take, Rob Zombie is better than me. Go, go fuck yourself. Yeah, that's a steaming diarrhea take. Thank man. you for your $6, and we appreciate your fandom and shit, but like, no, go fuck yourself. You're horrible. Yeah. Tremors, um, D just because they're kind of yeah. fun, I guess. Yep. Hellraiser! You're the my extra here. So. I mean, probably my favorite horror franchise of all time, so, pound for pound. But you got uh, there's a lot of shit, so like, I don't know where you want to go. It's mostly shit. It's got to be a D, you know? A D, you think? Yeah. Even though it's, it's your favorite? A, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm trying to be uh, honest Objective, here. Objective, yeah. Yeah. Hills Have Eyes. I don't know enough about it as a, as a franchise. I don't I've, know seen, I've seen the original and I've seen the remake. I, I think there's a sequel, Hills Have Eyes 2, that I have not seen. Uh, I'm fine with putting it in Don't Know, honestly, though. Yeah, okay. Child Play. Leave. Now, there's another one. I've seen all these. Um, I would say, for me overall, I have like a much higher estimation of like Bride and Seed than most fans do. So I really love those. They're all honestly kind of my favorite because it just yeah. devolves into pure like ridiculous psycho camp but um for me i'd put this at like a b but i can understand if paul's gonna come at it much lower so we'll see yeah uh you know i probably i probably would have argued for a c i'm fine with it at a b you know what i mean yeah i'm a big fanboy of this thing and i think most of the movies are really actually pretty fucking good and that, like they're because they once again Consistency of a creator behind the helm helps these fucking franchises. It does for sure. Because Sam Raimi heading up that trilogy of Evil Dead movies makes this is what gave this its consistency. Yeah. And these Child's Play movies all made by the same dude. I forget his name. Something Manzini or some shit. But yeah, Insidious. I don't know shit about this franchise. I think Paul does. Uh, the original Insidious is okay. It's a, it's basically a jump scare fest though. Like. In in uh, retrospect, as good as I thought that the original was at the time, I've never had the uh, desire to go back and watch it again. So I'd put it in a like an F. Okay. Uh, Jaws. Um, so great first movie, unnecessary but still kind of watchable sequel. Terrible third movie, and I think there was a fourth one that was just like unbelievably awful. Yeah, total schlock. Um, um so uh, the- um, D maybe C. I don't know. The first yeah. one is a masterpiece. That is true. And the second one is watchable. Um, I'd say probably D or C. I don't know. I'll let you call it. Which one you want it in? Do a D. Give it a okay. D. Jeepers, creepers. Where'd you get them creepers? Um, for me, uh, the fact, the, the moment that I saw the Jeepers Creepers guy driving around in a action figure van and shooting tarpoons at people, I was like, this is dead to me. So F for me. 
Yeah, I've, I'm not a huge fan. I think the first movie's got a little something to it, but it's an F. A for sure. Something, overall. Yeah, overall, not too good. Joyride, I don't know. Do don't know. know. Nope. Don't know. Ju on, don't know. Wrong That's turn. The grudge, know. wrong turn. I, yeah, the only, I remember the review for this time was like the only wrong turn you made was into the theater parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, Reanimator, I love these movies. Yeah, um, me too. These are actually all really fucking fun and well written and very funny. Yep. Um, and they all end in like crazy over the top ways. And it's just like Herbert West in the, the way they portray him in these, like what's, I can never remember the dude's name, Jeffrey Combs, Jeffrey Combs fucking is so good in these. Uh, if you know him from star Trek, he'd be like Wei Yun in star Trek. Uh, he plays Herbert West, the reanimator here. Yeah. I'd say at least a B for me. These are really good. Yeah, I agree. I'd put, I think we'd be, uh, doing a disservice putting in anything lower than a B. Uh, and yeah, all of them that I've seen. I think there's one I have not seen, but they're all they're all the ones I've seen are good. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, I watched these as a kid. I have not seen them as an adult. I presume they're probably all right. I don't important, know. Important, like the you know, creature for creature feature movies. They're important in the history of uh, of horror, but they're not really all that watchable, to be honest with you. Um, so would you say F then? The, I remember I remember kind of watching them at the time and liking it, but I was a kid. So there's knows. something there, but it's very little. Uh, the ring sucks, in my opinion. I don't know if you would disagree with me. Maybe you think it's good. Um, um, you know, I think that the like the Japanese one, Ringu, is a little better than the re the Americanized remake. But yeah, I, F overall, especially given the fact that it's just got a bunch of crappy sequels. Uh, Return of the Living Dead, I'd put it a solid C. Mm, yeah, been some shit entries, but I think there's there's two pretty interesting pretty good films in there one that i think is really good i think the original is fucking oh, really yeah. really fucking good it's fantastic. and the third one is pretty fucking interesting as well yep uh the second one honestly i kind of oscillate on whether or not i can i find that watchable i've seen it a few times and sometimes i watch it and think it's horrible and other times i watch it and think like it's better than i remember yeah but i don't know i guess it's like a mood thing for me i don't know what cold prey is that sounds i don't know yeah, wasn't there? I thought there was only one basket case. I'm learning a lot of yeah. shit. Is is I gotta put that one in. I don't know, I don't know. either because I've seen a basket case, but I've never seen any of the sequels or the or... ginger dead man. This one, I you know what, dude? I'm gonna be honest. I never watched. I saw. I remember seeing it on the VHS shelf and shit at Blockbuster, but I could never. I was like, no, I'm not renting a movie about a cookie that comes to life to kill people. <laughs> yeah, so never seen it. Uh, Carrie, I mean. There was Carrie, which was good, and then Carrie Two, the the fucking whatever that sucked, and I don't the know. Rage Carrie Two, dude, it was suck. that was one of those. There's a remake. I, dude, they fucking bad. totally. I totally wanted to see the Rage Carrie Two, and uh, I don't know why. I thought the trailer looked good or whatever, and then it sucked, and I was so disappointed. Yeah, um, but uh, for I me, don't I don't know. F D. It's not. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a franchise worthy fucking thing. It's no, like it it's isn't. it's a one and done. You don't make a sequel to Carrie. Fuck off. Yep. Uh, Pumpkinhead. I obviously we revere the fucking Pumpkinhead movie. Um, the second one it is honestly, might, not honestly that bad. like Pumpkin. The original Pumpkinhead might be pound for pound my favorite horror movie of all time. It, it is, is really fucking so good. good. Uh, but the sequels are just. I mean, it's one of the one that devolves like literally into like made for TV, made for TV shit. level shit. Yeah, you know and what I mean? um, so uh, I don't know, maybe a D. Yeah, like a little bit of elevation from the strength of that first movie, but like probably should have not been a trilogy or a, a whatever the fuck it is. Nope. Don't know anything about it? Nope. Don't know anything about it? Nope. 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 Um, Killjoy, do I know that? It sounds familiar, but I can't place it, so. Eh. Maniac Cop. Um, These are kind of fun. Uh, the second one is actually probably the best in this trilogy. I think yeah, the first one kind of sucks, honestly. The, um, the first one is a little bit too low budget. The second one actually has some really cool car chases in it and like a crazy finale with a lot of fire and explosions that are done very practically in ways that are probably actually pretty dangerous. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd give this at least a fucking D. Yeah. It's watchable. Prom Night. I never got into these. I don't know. Uh, me neither. All right. Night of Living Dead. Uh, so night, that's night, dawn, day. I mean, for that alone, I think once again, the trilogy strength has to put that up here. Um, now, yeah. there's been worse ones since then, so I don't know if Maybe it wants to be a C or a B. I don't know, man. I, I, I might even put this in an A. I mean, the, so having let's just, three so let's, movies let's consider in the it. worst ones that they have. So, I mean, and then you was all, so, I mean, honestly, Land, I did not think was as bad as people said. I actually kind of thought that was a cool movie. So yeah. I can't really say I shit on that. But the two after that, I think Diary and Portrait, 
Yeah. Um, those is, were really isn't bad. Necropolis in there too? I or is that is that uh, part, of the, uh, part of the? I think that's part of the. I think part of the Living Dead. You're Return right because it has the series. You're I right. Saying trilogy when I don't mean trilogy. Sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah, you're right. It is. Um. Bad. Yeah, I mean. Hmm, but that trilogy, that original trilogy of fucking films, is really, really, really fucking good. And how I don't many? Think Land how is many that of these? Bad. How many of these up here have three really great yeah. films in it? You know what I mean? You got to get enough. A. Boom. Propped it up to A. Yep. There we go. Um, one missed call. Have no fucking clue. Paul? Nope. Paranormal Activity sucks. F. Yeah, F. Uh, Slumber Party Massacre sucks. F. F. Poltergeist. Um, I like these. They they definitely get worse as time goes on. Three. By the time it gets to three, it's pretty bad. Um, C? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Meet you at C cube uh, i only ever saw the first one i know you've seen some of the sequels paul what i've seen think? all three of these there's cube cube two hypercube and cube zero uh the original one is great the second one is actually better than people give it uh credit for and the third one is unwatchable schlock uh two out of three would be a c maybe all right put it here give it a c subspecies i used to love these when i was a kid it's got a a, a vampire guy named radu who's looking for the bloodstone like it's yeah. a stone that he can just lick constantly and it gives him power and blood mm. um but honestly having gone back and watched these as an adult <laughs> uh it was really only like the titillation in them that i liked there's some titties in it you know what i mean there's a little bit of violence in it Cool. The main so, character Radu has some cool makeup, and so there's some cool D? claymation demons in it, but they're not really all that great. So yeah, D. All right. The Purge. I've never seen any of these movies. I don't know. I've seen two of the Purge movies. I've seen the first one, and then I've seen uh, the ne the next. I Purge. have heard that they actually get like a lot of uh, in, like I don't know if it works the whole way through the series but I heard some of the later entries are actually much better than the the early ones. Uh, I haven't seen this. enough of these I don't think to make a call on yeah, it. Yeah, I I'm I'm I haven't seen any so. So Psycho, uh, I've only ever seen the first Psycho. I couldn't assess it as a as a series. I don't know what the I know that some people actually have some respect for the the sequels to this, but I never saw them so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I I've seen Psycho 2 and I've seen the remake and I didn't like either of them. The original's great. Um, yeah, so maybe an it, F? Yeah, an F. Okay. Puppet Master, um, these were never all that great. Um, no, they're actually, mm. like, really hard. To, like, if you go back and watch the first Puppet Master, nothing fucking happens for, like, an hour and ten minutes. Yeah, it reminds me of a fucking, it reminds me of a fucking, uh, uh, um, whatever. It opens Hostile. with a great puppet kill, and then oh my nothing God, so many happens. Left. So yeah. many of these left. Okay. Wreck. Uh, never seen it. Don't know. Do you? You seen it? I've seen the first one, but haven't seen any sequels. So. All right. Saw F. F. They've just have used and abused that franchise out. Scream. Um, Give it a C. D, C. Okay. I'm, I'm fine at C. It's a pretty it's meta. It's movie. meta done well. Yep. Sharknado. Um, F. F. Science of the Lambs. Um, what? There, there's a... Oh yeah, that's right. Because there's, I mean, there's a, a Hannibal, team, yeah. Hannibal, and um, other one, Red Dragon. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah um, these are these are not bad actually. Yeah, all right. I mean, I don't know. None of nothing's good as that other shit. But yeah, they, See, they're all watchable. I mean, there's not a movie in there that's like not watchable. I don't the know. original um, is, is a masterpiece. Um, yeah, I mean, it's Oscar. I mean, it's got to go up to B. Yep. Sleepaway Camp. Um, pretty awful. Uh, F. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Obviously, you have a very iconic uh, original film here, but um, not all that entertaining for me for me personally. Uh, I never go back and watch it all that much, so I'm pretty biased on these. I'm not a big fan of the and Texas none of the, Chainsaw I mean, I don't know. For me, it's an F. I don't know. Yeah. I don't give yeah. a fuck about it. Blair Witch. Uh, Paul, maybe you have a soft spot for this. I'd put Love it in Love the original. But... Um, have a kind of perverse... Uh, have a fun kind of hate, hate, love, hate re relationship for Book of Shadows. And <laughs> yeah. the remake is absolutely unwatchable. So it's got to be an F. One of the most memorable fucking uh, lines you ever gave me was when you were talking, you were, you were pretending to be the producer of Blair Witch Book of Shadows and you were like, listen, the movie is the Book of Shadows. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I remember that line to this day. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what'd you say? F? F. Um, okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't fake the funk. It's an F. The predator. I don't know what that is. What <laughs> yeah. Sounds... What is predator? Um, uh, so or... first one's good, and I think the most recent one's actually pretty good. But I don't really um... think of them as horror <laughs> movies, to be yeah, honest with you. Yeah, they're to me sci-fi, but um, sci-fi action flicks. But if I got to um, appraise them as a horror movie, I don't know. Um, D for me, probably. Yep, yeah, D. And that's, and that's that's pretty many, generous too, honestly. Too many bad t- ones, uh, yeah. but you know, it's. I mean, I can't ignore the fact that the first one is good and the most recent one's actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, the woman in black. Uh, don't I don't know. Don't know. I don't know. Troll. Um, F. <laughs> Ironically, an F too. Yeah, like you know, like it's they're, they're both of them are pretty bad. But yeah, the second one is uh so bad yeah. it's good. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, it's still so urban bad. legend F. F yeah, F nineties garbage. Underworld, um, D. All right, yeah, they're kind of eh, they're kind of fun and it's fun here and there. It's fun ogling the main character or whatever, but beyond that, there's really not Hatchet much is going. just like s- s- someone couldn't get the rights to. I mean, this is just like they got fucking Jason to dress in a different costume yep. and be Jason in a different body. I don't know. They're all right. They, yep. D, D maybe I don't know. D. Uh, they're watchable if you're looking for like a low budget. Jason Voorhees substitute. Uh, yep. It. I don't know. For me, F. I, I have a face. lot of nostalgia for the made-for-TV Tim Curry one, like most people do. But honestly, if you actually watch it, it's, it's pretty very good. cringe. You know yeah. what I mean? It's really not good so at yeah, all. F. Leprechaun. Leprechaun. I mean, whatever. <laughs> uh, I part of me wants to give these a D. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm, I'm with D. I, there's some fun shit in there. Yeah. VHS. I never got into these. Me neither. Um, so I don't. Know. The Conjuring. Um, I hate these fucking movies. F for me. I uh, I've only liked one of them, so I'm fine with them being in an F. It's definitely not. Uh, it's oh, even if you like the first one, it's overstated. It's fucking welcome. I mean, come on, Zombieland. Yeah. Not really a franchise in my opinion. There's only two. But, yeah, I, mean, um, I don't know. I, I like the first one. I haven't seen one. the second one. I didn't fucking want a sequel. I didn't want to support a sequel. I don't know. Yeah. As a, as a franchise, F. Yeah. I don't want it. I don't know what the fuck that Asian is. Symbol, no thank you. Silent Hill, F. Yep. F. I don't like I don't like either of those. Uh Gremlins. Um Gr- I mean the first how many I mean, of them are there? There's only two. There's yeah, two. There's only two. Oh, there's only two. This one's gotta be like a B at least. Maybe yeah, even they're both, an A. They're both good. Maybe even an A then. Yeah. You know, I don't there's know. only I mean, two like, in the series. And they're and both they're fucking both good flicks. Good. I, mean, I don't know. You gotta give them an A. Yeah, yeah, fucking whatever. I'm I'm down with it. Uh, House on Haunted Hill. Um, um, I don't yeah. see any of these remakes. I mean, assuming they're not even. I'm assuming we're not, I mean, I guess we've factored in 50s versions and other shit. The original guess, House right. on Haunted Hill with um, uh, Vincent Price is actually really good. Mm-hmm. The remake, not good. So those are the only two that I know of. And judging on that, it's got to be an F. You yeah. know, 50 percent is an F. Uh, invasion of the body snatchers. So honestly, up until, so these have just been like a series of remakes. They just kind of remake this movie every 20 years or so. Yep. And honestly, up until the Nicole Kidman one, these were all pretty fucking good. It wasn't until modern filmmaking got its hands on it that this went to shit. Yeah. I I think that there's like three prior to that and they're all really fucking pretty good. Um, yeah, it's got to get a bump above, you know, the the dregs. I'd say like a C maybe overall. Yeah, I'll put it at C. I'm down with that. Um, Jack Frost. No, thank you. Nope. Yeah. Another one that I saw the the box for and I was just like, I'm not. I've actually, I've actually seen one Jack Frost movie. I will never watch another. So. Yeah. Well, Jurassic Park good. is not a horror movie. Okay. I mean, like if it, if you were talking about a fucking faithful adaptation of the Jurassic Park books, that would be a horror movie because those are mm-hmm. way fucking grim dark. But yeah. this fucking Spielberg schmaltz, I'm not even going to, fa- I, I don't even want to consider this, honestly. Do you? Yeah. I almost feel like it's not, it shouldn't even be here. Yeah. yeah it doesn't so. belong. You don't, you don't get to be part of this. Uh, Piranha F? F. Yeah, I mean, it's like, whatever. It's unwatchable. It's, it's got one gimmick, uh, and it does it over and over shit. again. Yeah, My turkey. Bloody Valentine. Never saw any of those. Did you see no, those? Me neither, no. Nope. The, the Descent. Descent. Great um, first movie. The first movie is, like, just fantastic. Um, And then the second movie is so bad that it turned me off of watching the first movie. <laughs> so, F. F. The Mummy. Another movie I don't really think 
necessarily belongs in this list. But it uh, put I it guess... down, dude. If we're if we're not letting fucking Jurassic Park get away from it, the mummy, right. the mummy. I guess you have to consider all the Boris Karloff mummies too, though. Mm, that yeah, franchise. that's true. Because this is kind of the spiritual successor of those, and those definitely are horror. Yeah, those are those are for sure horror. Not great though. Um, mm, I'll give it a fucking respect. Fucking D, basically. Yeah, D. I'm fine. D with for that. respect. Happy Death Day F. Yep. We're getting to the point where I have to like climb up the list to get to shit yeah yeah it's... oh my god come on all right so let's just get let's just quickly get rid of all the shit that we know we're not gonna fucking rate okay yeah just give me a yes or no on this shit quarantines no all right sinister no the strangers no black xmas no all right i know we're gonna do these well yep. ghostbusters I'll let, I'll let Ghostbusters. Yeah, stay. I guess we'll let it slide. Uh, AVP. Um, I feel like we already like put that in. Uh, don't know. Don't remember because we I, I included that in the rating of Alien. Yeah, me. You know that's true. And Predator. Too. And Predator. Yeah. Raz, so. I never heard of that. You heard nope. that? No. What's Unfriended. a haunted house? Um, a haunted house. I don't know. No idea. Yeah. Forty-seven meters it. down. Never heard of it. Get rid of it. Unfriended. You you know that movie, right? uh yeah i mean it's it, yeah we'll we'll rate it i don't think either of us have watched these dumb goosebumps movies i've nope. never seen the fucking dentist nope uh 20 yeah dracula house of, house of dark shadows i never heard of that birdemic fuck that who cares bikini bloodbath no yeah get rid of it wolf creek wolf creek you heard of that shit nope okay fuck that the boy nope. uh creep no no nope. malevolence no nope the babysitter. I've seen the first one. Probably not enough to do anything. Though. Not enough to do the franchise. Uh, Grizzly, either. no. Hollow Man, no. I've only seen the first one. See No Evil, no. Grave Encounter, no. Dead I'll just put snow. ones in there. If you hear me, if you see me, if you see me put one in there, you don't want me to put in there. Okay. Just speak up. Dead Snow, yeah. Witchboard, The Messengers. Uh, I've only seen one Chud. Same. Uh, Necromantic, I never even heard of that. The nope. Prophecy, I've seen. I guess I've seen enough of that to know. Dark Man, Toxic Avenger, Waxwork. I don't know that. Contracted, no idea. Chrome Skull, no idea. Extra, no idea. Tales from Hood, Quiet Place. I never, I've only seen one Tales from the Hood, so I can't really do that. The only one place. that I had any problem with was Waxwork, but I like honestly, it's fine. Like, okay. leave it, leave it out. All right, so here's what we got left when we get rid of all the fucking bloat. All right, Pet Cemetery. Um, you know what? The original is pretty fucking actually scary which is you know kind of yeah. stand out on this list it's got some really disturbing scenes in it the second one shockingly good um definitely not the same tone and timbre as the first one but shockingly good and i know that there's been a remake uh that i did not make it through i started to watch the 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 remake of pet cemetery and i could not make it through two out of three ain't bad a C. I will. Uh, I'll let. I'll let it have. I'll let it have a C. Climb on up the list. Pet, if you haven't seen Pet Cemetery two in a while. It's. Worth I it. actually did. I used to watch it a lot uh, as a as a teenager. So I yeah. I pretty much remember it pretty well because I saw it a number of times. Yep. It's worth uh, it. Ghostbusters uh, first movie's uh, pretty good. <laughs> um, Remakes like horrible. Vigo and shit. Remake sucks. The sequel looked like the new one. Uh, I don't know. I didn't see it, but I'm just going to assume it sucks. Um, I don't know. C, D, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, C sounds good for Ghostbusters. Is this C? We're in D. Here we go. There's C. Okay. Wish, can you collapse these? It'd be cool if you could collapse this. That would be nice. Collapse row? No, doesn't allow that. I don't know why this site's so popular. Um, anyway, unfriended. Uh, you like those, or you like F. the first one anyway? I no? like it, but not because it's a good movie. <laughs> because ah. it's a movie that's made from a perspective that I've never seen before. But it's still a bad movie. It's an F. Frankenstein. Uh, I like the old Frankenstein's. Uh, the remake with De Niro was pretty shit. Yeah, um, I don't that's know. That's a really bad movie. It's like it's like the one of those incoherent flicks I ever seen. I don't know. Would you count that towards this? I guess you have to. You have to. Yeah, I mean, it's part of the franchise. Uh, I don't know. I'd say D. Maybe a like respect. The same, the same respect the the mummy gets. Yeah. Give it to Frankenstein. The Shining. There's only two movies in this series, so once again, almost kind of hard to call it really a franchise. 
Yeah. Um, I like the sequel, but I don't even, I have to like disassociate it from the shining as much as possible to really get into it. Cause it's they not definitely, worthy. they definitely do feel like two different movies, but neither one of them is bad. And, and one of them is an absolute fucking, yeah. I mean, one's Kubrick a masterpiece, masterpiece and one's a pretty watchable fucking movie. So, um, B? I would say, yeah, probably a B. B sounds about right. Although I don't really think it should be a franchise, <laughs> but um, I don't really it, think of it as such. But yeah, as it stands, I mean, I guess uh, B is fair. Uh, Twenty eight days later, um, eh, C. Yeah, C sounds about good. Not my favorite zombie flick, but competent. Yeah, and like the sequel, I mean, it's not as beloved as the original, and people have problems with it. But honestly, it was but it's a competent. Fucking fucking movie. I don't know. I give it a C um all right uh dracula a lot of incarnations of this this is almost hard to even think of as a franchise because it spans so far and so long there's been so many incarnations yeah and uh, the, you know the 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 silver age dracula and then the hammer draculas and, and yeah like all these remakes of dracula undead dracula 2000 dracula yeah. dead and loving it dracula this dracula that um i don't know his name has been dragged no pun intended uh around a few fucking properties a lot of which have been stinkers but when a dracula movie hits it does hit pretty goddamn hard you know like you think about the original dracula and it's for its time and shit but like i don't know how much you'd want to watch that today i mean know? they're they're pretty good uh, like the, on, i love i like old movies and, i mean i'm and, all right with it i guess but i don't know it was a little bit more tame and boring than i kind of thought it would be but brom stoker's dracula is you know really good yeah one of my favorite horror movies of i don't all know time. i'm thinking dracula is probably like c range i think that's probably good yeah there's a lot been, of shit totally a lot of shit but like the stuff that's good is good and honestly it's such a it's such a I mean, it's like public domain, I think, at this point. So, like, you know, it's all... There's a million... Of course, there's a million things. House of a Thousand Corpses. Literally one good movie in the whole fucking franchise. And even um, that movie is not that good. Yeah, like, I mean, the original like is not that good. So, well, I mean, I meant, like, the... Uh, most people think the, of The Devil's Rejects as the, as the good oh, movie in really? the series. Okay, yeah, no. Not really. Um, I don't give know. It a, give it a D. I would give it a D. I'll give it a D. D it is. Because that's a... Uh, I don't know. It's 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 been it's a been, D it's, a D for shit. Sid Haig, dude. A D for Sid Haig. Yeah, and uh, you know, Sid, and like I don't know, it's pretty well written for a horror movie, honestly. And there's some really fucked up shit. Like if you're looking for some like really demented shit, it's there. Yeah. So uh, Salem's Lot F. F. I'm not even gonna bother dragging it up to F. I'm just gonna put it here in the fucking garbage bin with this don't know shit. Because uh, I, I don't feel like crawling up there. Don't yeah. breathe. I never. Did, why did nope. I leave this in here? I don't. I don't, I don't know. know shit. Um, house. Um, D. I don't know. D, yeah, the first movie is pretty good. I don't know. Is the second one good? I the can't second really one remember. Is, the second one goes fucking nuts. Like, Does so it? so crazy that it's good. So okay. I'll go D then. Yeah, D. Um, the Stepfather. I love the first two Stepfather movies. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, defer the, to you on this the one third because one, I haven't really seen them. Okay, the third one is... Uh, so the first one... The first Stepfather is a genuinely fucking pretty scary movie. The second one is, um, I'll put it in C. The second one is, uh, is bad, but it's fun. And the third one is they recast, like, it's all based on the dude who plays the stepfather. And then there was a, a remake that sucked, but I, I didn't watch it. So fuck it. It doesn't exist to me. Yeah. Um, I'll put it, in, I'll give it a C because those first two are really good. The prophecy, um, to me, pretty, pretty boring. Yeah. They're not great. Um, I'm just going to put them here, I guess, yep. unless you want me to nope. put them up to C or anything. Dark uh, Dark man. Uh, once best thing, again, the best thing about Dark Man is the Danny Elfman score. Yeah, uh, uh, it, the original has a. I mean, the original is a Sam Raimi movie, and it has the feel of one, and it goes totally nuts. But then there's like two really bad direct-to-video sequels that kind of just drag the whole thing into shit. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I'm just gonna consider this an extension of F at this point because I don't feel sure. like crawling up there. Uh, Toxic Avenger. Um. D guilty pleasure D <laughs> for me. I don't know. Yeah, it feels about right. Uh, that's F, I think. Um, yeah, most of them are pretty shitty. I mean, they're all shitty, but uh, uh, the Invisible Man. Uh, I don't honestly know, to be honest, to nah, be real. Same um, here. Uh, Quiet Place. Um, yeah, I've only seen the first one. I know Paul saw the second one, so I'll let him judge it. Yeah, they're both like the first one is definitely better. The second one is watchable, but not great. I would give it like a, I don't know, a C. All right, C territory. So here we go. 
We got the list. The only thing that we decided was an S tier is the Evil Dead, which feels right. Yeah, that definitely feels right. I mean, those are transcendent horror movies. Uh, so then in the A tier, we got The Fly, one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, the Blob, Fright Night, Night Living Dead, Gremlins. And, you know, most of these, honestly, are advantaged by the fact that there's not many fucking entries into their series. Yeah. Because, you know, the more you do, the more likely you are to make some stinkers. True. So as far as B's, we got The Thing, we got Resident Evil, Friday the 13th, Phantasm, Nightmare on Elm Street, Creep Show, Child's Play, Reanimator, Silence of the Lambs, and The Shining. For C, we got The Exodus, Wishmaster, Ginger Snaps, Alien, Critters, Final Destination, Halloween, The Return of the Living Dead, Poltergeist, Cube, Scream, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Pet Cemetery, Ghostbusters, 28 Days Later, Dracula, The Stepfather, and A Quiet Place. For D, we got The Howling, Human Centipede, Open Water, Lost Boys, The Omen, ABCs of Death, Blade, Cabin Fever, Tremors, Hellraiser, Jaws, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Pumpkinhead, Maniac Cop, Subspecies, Predator, Underworld, Hatchet, Leprechaun, The Mummy, Frankenstein, House of a Thousand Corpses, House, and The Toxic Avenger. And then for the F, we got... Night yeah, I mean, nights, we don't need don't even read. Deadly Night, Candy don't Man. Even oh, they, read need, these. they need they need all these read to them, Paul. They need to oh, then you're reading Candyman, Attack of the Timmy. All right, fine. I won't read them all. But those are the top ones. The rest of this is all shit. We're not gonna, you know, go through that, I guess. But uh I do want to fucking give a shout out to Evil Bong, though. Yeah, I'm gonna I, go I try see, and find I Evil see Bong. You, Evil Bong. I see you. And I'm sorry I haven't watched you. But yeah. one of these days, Evil sorry, Bong. Sorry, I've never even I, heard of you. You and I are gonna sit down, Evil. You want to watch a trailer for Evil Bong, Paul? We could do that if you want. Yeah, let's watch the Evil Bong trailer. Yeah, I think I think it's worth it. And we got more. I mean, I think we funded every level at this point, so we're here for a fucking minute. Sure. Fucking goddamn stupid audience, fucking doing shit. I don't think we've done the. I don't think we've done the patron shit. So at least we're not having. No. I don't think we're on the line for that gauntlet. Okay, we're a little short of our final uh, goal. I think of our four. Uh, we're not. We're not to the four hundred dollar goal. Not yet. quite to the got. the beta zone. So we did this. We got here. I don't think we've done these other two. This stuff hasn't happened. We have not no. gotten to zone beta and we've not gotten the mini gauntlet of uh, Jordan Peterson. Yep. So I don't want to see more Ben Shapiro and you want to see uh, a gauntlet of Jordan Peterson shorts, then, you know, now's the time. Join the Patreon, give a little donation. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go back to this. All right. We're Mr. Naughty quick. Priest, you bastard. Of course, he would do that. Yep. Um, okay, so what is this shit? I am not a robot. That's fine. Just send me to YouTube. Like it's not it's not hard. All right. I'm gonna watch the trailer for Evil Bong, even though we already have plenty of shit to watch here. But I just I have to see. I wanna know. Yep. Oh, okay. It's full moon. That makes sense. Not not a good sign. They're the makers of the Puppet Master series. Yeah. And a bunch of other really sh house. okay. Three stoners are looking for the ultimate. I love the dude trying to do the trailer voice. You know, flop house. <laughs> Hi. Large bong for sale. Recently deceased owner claims it was possessed. Because if there's one thing this pad is lacking, it's a killer fucking bong, man. What they found. Oh, boy. Is... Yeah, this is going to be good. Yep. It's the item you've been waiting for. Whoa. It's the bong, dude. It's <laughs> okay. One it's like more like a hookah. Yeah. Hit and she gives you your dreams. Oh really? I'm just like I'm cautious here. Do you know where we are? But in this world, you get high, you die. There's a lot of nudity in this trailer, like suggestive nudity. I'm yeah. worried. I'm worried, especially after they took down my thumbnail the other day. Yeah, that was but I think bullshit. we get it. I think we get it. It looks like it might be kind of a fun little romp or yeah. something. But it's time for cringe rap, Paul. No. Are you ready for some cringe rap? I don't know why we pull another epic rap battles of Jewish history. We already know what this is. A bunch of fucking Jews trying to do epic rap battles of history without like any wordplay or talent or anything. So this sucks. Yeah, it sucks balls. Oh my god, get this, get out of here. Where's the hook? Where's the stage hook? Get him out. Yeah, I mean this is garbage, man. Boo. This is fucking wretched bullshit. No thanks. 
get out of here yeah kids just gonna be yelling the whole goddamn fucking time no oh shit this lady's about to bust a freestyle though dope freestyle by an old lady sick <laughs> y'all gotta stop messing with the men first Okay, listen. No, I want great A beef so I can sport it. Don't want no brother with a shortage. If you're small, then I'll bitch you. Tell you you're short a few inches. She ain't got no damn. They ain't nothing cringy about this. She's ripping up the mic. Yeah, what the fuck? First of all, not cringe. This is a problem when you fucking have Peyton pulling fucking shit because he's like, yeah. oh, this is cringe. Well, this is not a... cringe. You don't know what the fuck. Your Peyton's the whitest mother. He doesn't know what cringe rap is. Yeah, you don't Peyton, know. Peyton is cringe. You right, know, like, how are you gonna have him judge he should, cringe? Right, he should be pulling the rap that he likes. He should be like, "Ooh, I like it." Then pull it. Because this chick then is pull ripping it. up the mic. Not yo. only that, but she fucking destroyed me here. Yeah, she mimed shoving the beef in her pussy. I mean, she had me at hello. You know? Yeah. Time for a tic tac. See a girly like me needs a big man. You know I gotta be good to my Kit Kat. So these small time brothers I ain't with that. Don't bring it to me if it's little, cause I gotta have something in the middle. Make me sperm. This is fucking dope. This is fire. What the fuck, Peyton, you stupid motherfucker? Don't pull shit that's good, moron. Yeah, man. Dude, I'd, I'd buy that Boo. single if she dropped it. Now, this probably is bad. I love <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield and stuff. Okay, <laughs> These look. These are always horrible. Dude, dude. I mean, like, Rodney Dangerfield was a good fucking comedian. He was, like, the king of the one-liner and shit. But he shouldn't rap. He shouldn't be rapping. Hey, we might be surprised. I've never yeah, heard maybe, rapping Rodney. Dude, maybe so. he's going to fucking tear it up. Maybe he's going to fucking get on here and he's going to fucking all of his like one liners are going to be translated, you know, into a uh, into rap lyrics. Yeah. In fucking like a very well integrated kind of fashion. And I'll be like, wow, actually respectable. But. I got a fucking I got a fucking feeling it's not going to be good, but we'll see. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Oh, no. Oh, Already no. not a good mm. sign. My name is Roddy Dinchfield. I'm here to say <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh no, it's gonna be '80s style. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, I mean, yeah, but okay. I tell you, I'm all right now, but last we got some rough shape. I don't get a break with nothing. He's not rapping yet, right? <laughs> no, he's not. Right? I hope not. This is the intro. This is just the intro part, right? No. I played hide and seek when I was three. No respect. No respect. Oh my God, no. <sighs> It's worse than it's worse than I thought it was gonna be. It's worse. Than yeah, I I it's not mm -hmm. even like I'm Rodney Dangerfield, and I'm here to say he's just basically like <sighs> saying some lines that very vaguely rhyme in his normal cadence while somebody sings "No Respect." No respect. No respect. No. <laughs> no. We gotta listen to him. This is the first Rodney. You shouldn't get respect for this. This is the first cringe we've come ac across. Oh no, Rodney! This was Rodney, good, Peyton. Rodney. This one was good. Yeah, you got it. You redeemed yourself a little with this. This is extra dodeca, mega, super ultimate, fucking yeah. primo cringe right here. Ugh. Even look for me. No respect. No respect. I was an ugly kid. I never had fun. No respect. No respect. They took me to a dog show and I won. No respect. Rodney, no. Rodney, no. Rodney, no. Who talked to you into no. this, Rodney? I hope you fired them after you saw what this was, Rodney. Why did you release this? Like, you looked this and you're like, yeah, I approve. No. What was this even made for? Like, where would this have been released back in the MTV, late 80s? MTV, maybe? They fucking try to put on MTV? I, I, don't, maybe. I don't know. He's spitting that fire? No, he is, is not, Weedy. This is classic. See, you're cringe. That's the problem here. We had a cringe yep. audience. It's a classic. I can't believe you've seen this. I've never fucking even heard of this before. Yeah, dude, that that black lady would wrap circles around Rodney Dangerfield. No respect. When I was born, I brought no joy. No respect. No respect. My old man said he wanted a boy. No respect. Oh my god. Oh no. Rodney, no. Rodney, do this, Rodney, no. You know? Do you know Rodney had a pretty uh, well-known giant dick? Yeah, he did. Have you heard that? Yeah. He used to, they said he used to, like, kind of, like, I mean, it'd be Me Too-y by the data standards and stuff, but... Uh, he used to waggle it at people. Yeah, he used to fuck, kind of just, like, have his dick hanging out to, like, flex on people. Like, look at my big dick! Yeah. <laughs> like, All right. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> I like it. I don't know. No respect. I was an ugly kid, always alone. No respect. No respect. 
This is un. This is I can't even believe this fucking exists, dude. <sighs> you know, it's fucking sad too because like it's messing up the cadence of his one-liners for him to fit it into this beat. It's like fucking up his. The jokes are good. The music, yeah, it's like when you fucking have this stupid no respect, no respect in the middle of every line. It fucking it ruins the lines. Like the lines yeah. don't work no more. Like this, all this material probably could have worked if Rodney Dangerfield, you know, was just like saying it and just yeah. doing it as part of like a bit. But during it was a rap as a rap song. This is like unwatchably terrible. I can't even believe this fucking is, is a real thing. It makes me feel like cold inside, and I'm just like I'm. I don't even want to go on, but I know this has to be a segment, so. Yeah, I guess we're going on. Halloween, I had a trick or treat over the phone. No respect, no respect. Friends don't call, my phone don't ring. I don't get a break with anything. What's the matter, Rod? At least there's some tits, I guess. Ah, uh, death, where is I? What's that? I guess. Ding. It's just rap and Rodney. Ain't that? Oh no. Oh no, no, there's a verse. That's oh, a chorus. God. That's okay. a chorus. Listen to the chorus. I agree. Get out of sight. <laughs> Get out of fucking yeah. sight. Go away. No. Oh. Well, now I crave toaster bath. <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh, God. No mistake for old rap and Rodney. Can't get a break. Okay, well, um, we made it through a chorus. I feel like that's that's enough suffering, right? I mean, they want us to go on, so if we die of cringe now, there's nothing to there's nothing to do later, you know. I mean, we got Ben Shapiro and shit. I mean, like it's all coming up. Like we got more cringe rap. But, like we're not out. We have like four more cringe rappies. We're, we 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 good. We can move on. All we right. can move on. The worst Christian rap ever. Hilarious. All right. Boys and girls, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one. I feel like we've seen this before. Who yeah, I do. I do seem to remember this. I feel I feel my, I feel like a sense of dread coming over me. So I feel like this is going to be really bad. Yeah, because I think this kid is going to do some really cringy dancing and rapping. Yeah. And he's doing a new thing for us. Oh, yeah. I remember this now. Oh yeah, God is down and a new thing. thing. Yeah. This is definite cringe. Get always doing it. Oh my god, it's worse than I, th- I remembered it. Get always down it. It's worse than I fucking remember it instantly. Look at his look at his like he just doesn't know what to do with his body or hands. He's just like, oh man. God is doing a new thing. Get always doing it. Get so basically his mom sat him down. You're going to do a rap, sweetie. We're going to practice a rap, get you on the TV. Oh, this is You're 100%. Be on TV. Yeah, this is a parent. That's, and then the parent doesn't know fucking how to do a rap song or how to fucking dance or any of this shit, but they're going to teach their kid how to do it. Right. And then we get this fucking result. I just don't know that. You know, he's doing it. Who's doing it? God is doing a new thing. You know, he's doing it. Yo, who's doing it? God is doing a new thing. My God is doing a brand new thing. Well, since time began, he remains the same. God. Oh. Oh, my God. Christianity is uh, an abomination before <laughs> mankind. God. It is the, the cringiest <laughs> fucking ideology that's ever happened on the planet and that's saying something mm. oh man this evangelical shit man and this poor kid he doesn't he's not old enough to know any better you know what i mean <sighs> god is doing a new thing <laughs> mother must have blown the producer man oh, oh. My god Faithful. Can we see that? <laughs> yeah, like we, you know, we should have filmed that part. <laughs> we watched the mom blowing the producer to get her son this, this slot and not have to watch the rest of this. Oh, maybe that is Tim. Uh, yeah, cool. yeah, maybe this that is, is young Tim before his hair before his hair loss. I go to store and I start. I look down through the ages, and you will find. 
God, there's a change, but he knows the time. From hall, piano, the song to rap, you know. God's with us, so I cannot lack it. So God is doing a new What did he do? God, it's not time, time topical. What? I don't know. What did you, what did you do? Huh? What? The fuck you talking about? Still a better story than Twilight, to be fair. What? Quit dusting off that old ass Twilight meme, motherfucker. No. Ah, you fucking little bastard. No. Oh, you had Bad. to do a spin move, man. Nah. They had to do the spin get move. The, get the taser. Get the taser. Nah. I want to see that spin move one more time, TJ, before we move on. All right. I want to see, see that, that. See that. That sp- epic that fucking move. Epic spin move. Oh my god, man! I've never seen such talent on display. That was a well-given blowjob to the producer lady because this kid was just screaming to be discovered, signed. I mean, something horrible must have happened <laughs> because I, I feel like this would be like the voice of our generation if if he'd grown up and continued working. So, let's see. Can this top it? This is rapping for Jesus. This isn't the Jesus Christ is my N word, is it? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. It is. What? <laughs> Is it? This is, yeah. I recognize that big doe, doughy pastor. He's like, look, you can watch it. Okay. Well, I wrote this song for the Christian youth. I want to teach kids the Christian truth. If you want to reach those kids on the street, then you got to do a rap to a hip hop beat. <sighs> ah! Okay, sorry. See, this is this unironically proves atheism is the correct position because if there was a god, he would have smote this production with a meteor or some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, God would have been like, This dishonors my name. Like, can we even show this anymore? I don't know. Because people are people are real touchy about white people using the N word. 81 million if anything, it's probably risky because this fucking channel's getting views off the motherfucker. Yeah. But I remember we watched this on DP back in the day. I do remember this fucking thing. We did, yes. This was a parody? No, it's not. It's not a fucking parody. What make what about this makes you think it's a fucking parody? God would elbow drop on that. Yeah. God would not allow this to happen. God would stop this. The nutty professor stance. Everybody wants to think this is a parody because they don't want to believe that there's people this cringy on the planet. And um, there are. Trust me. This is not even peak Christian cringe here. This might be. Jesus Christ, baby. Ice, ice, baby. Christian parody, Paul. No, no, no. This party is going to be so live tonight. I'm so excited. Yeah, okay, that's great. Get to the rest. It's going to be live. Oh my god, why did I skip to the rap? He did it. Why did I think it was going to be better when it happened? You done did it, dude. (laughs) Can these people go back to worshiping privately as opposed to I never exposed? Yeah, that'd be great. Please. What happened to like hiding your head in your closet when you pray or whatever? Yeah, go go do that. Go hide your fucking face. Hide hide in the closet. These moves that they're doing because they can't do anything that could be construed as like sexual, so they're just doing like the Pee Wee Herman dance or whatever yeah. the fuck this is. It's just, they look fucking ridiculous. It's like, uh, and you know, like you know, they want to they want to twerk a little bit, but they can't. They you can't know, do anything. They can't do it like because any fucking dance move is like is too suggestive, basically, for Christianity. So yeah, they got to do stupid shit like the Christian side hug because a hug is too fucking provocative. And the only dance they move you're both have giant muffs. <laughs> what the fuck? You're probably right, bro. <laughs> All right, stop. Open your Bible and listen. Pastor Frank is about to start preaching. The Holy Spirit, grab a hold of me. That doesn't even, that doesn't even rhyme. Stop, grab your Bible and listen. Pastor Frank is about to start preaching. Doesn't rhyme. Well, it's close enough, Paul. I guess. It's close enough. It's a stretch. Yeah. 
Wait. Is this pastor fucking these girls? Because <laughs> the lyrics already kind of sound like that. Yeah, they, they're like all aggrandizing him. Yeah, it's kind of weird that these fucking two teenage girls, like the first, like, well, shouldn't this song be about an ex, I mean, like, it, you know, God, not the fucking pastor, and like, oh, yeah, he's always there for us. It's like, ooh, mm, creepy. Yeah. No thanks. Move those vibes on down the street, thanks. Seek them always and you'll grow at the foot of the cross. I take off my sandals. Give it They're two teenage girls. What do you expect? I expected them to not rap. I mean, I, I expected them teenage... to like to, to not do this and to like sit down and not perform terrible songs that torture me. That's what like, I expected. I, I yeah. see the point. Like I see, I see what you're saying. Like all teenage boys and girls are pretty cringe, but these are going out of their way to be extra loud and visibly cringe. You know. Ugh. These are the girls from The Shining. <laughs> My burdens and the rest again. Don't insult the girls from the shining, please. Curse the enemy, he's doomed. Sending him straight to the emergency room. Godly, crucified so we can be free. He gave us life and we are his strategy. Love him, believe him. You this fucking audience just like sitting there, like, why? Like, I feel like everyone in this audience on some level right now knows they picked the wrong religion. Yeah, I, like, th this definitely caused some people to have some uh, some thoughts about Christianity. Like, question their faith a little bit you know i always believe but uh after seeing that i'm just i'm just not sure anymore <laughs> you know you better pick away the two paths to choose and god don't play if there was a problem yo he'll solve it check out the bible what's the word for boston what check out the bible what happens i think it's uh, like their pastor again is gonna revolve it okay, uh, okay. i don't know where's the pastor then get him out here Let's yeah, I hope Mike he comes skills. out. Jesus Christ, baby. Jesus Christ, baby. We go on. I agree. Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus Harold Christ. Oh, man. Once again, like, if there was a God, he would never allow this to happen. This, this, like, he fucking, I mean, the God that flooded the world and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff, he's not smiting this? Come on. Come on. Dude, I, I wonder, like, these girls have no idea that they're going to hell for this either. There's no way that they're making it past the pearly gates with yeah, this God's much Yeah, God's gonna cringe. take one look at this shit and be like, hmm, yeah, I mean, your hearts were in the right place, but, uh, eh, eh I can't, I can't have that up here. You know, you're, you're going to have to go to hell. Sorry. I'll send you to the nice part of hell. You know? It's not eternal torment. It's just like, you know, it just sucks. <laughs> just like your song. If they hear you out there, I said, Jesus Christ, baby. Now that the church is jumping, the Bible open to... Yeah, the church is not jumping. No. Look at them. <laughs> no. They're not, they're not jumping. They're sitting. They're sitting and now cringing. that the church is sitting, <laughs> like that's it. They're just they're sitting there, like those people. I hear a little bit of a reaction whenever they say Jesus Christ because people feel like they have to. Yeah, but other than that, they're just kind of like this one. The, like because like the original that this is based on is already dodeca cringe. Right, you know what I mean. So it's like. You got one of the cringiest rap songs to ever become popular. Maybe the iconic cringy rap song. Uh, yeah, for and sure. And then this, like to try to like, I don't know, capitalize on its like <laughs> popularity or whatever. Now that the church is bumping, I'm behind the altar and the pastor is humping. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> 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 uh. John, it's something it's straight to the point, to the point, no Satan. What is humble about this? Yeah. What is humble is... about putting on fucking uh, American flag tights and producing this cringe? And you, you didn't even have the good sense to just do one verse and then you know be done with it. This is for like we're only halfway through this fucking shit. <coughs> He's watching us closely. We're no Catholics, but grab your rosary, heathens. You gotta listen close. It's a hot problem. You gotta diagnose. The sound crew on standby, ready. What? 
Wait, anyway, what happened just now? <clears throat> There's Catholics or heathens or something? Or I no? don't know what's going okay. on anymore, <laughs> man. Because he's going to fight me ready. He's coming any second. Repent me as soon and you will go to heaven. We will tell you. So I'm really starting to question this. I'm starting to question this no weed thing. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We decided on CCV. Cover job of our new Christians. So read your Bible discreetly. We're rich in Christ, no need living in Jail. She's off the beat. She's almost out of time. Jesus is a I'm shocked. I'm shocked that she's not good at this. I'm so shocked. So shocked right now. <sighs> All right. That, I, that, that's enough. Yeah, I can't. I can't bear anymore. Um, so here's another Enzo Amore rap. I don't know. There's like gonna be an intro here or something. Oh, world stars. So they might be litigious, so we could probably get away with not having to play much of this. So I put faith in my reply. I said amen among a million things I could have said. A wrestler? He used to be. Yeah, he was once a wrestler, but he got kicked out for drugs and stuff. Oh. And uh, you know, now he's uh, doing this. He's a rapper now. What a shame. Yeah. 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 So now he's God bothering. He's like a, a Christian rapper. The motherfucker die first. But he still says motherfucker though. Rich and angry. Broke and happy. What's worse? Money can't buy me happiness. I hope I die. Angry as fuck. In a furrow with a full purse. When I die, bury me a J. Spirit of ecstasy. Why is this happening, Paul? Why is this happening, bro? Because there Paul. is no God. Thank you. That's true. Okay. Let's get uh, this. This is entering. We're entering the Shapiro zone. Yeah. All right. Look, g give me one second. I'm gonna go fill up my water, and then you can yeah. take a little piss break too, if you want, because we got to be in fucking tip top shape for this shit. I'm gonna go. Fair get enough. You water. go take I'll a break. I'll take I'll... a little fucking uh, get you, get your water. I'll go take my piss, and then yeah, we'll fucking. Yeah, yeah. We'll tackle this shit. <clears throat> this is called uh, "So Lizzo is uh, uh, Lizzo's oppressed, but not a victim." I don't know shit about Lizzo. I know she's like a fat black chick that's like empowered and stuff. That's what I know about Lizzo. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know much else. So like, I don't know if there's other shit I should know about Lizzo or whatever. I'm gonna have to like kind of like play it by ear. I guess what's on my head. Nothing, I guess. Okay. Oh, it's from the glasses. They were... Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Lizzo! Lizzo, 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 Lizzo. I think I actually saw a Lizzo video. I liked it. I liked the video I saw her, uh, her do. I don't really remember the song that much, but it was tolerable, I guess, because I don't remember hating it. Um, but yeah, Ben Shapiro, I don't know. He's got some kind of issue with her. You know, he's got issues with a lot of people, a lot of things. I guess I can relate to that. She could have been a bad bitch. I am working on the thing we talked about after day. I imagine you're going to be too tired to pull off an episode Friday. I'm going to be, I'm, I can do episodes any fucking goddamn time I want. I'm the episode king. She exists, doesn't seem to offend my eyeballs. So that's better than Shapiro. Yeah. Time to get my weed now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys know. Have no fear. Your favorite patron is here. Are you my favorite patron? I guess you are. Yeah, you're the spiff. Yeah. I just took a DNA test. Turns out I'm 100% that B. Okay. Uh, how much to buy a, a wrench? Uh, six six thousand dollars. If you want to buy the wrench, it's six grand. Six grand outright buy the wrench. Yes. It's got to be all in one lump sum too. Well, I guess you can't do that on YouTube. You got to do whatever the max amount is. How many? How much can you? What's the limitation on a super chat? A thousand or something? You got to do. You got to do a six thousand dollars super chats or whatever the fuck. She made that song. What song? I know she's made songs. I know she's a singer. Did you start with this investigator meme shit? Get out of here with that. Shapiro secretly wants to get lost in Lizzo's folds. Dude, we can always pretty much assume that Shapiro wants to fuck anybody he talks shit about. I think that's just like a, a fact of Shapiro. 
Woke agenda. She pushes more than the envelope. She pushes the scale. Fat jokes, folks. We got them. I want to listen to more of that freestyling black lady. Yeah, she's pretty cool. I cannot play a fucking Lizzo song. I know that. I know I can't get away with fucking playing a Lizzo song. I'm smart enough to know that. The other stuff I played, it was border. It was edge case shit. She's promoting obesity. Wow, by just being obese? I don't know. Like, there's fat people in this country, y'all. I don't know what to fucking tell you. Like, just being fat does not promote obesity. Being fat and not feeling terrible about yourself for being fat also does not promote obesity. You know what does promote obesity? Fucking just like making junk food a staple of the American diet. That's what promotes obesity. These people who fucking get on here and act like Lizzo is the issue, she's not. It's the fact, maybe it's the fact that there's fucking junk food, fucking uh, junk fast food uh, anywhere you want to go. You can go get a fast food fucking cheeseburger in a goddamn second. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe half the fucking shit in the store being fucking processed shit that's full of fucking like monosaturated fats and fucking way too much fucking uh, carbs and way too much fucking sodium and like way too much of everything your fucking body's not supposed to have. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Maybe right. like the ready availability right. of a bunch of fucking junk food is, the, is like a bigger issue than some fucking singer somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> uh, white boy cringe. Paul's back. I'm back. So Paul, you're gonna do this shit for a second. I'm gonna go grab me some uh, some toilet time, I guess. Yep. Oh, you guys, this has sapped the the will to live, the will to continue existing from me uh, utterly. This has been um the worst day of my life let's just put it that way this is the worst day of my fucking life thus far i i can't i can't i'm never gonna get that fucking rodney king shit out of my fucking head not rodney king rodney dangerfield <laughs> i'm never gonna get rodney king out of my head either <coughs> i said rodney king because i just wanted to beat him to death to you know help him avoid sullying his name further Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah. I like this profile picture too. It's pretty neat. I think I've got it zoomed in a little bit too. I'm not, yeah. There's the full, full glory. Pretty good. I like it. Did you know that the investigator passed away last night? Huh? The investigator's dead? That's crazy. Listening to the cringe rap made me wish I was Rodney King. Yeah. Yeah. That it was that was particularly bad. It start it started very like not cringy, but then it um it got cr it got real cringe real fast and never never slowed. Christianity is some of the biggest cringe that you can find and mixing that with really bad white girl rap to an already cringy song. Oh man, that was fucking torturous. I know it's not everybody's favorite pieces of content, but I, I, I enjoyed the, uh, the, the horror, you know, stuff. I enjoyed the horror rankings. I like talking about movies and thinking about movies. So that was like a nice little oasis, but the rest of it was, you know, just like maddening news, news that makes you want to go on a fucking rampage. And then uh, cringe, just horrible fucking top shelf cringe. I don't even fucking know, man. What are you to do? What is to be done? Uh, what is to be done? The Video Music Awards, which I'm not sure anybody watches anymore, but are still a thing. Lizzo won an award for video. Can you like check that? Like when you have the resources of Daily Wire, couldn't you just be like, check out, check what the ratings were on that? And then uh, someone does that. 
it's then it not... would seem like he cared though and he's trying uh, to pretend that he doesn't care i don't think anyone even watches that shit anymore to be honest with you I don't know. Do they? I don't. I don't know. Maybe you're right. But <laughs> like, you could check. I don't know. It's got, barely like, even worth knowing it. anything about. But let's uh, let's whine about Lizzo winning an award at it. You know. Yeah, that's the real problem here. For good. I don't know what that means. And apparently, neither did Lizzo. And she gets up and she talks about how victimized everybody is. If you're talking about the new woke coalition inside the Democratic Party. Woke. It's woke. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know if they were trolling, but somebody in the chat said that the Investigamer is dead. Oh, wow, really? Oh, crazy, amazing. Yeah. This is a pretty, pretty good indicator, but here is... Um, here. R.I.P., R.I.P. Here is Lizzo. I don't know... <laughs> What uh, music video for good means. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did nobody tell her that uh, this outfit made her look like an ogre from Lord of the Rings? You know what I mean? <laughs> this looks like the cave troll from Lord of the Rings. You, you cancel, Paul. You can oh. cancel now. Uh, what? I can't make fun of a fat bitch? Yeah. Come on. Canceled. Come on. Canceled. Canceled. This is Boy. Horrible. Where's Boy, her neck? Getting canceled now. What happened painful. to her neck? It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Paul is gone. God it's is gone, doing Paul. a new thing. <laughs> He's doing it. God is doing a new thing. Oh, man. Paul is a person of size. Yeah. He thinks that lets him get away with it. Yeah, I'm fat. I can make fun of another fatty, dude. If I no. think about it, if I put this on, would you guys be like, oh, slay queen? You know what I mean? I no, would. you wouldn't. No, yes, you wouldn't. I would. I would so. I would support this, Paul. I would support you in this outfit. Is she wearing one of those like nose rings that's connected to her ear? Yeah. Oh my god, bro. She she do. Lizzo just doesn't give a fuck, does she? She don't give a fuck, Paul. She gonna smash you. She gonna boil you. She gonna stick you in a stew. Means and that's a f lot. Your vote means everything to me. It means everything to making a change in this country. You got a, hey, Lizzo, you got a big stringy booger hanging. You might want to <laughs> blow your nose. I also, you know, I don't mean to like shit on your picnic or anything and stuff, but like, I'm pretty sure you winning this award doesn't really mean shit for the country. You know what I mean? No, like, it means it a lot. Really, I get, it doesn't. It means a lot to you and the people there, and that's great. Why can't it just stop there? You know, like that's cool, good, good, but like it don't mean nothing to to other people. You know, it Paul's doesn't mean body shamer. Hell yeah, dude. And Paul's on. mad. Paul's mad. I am mad. Paul's mad because this queen can slay in this, and he knows that he would look cringe. In the this same just outfit. goes back to what we but were talking what, about. Paul, it's all about your confidence, Paul. If you fucking came out confidently, strut, you strutted out wearing <laughs> this, it'd be like, you know what, Paul? I respect that. But dude, you, we would but, go know, out of ass, business because half of our audience would die of cringe if I came walking out of this. They'd die laughing. Paul, they would support you. No, they wouldn't. They would support you. They tell no, you. No, they would not. They would love you in this. They, they would really love wouldn't. you in this. This should be your style, Paul. I'm pretty sure. So remember when you're voting for your favorite artist, vote to change some of these laws that are. What? Oh, okay. I mean, I guess that's fine. I don't know. Oppressing us. <laughs> <sighs> All right. The Ben Shapiro take. Go. It's hard to think of a less oppressed figure than uh, than Lizzo. That's yeah, but that's not that's not the point. She's not talking about herself there. She's like supposed to be like representing a bunch of other people. <laughs> that's like the point. Just like when you fucking bitch about like Jews being oppressed and shit, which you do yeah. every time someone criticizes Israel. You're not talking just about yourself. You're talking about like the people, the group, the ethnic group you hail from. Right? Right. Okay. I cool. Yes. Yeah. Particularly. I'm not sure exactly. See, this is the, the, to me, this just goes back to what we were talking about on the grease trap. You know, the whole like how I'm just done with both sides. Yeah, like the, the woke versus the anti-woke shit. This is yeah. why. So uh, for those of you who aren't in, on the in, which I guess uh, even, yeah, I guess all our patrons see the grease trap nowadays, except for the people who are still on that $5 tier, which you guys should probably just upgrade. Yeah. Because uh, it's like $2 for everything. Uh, from there but uh you know we been paul on, on the last grease trap we just talked about on monday the pretty much the whole thing was devoted to 
just how like sick we are of this argument between the woke and the anti woke. Yeah. And how it's just like, oh my God, shut the fuck up. Both you guys, shut up. It's I'm so just, just taking over everything. And the entire argument is just so like played out, done. The side, everyone knows what side they're on at this point. No one's convinced. Every, the lines have been drawn. You have your fucking, you know, 10% of the population that's like, and your 10% of the population is like, yeah. And then the 80% of the population is like, please stop. Can we just stop? Can we shut up? Can we shut the fuck up, please? Don't care. Just don't care. TJ is woke. See, that's what I'm talking about. If you get to the point where you're so dumb that you think I'm woke, you got problems. Because I ain't fucking woke. <laughs> By no one's goddamn... St- if, you f- if your ass is so fucking far gone that my ass is woke to you, you're lost. You're fucking lost. Because, yeah, okay, on a couple issues, I'm woke. There's also a shit ton of issues where I'm not woke. Because you know why? You know who I am? I'm a person that fucking actually thinks about shit. And sometimes I might come to the wrong conclusion... Sometimes my opinion might be fucking crazy. Sometimes my opinion might be fucking mainstream. Sometimes it might be fucking so goddamn fringe you can't even believe that it fucking came out of my mouth. But you know what? I'm always just telling you what the fuck I think, okay? That's what I'm doing. So I'm not woke and I'm not anti-woke and I'm none of those fucking things. I'm none of these goddamn stupid shit you're trying to label me. I'm just fucking TJ. Paul's just Paul. Can't you just be you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like enough of this bullshit. Stop. Stop this tribal shit. Stop fucking, you got to agree with this person because they're on your team bullshit. Or you got to oppose this person because they're not. Although you should just oppose Ben Shapiro reflexively because he's pretty fucking stupid. But that's because of him. That's not necessarily because of his tribe. That's not his fault. Wearing their... Oh, wait, I said tribe in reference to Ben Shapiro. Ooh. That might, that canc- might be a problem. Canceled. Ooh. Particularly, I'm... I'm always puzzled by the generalized trend, not unique to Lizzo, of wearing an earring that goes to your nose. I just don't understand. See, you and you and Paul. You and Paul, Ben. Ben, you and me both, man. I don't know what don't the get fuck it. that's about. I don't get it. They just don't get it, guys. See, I would never wear that because I'd be afraid someone would grab it and yank it. I'd just Seems be afraid too- I got it. I'd get, get it caught on something and it would accidentally yank out, you know? Yeah. Plus, I got this beard. You know, that could be an issue. It could, mm. it could be a big issue. And why that's in any way supposed to be an attractive. It's hard to think of a less oppressed human being than that. human. But again, she is oppressed. Right? The idea from the Democratic coalition, both culturally and politically, is that we are the coalition of the oppressed and the coalition of the oppressed. No one, no one is going out there making the argument that fucking like rich, famous ass Lizzo is oppressed. OK, like literally yeah. no one on Earth is saying that, bro. <laughs> that's I think it's I think said. it's. I think it's I think funny that saying, I think what she's saying is like that dude that we saw trying to like water someone else's yard earlier who was gotten getting gaffled up by the police just because there's fucking black skin. I think it's more like that dude who might have a little, little bit of oppression going on. Okay. Possibly. Like that's what I think is being referenced here. I don't think she's like talking about like her personal fucking oppression that she directly suffers as a fucking rich fucking millionaire celebrity. Okay. And if she is, then she's delusional. But that's not what I heard, so not sure what the fuck you're talking about, bro. TJ is semi-conscious. Yeah. I'm half woke. I'm the daywalker or whatever the fuck. This is going to rise up, and this coalition is going to take back the heart of American po- And this is a danger to the Democrats. The more they preach that, the more they lose. You may have noticed that the people who are in charge of the... What the fuck is this? Some yeah, what's happening? Ad. I think we're, like, stuck in an ad now. Is, is it over? Global instability or the falling dollar or K or IRA that's underperforming. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nine, eight today. Get, yeah. Nine, okay. Ten. Emerging yeah. Democratic majority theory still has not died in Democratic circles, which is why everybody has to remain a victim. In fact, that hierarchy of victimhood inside. Okay. That's both both sides of the vic- this victim narrative now. Like we're basically, uh, yeah. our entire culture seems to now be based on like who can make the most compelling victim narrative. And then they're the winner. Yeah. And, and like, as, I'm, as I'm I hear. As I hear both sides of it, the victim narratives become less compelling on both sides as well. So, yeah, like enough guys. I'm over. On. I'm ready to victimize everybody over it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the Democratic Party is a competitive thing. The more victimized you are, the higher you rank in Democratic politics. Dude, that's your side, too. I'm sorry. That's like everywhere on the right. Like they have an entire f- go check out the subreddit uh, persecution fetish. It's just full of fucking a bunch of right wingers bitching about like how oppressed they are. I mean, just go look at like Jordan Peterson's channel 
You know what I mean? Which it's we might. Th- <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. But we it's got it. We got that's that's possible. We got to get fucking more. If we get more, if we get enough uh, patron signups during the course of the show, that will happen. Let me see what we're, what we're doing on that front real quick. We're basically we're in the same place. We've not really got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Nobody's nobody's biting. Nobody's biting that one. Nobody's we like, still need yeah. eight more. So we're not even close on that. So don't even worry about that shit. That's not even a fucking issue for us. But this shit is because this has all been funded. Everything of everything else has been funded. So. While we're on the subject of Lizzo, by the way, I noticed that there is a comedian named Ari Spears who is now in all sorts of trouble for, quote unquote, victimizing Lizzo, who, again, is a very not oppressed human being. Lizzo is extraordinarily rich. She is wearing probably a $10,000 dress holding an actual metal idol while being cheered by throngs. But apparently she's oppressed because somebody told a joke about the fact that she is she's fat. And I mean, yeah, and you know, who is hate- com- you know, who's compounding that shit here today. Paul's ego. Uh-huh. Paul's yep. fucking ego in here right now. Paul. Problematic Paul in here, trash talking the body of Lizzo. Paul with his colonizer mentality and his fat shaming and body shaming and slut shaming and nose ring shaming and every other kind mm-hmm. of shame. Mm-hmm. Shame, shame, shame. You know what the funny thing is? Is this like whole like oh, you know, victim, you're to a uh, victim narrative. It would switch, you know, gears if we were talking about Israel Palestine right now with uh, with old Ben. Well, that's the thing that just drives me crazy. Is like he he's like the worst about literally fucking saying one thing, and then the the narrative totally changes. Like the next fucking set, I let him like literally watched a video of him where he just did that over and over again. Like he was like. He basically said, like, the right needs to be more cutthroat because the left is. So it's like, you're basically just saying, like, so the solution to them being this way is for us to also be this way. It's like, okay. And then it's just like a bunch of shit where it's like, he's he's always willing to fucking change the tactic when it's his side. And that's pretty much a, rep- I mean, I don't know. He kind of reminds me of um, uh, Mitch McConnell in that way. Another tip, Ben is the weaseliest man, man led ever, to ever exist. Thanks to Dave Rubin. Thanks for your content. Yeah. I mean, he's always, this guy's always fucking, I mean, it, the second the fucking, the new, the other, ta- the, the other tactic works, he's doing it. So it's hard to take anything very seriously. That's cause... why, that's why I can't stand this argument anymore because it's just, like you said, it's like, like wanting, trying to one up each other. Who's, who's the bigger victim of society's uh, scorn, you know, as right. conservatives who, who, you know, just get called racist for liking Donald Trump or is it Lizzo, you know, for getting called fat and stupid. I mean, who knows? To the world, but Lizzo is overweight. I know this is groundbreaking. I am, uh, dude, I he am Ben Shapiro. Look at this, dude. This is why I hate him so much because he's like the dark Jewish twink version of me. You know what I mean? <laughs> the dark Jewish twink, Paul. Dun, yep. dun, 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 dun. She is a she's an overweight person. the The funniest thing about our culture, by the way, is that if Lizzo says, "I am fat and I am sex positive." I'm a fat, sex-positive female. Everybody's like, yeah. And if I say she is a... Everybody's not like, yeah. There's plenty of people who are not like, yeah. <laughs> and there's no law that mandates you be like, yeah. Nope. Nothing fucking is. There's nothing preventing you from being like, nah. Nah, I don't like it. There's literally nothing stopping you. You're doing it right now. Paul was doing it a minute ago. It can be done. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with nothing, it. Nothing stops it. You can fucking do it. I don't know what this, this this is. This is your victim mentality. No one's allowed to criticize. Yes, they are. You're doing it right now. You're doing it. Paul did it. (laughs) Other people have done it. You're not like, it's not like Lizzo has never been called fat by anyone because if one, even one person did it or said it, they would be just excoriated, destroyed. A fat, sex-positive female. I was like, no, <laughs> you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to repeat the thing she just said. Anyway, Aries Spears is a comedian. He told jokes about her. You're not allowed to tell jokes about the fact that Lizzo is overweight. So here is Aries Spears again, apparently a, a man of color who is oppressing a woman of color because again, it's just a competition of oppressiveness here in the United States. Here is a uh, here is Aries well, Spears. No one. I mean, her her getting insulted by this guy is not oppression. Show me the person who said it's oppression. Did she say she was oppressed? Oh, there's like there's definitely some like rad. I mean, yeah, I mean, film, I mean there's, there's blue bound to be somebody whatever. somewhere, but like who specifically is saying that it's oppression for her to get insulted or to have jokes made at her expense? Nobody. Because if that's uh, oppression, then I'm, oppre- I'm oppressed. I'm oppressed all the fucking time. 
motherfuckers come on to your, I, I fucking say I shit my pants all the damn time, which I did not fucking do. Yeah, you did. For the record. Yeah, See? you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not oppressed by that. You know what? Actually, fuck that. I, I am oppressed. I think you you're more oppressed some, you me by some the, reparations, Paul. I think you're more oppressed by the spurious ac accusation of pants shitting than Lizzo is with the observation that she's big and fat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Saying the unsayable. Because, like, I say what I want about the yes. shit. I did not observe the shit, but I can observe Lizzo's roles. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> one of yeah. those things is not like the other. I demand reparations for your fucking <laughs> shit talk. Literal shit talk. Man, can we ship this guy back to, like, one mad TV sketch every, <laughs> like, fucking ten shows or whatever where he belongs? Lizzo? Yeah, bro. Have you heard her? Yeah. Like, as a songwriter, yo. I, I can't get past the fact that she looks like the shit emoji. <laughs> she looks like the shit emoji. <laughs> very beautiful girl. She's got a very pretty face. But she keeps showing her body off. Like, come on, man. I'm sorry. Listen, I ain't the most in shape in the world. See, you fat guys think you could just criticize Lizzo because you're fat, too. Don't you? Uh, yeah. That, is that what's going on here? It's the you fat think you think just because you got you could play the fat card, you'd be like, listen, as a fat piece of shit myself, I personally think that bitch fat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, all right. I got it you. Works. I get it. But I still, you know, when you funny and you got swagger and confidence and, and you decent looking, I think I'm at least handsome, you get eh. mm, not really. You're kind of goofy looking, bro. Yeah. And also like isn't she making the same argument you just laid out? Like, she just kind of, like, does it, con con strides with confidence and shit, and that's why it's supposed to work for her, but you're doing, then you're saying, nah, she's ugly. But when but I do me, it my though, way, with I, when I project confidence, it erases the fact that I'm fat. It's like, oh. No, I don't think so, bro. I don't think that's how it works. Either, either, that's gonna, either that works for you, that doesn't. You don't get it for you, but, like, nah, not for her, though. For me. For me, it's my confidence and swagger. That gives it to me. But for her, nah. She ain't got no swagger. Yep. But a woman that's built like a plate of mashed potatoes is in trouble. Musically, yo. She go hard, man. She a good songwriter, though. Oh, yo, she's, yeah, she's dope. Her music hard. Her body ain't. <laughs> okay, look, at him, look at him, like, pretending amusement. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> I think like he's holding back a laugh here. Mm, oh, oh, yes, quite rich. The comedy stylings of Aries Spears, everybody. Ban TJ, I agree. Ban me. Ban me so I don't have to watch this. So he got ripped up and down. How did people were so mad at how 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 dare he know? I mean, like, what were they? I didn't see it. I didn't see a word about it. Like, was it? I mean, maybe it was maybe somewhere it was a like, big thing. One, I did never enter my world. Okay. Yeah, there it was wasn't even part of my of life. Comments or something underneath the video or whatever. And, okay. you know. Sure what? I mean, okay, so you got a lot of people didn't like what he said. So fucking big deal. Who cares? Who gives a shit? Like Lizzo's dress, this is this is a pretty big stretch, Ben. Yep. It's a pretty big stretch. How dare he notice? People are tweeting out, Ari Spears, a fat black man out of breath while sitting and talking, discussing diabetes and being fat, aimed at Lizzo, who performs and sings while being fat, is insane. But yeah, he actually that was said, right. Um, that's there actually was... a pretty good point. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, well, it's you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, he's just sitting there. Like, she actually is, like, out there fucking, like, on a stage it's like you know moving around a stage and actually like doing some shit with her body she didn't like just sit there and sing so i don't know <laughs> the rest of the clip I, never, is I don't know what her what her stage hustle is like though maybe if i saw her on the stage i'd be like oh never mind so yeah, i, I, I could know. be wrong I'm about that but like if she's got good stage energy if she's like like meatloaf where she's moving around that stage like crazy then i don't know because that was a fat motherfucker and he moved around the stage pretty well at least in his younger days Maybe she's got that Ursula swagger. You know what I mean? You don't. You yeah. never know. I mean, I've seen a couple of her music videos. She's good. She's pretty good. As he talks about, why is it Not that everybody kind of music, is is praising her for being large when, in fact, one of the biggest problems in the United States? I don't think he, no. That really wasn't his commentary. His commentary was just like, "She a fat, ugly bitch." Unlike me, I mean, I'm fat too, but like, you know, it's cool because I'm confident. That was what he said. That <laughs> was he. He wasn't like. You know, I think that this uh, is a problematic opinion because it facilitates the idea. It normalizes an overweight body. Like, he didn't say none of that shit. No. So, really like, didn't. I don't know. You fucking putting, like, 
words in his mouth that are like a little bit more intelligent than his actual words there. He's probably more active than Manson. Yeah, I mean, like his ass, half the fucking time you watch him on stage, he's just like, like leaning down and shit. I'm singing down here because I'm too drunk to stand. <laughs> it's is is the problems with obesity. He said F diabetes, F heart problems, F heart disease, F cholesterol. Y'all claim womanhood and about sisterhood and support for your sister, you know, when it comes to that ridiculous bleep. But if you really gave a bleep, why wouldn't you go black girl? We love your confidence. You know what I hate about being fat as opposed to other shit is like it kind of touches on something Paul said earlier. Like you, you couldn't see my shit. But you can see how a person's fat, right? Oh, yeah. So it's like all these people who have problems just as bad as being fat. <laughs> fucking like, well, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat. It's just more obvious than your problem, motherfucker. Yeah, if that's I could always fucking, been. If the... I could look into your fucking, if I could put your ass under a fine tooth, come on, I guarantee I could find some shit. That's real fucking, oh, look at your character flaws. Fucking, because, but if you're fat, it's like literally people feel like it's their right to like push it in your face all the fucking time that you're fat. Yep. Because because they can see it. And it's because it's fucking visible. It's because it's super fucking visible. But who knows? If you fucking, maybe you fucking pick your nose and eat your boogers in private. I don't fucking know. You might have some disgusting goddamn habits. Guaranteed. So fucking whatever, you know, like, you know, just the fat person just gets more fucking shit. They're more than their fair ration of shit because our shit's more obvious. But I fucking guarantee all these fucking anti-fat motherfuckers. They got their own goddamn problems. Just because you ain't fat doesn't mean you fucking better than a fat person. You fucking stupid bitch. Yeah, no way. But anyway, um, yeah, I get it, though. Fat people are fun to make fun of. It's true, especially if you hate the person. If there's a person that you really fucking don't like and they happen to be fat, you're probably going to fucking insult. You're, you're probably going to rag on them for the fat. Even if you're fucking, even if you have my mentality of like, you know, should all just accept that and all that shit, you know, but you're probably going to fucking go on that. It's just like, you know, it's hard not to fucking zero in on the fucking character flaw of a person if you really fucking hate that person, right? Even if it's not necessarily what you're mad at, you know, it's like the easiest avenue of attack. Like you're a fucking fat fuck. Boom. Yep. Icebreaker. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, we got one more uh, Bench Pro video in this part of the section. This is Bench Pro explaining why he did not support Trump in 2016. Oh, boy. Yeah. Topic Donald J. Trump. Donald J. Trump. Um, <coughs> woo! In 2016, you were almost a non Trump or a never Trump, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't vote for Donald J. Trump. Right. You didn't vote to Hillary for. Hillary Clinton. No. Who's no? Um, <laughs> to this to this lady from the Green Movement, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, in 2020, you voted for Trump. Why didn't you vote for him in the first place, and what changed your mind? Okay, so I, I gave several reasons for not voting for Trump in 2016. One was Donald Trump's. Well, you see, I'm part of the Republican establishment, and uh, they were against Trump because he was a little bit too. They thought he was a little bit too uh, corrosive and. Uh, you know, uh, just flapping off at the gums and stuff. So I, I did as my masters bit me, and I opposed him. But then it became inevitable that he was the standard bearer of the party. And so at that point, I had no choice but to support him. And uh, now that he's gone, you'll probably hear me uh, shitting on him again if he tries to get back in there. But it kind of just depends on where the electorate is at, because I'm just a pandering piece of shit. No, he's already, uh, like, you. he was on fucking uh, Bill Maher not that fucking long ago shitting on Trump again, so. Right, so it's like, you know, that's that's the real answer, just before he gets his, his bullshit one. Yeah. So Once you have that. Deep and abiding character flaws, uh, which have not been alleviated at all. Uh, the The second is that Donald Trump was extraordinarily unclear about what he actually was going to do politically. So he was on all sides of every issue with equal passion. Right, so, so he would say on the one hand that, you know, I think that we should be definitely depending on our friends in Israel. And then he'd be like, America should never spend money on foreign, so they, they, with the exact same amount of passion, right? Yeah, this was his shtick. And so my math. Who's was, out there fucking who the dying? Fuck, yeah. Who's applauding this? Who's laughing at this? Like, it's funny. Like, who the fuck are these people? I hear a couple people out there acting like they're at the fucking inaugural uh, performance of Eddie Murphy Raw or some shit. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Like, who the fuck? Is it, like, plants? All right, your it's job is to go out there and pretend that Ben Shapiro's fucking hilarious? What? What do you want? Come on. I object to everything that is happening in 2016. That was my math. My math was, and I didn't live in a swing state to be granted. You know, I was living in California, so my vote really didn't matter anyway. But with that said, the, the 
you know, basic calculus was that if I didn't vote in that election, then as a public figure, I had made clear my disdain for all available candidates. Trump came in and he governed way more effectively and way more conservatively than I thought he was going to. And but just a second, let's stop before 2020. Sure. How was it? You have you have an empire. You have built an, an amazing empire. Dun 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 dun. Oh my dun, God! Dun, could this could this Russian guy slob any that knob any <laughs> harder, man? Listen, you built ben. an amazing empire. Like he didn't build it. The fucking Koch brothers. I went to suck your fucking dick, Ben Spiro. I suck your fucking dick. <laughs> Good for you, man. By not supporting Trump, you lose your audience and revenue. You know, it is so Maybe. brave of you to not support the Trump. You know, you lose audience, you lose revenues, but you stand for principle. I, I respect you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wrong. You're looking at this all wrong, Russian sycophant guy. Yeah. But that's why the, the, the kind of silly notion that that people were taking a position not to vote that that was done done for the money absolutely untrue i mean i took the position in 2016 because i fundamentally objected to the candidates that had been presented to the american public in 2016. and you paid a price for that 100 percent. yeah i mean i lost a job for that in 2016 with breitbart um but the <laughs> but the um that, that math changed. I mean, when the evidence changes, if you don't change your mind, then you're not doing your job. And the evidence changed with regard to President Trump. President. Yeah, the evidence started to say that uh, if you know if we want to stay politically viable, we better support this guy. And then we did it. That's it. Like this is the real answer. Yeah. So, he, he wants to act like it was some super principled political decision or whatever for him to flip flop. It's like yeah. no, that's you just understood like exactly where the bread was going to be buttered for the next four years, and you flipped your flop, dude. Yeah, same thing fucking ben, Glenn Beck did. He was super anti-Trump, too. Trump sucks. Boo Trump. And then, you know, when he realized, like, I can't really be anti-Trump in the Republican Party right now. He started being like, Trump's actually, man, he's doing a good job. Surprisingly good. Wow. Holy shit. He's convincing me with his uh, prowess. Wow. No. No, 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 no. So, Paul, are you aware of what they are up to right now? Um, not entirely, but I did hear that they are trying to destroy motherhood. Through yeah, the they want to take it away. They're trying yeah. to take motherhood just away from you, Paul. Yep. Goodbye, motherhood. No more. The end. That's it. Fuck motherhood. It's gone. Gone. That's enough. Get out of here. Fucking. Who is this nerd? This is Matt, Matt Walsh. Walsh. Okay. He is also on the Daily Wire. He is, oh. um, so... You ever like uh, wake up in the morning, you got those like eye boogers and shit, and you like find one in the corner of your fucking eye that's like real nasty and shit, and you're just like, ugh, gross, and you have to like dig it out. Oh, yeah. Um, this is uh, basically one morning, Ben Shapiro found one of those, and he flicked it off his body, and he noticed that it was, uh, it was a conservative host called Matt Walsh. And that's oh, okay. basically what we got here. He basically, this is a, he's basically a crusty eye booger from the eye of uh, Ben Shapiro. Good to know. Good to and, know. Uh, you know he likes like, it. So basically, we got a big old block of Shapiro kind of shit down here because he's also a Daily Wire guy, and uh, you know he's here to he's here to suck dick and not in a good way. Journalism today consists of taking some obvious feature of physical reality and declaring that it's a myth. Uh, this claim is then supported with a series of assertions, along with frantic assurances that there's at least one study out there somewhere that supports whatever they're asserting. We discussed an egregious example of this last week with the Scientific American's documentary series seeking to debunk the concept of the sex binary. And this week, the New York Times has got... So you can get your science from conservative commentator or scientific American. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to go, go with the conservative commentator. Yeah, me too. I think that sounds more... I mean, because like, they're the ones who are telling the truth. Well, they're, they're, the they're closer to my they, they closer to my bias too. So, oh course. right, yeah. Well, you can't yeah. you can't get out of your little bias zone. So, I mean, no, be, no. I mean, like this op-ed titled "Maternal Instinct Is a Myth That Men Created." Okay. Now, once again, you see, um, the the thing that you always thought existed, you've always known existed, and you've witnessed yourself, and maybe experienced yourself, and which all of human society <laughs> has believed in and professed and bore witness to, is a myth. 
Not only that, but yeah, it's a myth. this idea hey, of it as a monolith is a myth because uh, as much as I've witnessed, like you know, mothers that are protective. What and, about the maternal supporting... instinct of that woman who uh, whose children burned alive in their trailer because right. she wasn't there to watch? Them. I mean, how how many women do you see running around with kids that are screaming and acting up, and they're just barely even registering it because they've learned to ignore their children? You know what I mean? And then what 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 are you accusing? Like there there are dads that are that way that are just like almost pathologically involved in their children's lives, taking them to every goddamn thing under the sun, supporting them as best as they can, loving them. Like, is that a, is that a man with maternal instinct or are there different levels of parental instinct inherent in parents? You know, choose one. Hmm. Choose your destiny. Recently invented by patriarchal men sometime around the dawn of the industrial revolution. This is the claim that the writer, Whoa. Chelsea Conaboy, a journalist specializing in health, it says in her bio. Oh, shit. I thought that was you believe. changing things up. The article itself is lengthy and uh, takes uh, many irrelevant detours into... Okay. Yeah, I, was trying to, I was trying to look at the article. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it popped up on a different window, so okay. That's fine. Anecdotes about women who suffer from postpartum depression. Uh, she talks about a commercial that she saw once. At one point, she cites a stand-up special by a comedian named Ali Wong. Like, this is all evidence that she uh, marshals to prove her point. There's a lot of fat. I feel like the comedian's quote was probably pulled to be illustrative of the point, not to prove the point, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm, let's see, how long is this article? Because I'm willing to bet that if I actually read this article, it would probably not say how, what he's representing it as, but I could be wrong. I mean, it's very long, so I don't think I have time to read it here and fact check. I but mean, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not super familiar with Matt Walsh, but I think that this is like I think both Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro are far more interesting figures than this guy. This guy just is like, yeah, he's kind of the you're the afterbirth, Matt Walsh. He's a slice of uh, whole wheat toast with no butter and a glass of lukewarm tap water. That's this guy. Mm -hmm. Trim from the bone, but um. I think this portion here, which I'll read to you, captures the essence of her argument. Okay. So this is what she writes. The notion that the selflessness and tenderness babies require is uniquely ingrained in the biology of women, ready to go at the flip of a switch, is a relatively modern and pernicious one. It was constructed over decades by men selling an image of what a mother should be, diverting our attention from what she actually is and calling it science. It keeps us from talking about what it really means to become a parent, and it has emboldened policymakers in the United States generation after generation to refuse new parents and especially mothers the support they need. Today, many proclaim that motherhood is neither duty nor destiny, that a woman is not left unfulfilled or incomplete without children. But even as I write these words, I doubt them. Do we collectively believe that? Maternal instinct is still frequently invoked in science writing, parenting advice, and common conversation. And whether we call maternal instinct by its name or not, its influence is everywhere. Belief in maternal instinct and the deterministic value of mother love has fueled pro-family conservative politicians for decades. Oh, God forbid. The yeah, I mean, I don't know. Because when I, when, I when I hear those sentences, to me, it kind of sounds like the idea that you have a kid and, like, this, like, magical instinct takes over and you're just like, wow, I just understand everything there is to know about, like, being a mom and I just have this, like, Overrid overriding drive to protect my kids and stuff like a lot of women actually have postpartum depression where they literally feel like they literally look at their kids and like i have no fucking emotional connection to this thing whatsoever this is weird in fact like i'm depressed that i'm not getting that surge of emotions and stuff uh and then of course there's like tons of parents out there that neglect their kids there's tons of parents out there that abuse their kids and even when you have parents who do love their kids, like it's not always going to manifest in the same way or to the same extent with every mother or every father for that matter. So I think that make, maybe it's like the ubiquity of this notion that like you're instantly going to have that, or that's like some immutable property of like female biology is probably the issue here. But without reading the article, it's kind of hard to know. Uh, cause I only have your word, but from the excerpts you read, that kind of sounds like what's being said. Yep. Those pro family politicians, you know, a, uh, a sinister bunch bunch. And we get to the substance of the argument there, such as it is, 
um, which I think can be handled pretty quickly. Okay, do it. Lay First of me. all, whether maternal instinct exists or not, and it does, we'll get to that in a second, um, the idea certainly is not modern. You can read ancient writings from across the world, including the Bible and texts even older than that, and find beautiful homages written to, to, uh, to the special bond between a mother and a child. Like every... Yeah, but like loving your kid and there being a maternal instinct are not necessarily the same thing. No. Like having a fuck... Ha- like, okay, if you just want to say like the maternal instinct in a way is just like, this came from me and therefore I love it, then I guess there's like, you, you have like, there's like endorphin rushes and shit. Like you, you have a, what is it? What's the fucking um, um, thing? It's like released when mothers are breastfeeding and shit like that. And I think you get like a, a little burst of it when you see serotonin. your kid for the first. Ser- it's, no, it's a, uh, it's not serotonin. I mean, that might be part of it, but it's like the, it's like a bonding agent. It's supposed to like not just give you like a pleasure surge, but also like a bonding um, surge. I can't remember the name of the chemical, but that exists. You can't really deny that. But does does that sort of like I have an affinity for this thing and want to protect it? Does that amount to an instinct? Like, I guess there's an instinct to breastfeed, but like, that's literally physically happening. Like, oh shit, this, I, I gave birth to this thing and now there's milk coming out of my tits. You know, maybe this thing is supposed to drink that. I don't, I don't know. Um, but like, if you're talking about just like maternal protectiveness, like, I don't know. I mean, that seems like it's pretty widely variable all the way up to the point of like women drowning their kids, women neglecting their kids, women caring more about, you know, whatever their own uh, pursuits are than their kids. Uh, or, you know, to, and then to the kids' moms who do love their kids, it's like there's very different approaches to that shit. Like some are like, okay, I'm going to um, I'm gonna be a helicopter parent and dote over everything my kid does. And other people are like, you know, I'm going to kind of let my kid discover shit on their own. But, you know, if they get, into, you know, in too deep trouble, I'll help them out, whatever. I'm going to teach them self. Like there's not really like a uniform approach to this shit or like some series of like overriding directives guiding people's behavior. It's very much like a personal style kind of thing, right? Yeah. So I don't I know mean, if I don't, but I mean, I don't really know if that's what's being addressed here. It's kind of like once again hard to like Well, that's because an article so, I can't I haven't read, so It's so draped in hyperbole. I mean, look at the name of this video. This is why I hate this fucking goddamn part of the culture war, this woke anti-woke thing because he's talking about an article in the New York Times which seems pretty open to the fact that maternal instinct might exist, but is questioning the monolithic kind of position that we give it and saying that that might be, you know, more mythology than truth. And it's it, the name of this video is they want to take motherhood away. Like, what? right. Which is yeah, what I'm like, this is a, like a, not a, even remotely the same contention. I, uh, yeah. A so that's, ginormous that's overreaction to a non problem, you know, we're pushing six hours. I know it's going, it's getting crazy in here, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's really not much, I mean, like not reading the article. I, I don't, I don't know. It's kind of hard to defend it. So let's move on to our final thing here. Unless you guys uh, do join, so unless a bunch of people just suddenly rush to join our Patreon, in which case we will do the series of, uh, Jordan Peterson, the mini uh, gauntlet, mini gauntlet of fucking Peterson shorts. Otherwise, we'll keep that in our back pocket for a future perk, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but we got some more Ben Ship here. This is Zone Beta here. So this is a uh, diversity, equality, equity, and inclusion. Really means shut up, <laughs> shut up. Based. <laughs> Dynamics. That means there can't be any arguments. Arguments are useless. More than that, if my arguments make you feel uncomfortable, that's me using my my power against you. That's me hurting you. That's me microaggressing you. And so you have to shut up. An argument is not a microaggression. That doesn't make any sense. That's like, you don't even, like, if you're going to use terms, like, at least get familiar with what they mean. Microaggression is like when you say something that has, like, an unpleasant implication about someone's race or gender or something like that. Like, it's not you out coming out right and saying the thing, but it's like you said something that's, like, kind of implies another thing. Yeah. And like, sometimes uh, that's, like, whatever. You just, like, clumsy language. And other times maybe there is some kind of underlying shit. But, like, you making an argument against somebody is not a microaggression by anyone's standard. Right. This is the, well, this is just part of the victim mentality. Look how they victimized us. They've turned even an opposing opinion into an aggressive act. 
Yeah. Like, you know, that just happens in your head. It's like more victim bullshit. Where are the victims? 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 Okay. Okay. Maybe there's a victim somewhere. I think the victim is the dude that gets fucking uh, harassed by the cops because he's black. That's what I think is the victim. I think if you, you know, like, I think the victims, I think the real victims in society are usually pretty clear cut. I was murdered because I was uh, fucking trans. I was uh, harassed by the police because I'm black. I was shot in my bed because I was black and there was a vape next to me. Like, that's a fucking victim. You know, yep. there's someone somewhere disagrees with me. That's not a victim. You're not a fucking victim. Sorry. You and don't get somebody, to play that card. And somebody pushing back or being dismissive of an argument you make is not victimizing you either. Nobody, yeah. like, there's no impetus on anybody to take you seriously, Ben. Sorry. Maybe they're, you see, that's the thing. There used to be. There used to be an impetus for a powerful, rich, white male to be given deference over everybody else. And you see that sort of slipping away. And that's what you're afraid of. If, if you say something to me that hurts me, you need to shut <laughs> up because you're not making an argument. Arguments are just power. So if you say something that offends me, that's you using your power against me in the same way as if you had hit me. And so you need to be quiet. That's so that the powerless can reassert themselves. It's time to shut up and do the work. They have to do the work. And the work you know, is inevitably I gets. don't agree with his analysis of this, but I do agree he needs to shut the fuck up. Does that make me woke? Yeah. Woke Paul. Yeah. If in, in my opinion, like, look, hey, I'm just making an argument here, Ben. But my argument is I would really love for you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. It is work. You have to sit there and listen to a bunch of nonsense from people who don't make arguments, but talk inherently about how suffering they are and how difficult their lives are. And if you have Isn't that what you're doing? Oh, look, yeah, we can't even make an argument. Here. We can't even make an argument anymore without it being a microaggression. And all these people on the other side want to do is whine about how they can't do anything anymore. It's like, get the fuck out, man. <laughs> and then you have not done the work. I mean, at least they're being honest a bit that it's work. I mean, it certainly is not play. I'm not sure how else you would categorize it. Is that supposed to get a laugh? Uh, yeah. Uh, you do the work. This means you're supposed to just shut up and listen. And by shutting up and listen, we mean never having. Paul, you've, been, you've just been defeated. You're gone. You're wow. fucking dead, Paul. Paul is wrong. Pwned. Paul is wrong. A discussion. Of destroyed. course, you should listen to the other person's perspective. De and then you fucking should offer your destroyed, own. It's Paul. Conversation. And grown up adults do it all the time. But according to the left, you're not supposed to do this sort of stuff. If you speak up, you may have committed one of those horrible, Brutal microaggressions. Aggressions that are so small you can't even see them. Okay, that's not, like, once again, not how that term is used, so. I mean, you can't see the idea of aggression in the first place. Yeah, it's not a, <laughs> that's true, usually, yeah. You can see the, uh, the outcome of aggression, but aggression itself has no tangible form. Cool to see you react to short films and documentaries. Yeah, you can send those to uh, my my Twitter, my new Twitter, TJ Does Health or whatever. It's not my new Twitter, but it's the Twitter I had that I was using for something else, and now it's my main Twitter, I guess, because you uh, Twitter doesn't like my use of the word uh, gringo. So that's really stupid because I'm Whoa, white. Whoa, that's a microaggression, TJ. I know. Sorry. Oh, small. They're not just big aggressions or medium-sized aggressions, they're microaggressions. The most insidious kinds of aggressions, like dust that gets under your fingernails in terms of aggression. What? Yeah. I don't know. I trying to hear Hitler making this speech, like, so this is, you're not even allowed to criticize the Jews anymore, you know? It's because they accuse you of microaggression. You know, it's like, <laughs> like give me a break. Anybody can fucking say this. Like, you're not allowed to criticize. You're not allowed. You're not allowed. You conservatives are always talking about what you're not allowed to do yeah. as you fucking do it. As they do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just so sick of this. And there's, like, millions of you. And there's millions of fucking people who agree with you. And it's like you still want to act like you're just like, you can't say anything. I'm just trying to say one thing. Yeah. I guess we uh, there's uh, just nothing we can do but sit down and shut up. Anyway, up next is Jordan Peterson. He's going to bloviate for four and a half hours. Um, you know what I mean? Like, you're at a conference, for fuck's sake. Yeah, you're standing on a fucking stage. You're a multimillionaire. A yeah, you make millions of dollars. And, like, just talking. So, like, what, or what, what fucking, like, what is the basis of the claim that everyone fucking is trying to make you shut up? 
Yeah, I mean, I'd like it if you shut up, but like, I'm not actively engaged in anything that's gonna shut you up. So, like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, because there's a couple of fucking uh, SJWs out there who are actually maybe making a similar argument to the one he's portraying here, and so that. But isn't he claiming that, like, having a contrary opinion should be okay? Yeah. So, hey, Ben, their opinion is like mine, that you should shut the fuck up. Um, how is that hurting you any more than you calling Lizzo fat is hurting, you know, everybody else? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, there's no yeah, it's consistency. Like, it's like when, it's like, yeah, it's like when, when someone talks shit about them, it's like, you guys should shut the fuck up. You're a bunch of morons and this is fucking offensive bullshit. They're like, well, look, I'm being silenced. But they can say anything they want about anyone else. And it's like, well, well, you know, that's my, that's my right. It's like, how come, every, how come people, you can talk shit about others, but others can't talk shit about you without it being some kind of like, oh, now this is a serious issue. Right. So you talking about other people is not a serious issue, but other people talking about you is a serious issue. Like, give me a break. Give me a fucking break, dude. Love your stuff. How's the book going, TJ? I, the book has grown by like 20,000 words, and it would be more, but I actually went off to do a few little side uh, writing projects uh after that but uh anyway that's not here or there if you if you speak if you say something wrong the only way that we can teach you a lesson is if we create i don't know like a tree of oppression a and tree we create of this oppression. giant tree in the middle of a campus say eh? contemplate this on the tree of a prep look how silenced he is i know i mean but just poor like, ben he should be in front of a no more. he should be in a you know a sold out arena stadium not this giant you know college uh you know, he's got he's got to be fucking yeah i mean like he should be in like he should be in a stadium at the center of a stadium with 75,000 people gathered around him if only he wasn't silenced and then say he's playing his chicken shit little fucking auditorium what does this hold 5,000 people max come on yeah. come on it's literally talking to like i don't know probably not 5,000 but there's like probably like a thousand people here or some shit there's tons of people he's talking to like a, a throng of fucking people He's like, I, I, I would like to announce that I am being silenced right now, everybody. And it's horrible what's happening. Like, give me a break. You're not fucking silenced, bro. Stop. How many times I got to say it? You know, it's like, I don't know. It's like, you got you just go around. You say the same fucking shit over and over again because it's just so bullshit. You know what the funny thing is, is unironically, he is arguing for diversity, equity, and inclusion for people with right-wing viewpoints. Right. So he like that. No, no joke. That is like he probably won't use those words to describe his argument. But what more could you? Add? He wants diversity. He wants the diversity of having uh you know spaces that are usually dominated by leftist voices, um, be more tolerant of conservative voices. He wants equity in that you know hey if there's a a strong leftist opinion on thing then uh, then a rightist should be able to have uh, a, an opinion of equal value and then inclusion you know what i mean hey stop stop making these uh things that only we can go to or what you're you're arguing for the very things you're trying to excoriate here ben and we just put a bunch of chains on it and they call it the tree of oppression and um put a bunch of a chains on it call it the tree of oppression you know yeah Imagine wow and then stunning imagery all know that we are all oppressed but we're not all oppressed only some of us are oppressed and if you make fun of the tree of oppression you're part of the microaggression universe <laughs> or maybe you hire Ibram X Kendi to give the Martin Luther King Jr. legacy convocation in order to ensure <laughs> that somebody has been paid off in order to assuage the feelings of the of the broad left because if Ibram X Kendi is able to ca put cash in his bank account then this means that you have fought racism in some unknowable way <laughs> Dude, that's too that's too rumbling and manly of a fart. Yeah, it you're needs right. To be Sorry, a go ahead. Squeaky, like little one of those little yeah, one of those one of those squeaky farts. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. It's been written into the code of nearly every major institution in American life. The term that's used on campus and in corporate boardrooms across America are diversity, equity, and inclusion, which of course is the sort of happy talk, the Orwellian happy talk that you hear very often from the left. It's mm. like when Twitter says they have a health and safety council. And what they really mean is you're not allowed to say anything we don't like. Like Leah Thomas is a dude. You're you're on Twitter. You're on Twitter. I'm not. I'm too hot for Twitter. You're on Twitter. So, yeah, yeah you don't get to talk about that. And isn't what you're alleging here that uh, what you call woke moralism is wrong think? Aren't you acting uh, you know, Orwellian uh, if if other people are? Or could it be that both of you, both sides of it have 
gone well beyond annoying and nobody's being oppressed because you can't hear anything but this argument. You know what I mean? Like as it gets louder and more ubiquitous, somehow they feel more and more oppressed on both sides of the argument. Yeah. I don't I'm know done, man. I'm done with it. Or we'll ban you because that's health and safety, right? So they say diversity, equity, and inclusion. And what they mean by that is shut up, right? They don't mean inclusion because if you have a, a point of view that argues with their own, then you should be quiet. And by equity, they mean, again, systems of power that have to be reversed. They don't mean equality, right? Because equality of rights might actually be something worth pursuing. What they mean is equity, equality of outcome. And that can only be achieved if a finger is put on the scale on behalf of marginal. I like when they do this, like, a quality of outcome distinction as if we have equality of opportunity already. Right. Like, we don't. Like, that's just stupid. I mean, like... Well, that's part you, of their... If you honestly, that's part like, of their... If you honestly believe that, you'd have to fucking sit there and tell me, like, okay, this fucking son of a millionaire who is, like, spoiled and privileged and has, like, you know, whatever car he wants and goes to the fucking t t finest school because his family can just afford to send him there and shit. Has, like, Had a whole news same... network financed by yeah. billionaire donors. You know what I mean? Like, right, yeah. and then, but, like, but that ha he had the same exact opportunity as, you know, like, remember that fucking time we watched, we did that episode on uh, Bastrop, Louisiana. Yeah. And uh, we were just like, we fucking scroll. We like, we, we just put, picked a random spot on the map and there was like Po Folks Grocery and it was closed. And then across the street was Po Folks Grocery Act Two and it was closed. Yeah. And then we fucking like scrolled around the town and there was a bunch of fucking like ramshackle, horrible buildings that were smaller than trailers with like 10 kids like crowded onto the porch just sitting there and like, any one of them kids had the same opportunity in life that Ben Shapiro had because we have a quality of opportunity. But what the left wants is a quality of outcome. And that's what the difference is. It's like, dude, mm. you, we do not have a quality of opportunity. OK, and they're if not we, like the, if we were if we had a quality of opportunity, then I would be fine with there not being a quality of outcome. But we don't have either. So shut your fucking stupid mouth, bitch. And, and I guess, and I guess the, it really the, does mean shut up. Thanks. Go away. The broader left isn't even using the like using the term equity in the way that he's claiming. Nobody's arguing for equality of outcome. They're arguing for fairness. They're arguing for those that are the lowest on the totem pole to be uplifted so that they have a fighting chance to do what's right for themselves. Give them a fair shake. Give them a fair shot. <clears throat> Don't let the fact that you were born in Bastrop color your entire life so you die early and young from a preventable illness with no teeth in your mouth and not an, a, no thoughts in your head because nobody ever bothered to teach you anything in bass drop By that's, drop, the, no that's right the term there. the term equity means literally the state of equality or fairness that is the argument from the broader left yeah now maybe there are some radical leftist elements that are arguing that everybody should get you know, a trophy no matter what. But I really don't hear that. I hear that, like, let's take the people that are in the biggest fucking trouble in our society, people that have the circumstances that put them behind the curve and do our level-headed best to give them a fighting chance in the world. That's what they mean by equity. That'd be socialism, though. Oops. So this means that institutions are allowed to discriminate against Asian Americans at Harvard. <laughs> get into the schools, you know, make sure that you have to correct that historic discrimination because of course, Asian Americans were the chief beneficiaries of Harvard when it was first established by Asian Americans in the Asian dominant system that was created by Asian Americans at the founding of the United States. Thanks, good, fella. Good sarcasm, Ben. <laughs> good sarcasm, bro. You nailed it. You press Fucking forward Asians. inclusion by saying that anybody who goes to church is real, we don't mean you. And if you're one of those crazy people who cites the Bible, we don't mean you. When we say inclusive, what we really mean is like everyone but. Why are you? Why are you? Why are you? Uh, Karen, Bre like you don't even believe half the fucking Bible, Ben. Why are you sucking the Bible's dick? You're a Jew. You don't even believe half the fucking book. Because religious is as religious does, dude. It, it's all it's all based on the same fucking fairy tale idea that there's an old man up in the sky that cares if you jerk off. End, so at the end of the day, like Christianity, the thing most Americans fucking still believe to this day, Ben Shapiro rejects that shit. So you basically think the whole story of Jesus is a bunch of bullshit. Cause the fucking idea that he's the son of God, because you guys think the Messiah ain't here yet, right? So 
Like you think that book is bullshit. You don't fucking su- you don't fucking believe in the Bible. Quit acting like you do. Quit fucking sucking the Bible's dick, Ben. You hate the Bible. You're anti-Christian. You don't fucking accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So shut your fucking mouth. Defend the Bible while you don't even believe ha- you don't even believe the fucking the the part that fucking most people find the most like you don't believe the New Testament. The central most figure Christian- of the New Testament is not the son of God, according to you, which right. undermines his entire existence as, as the Bible lays it out. So, so like, you don't, but so don't suck the Bible's dick. Cause if, when it comes to Christianity, you're just as fucking much a rejecter of it as I am. Yeah. But you know what? You pander a little bit to them Christians and them wallets come flying wide open. Don't they? Judeo Christian. Oh yeah. You mostly. And that's inclusion. And uh, of course you have to, teach all children that this is the most important thing. So we have to do this at the earliest possible level, right? You have to teach small children in Ames, Iowa to engage in Black Lives Matter at school, week of action in your public school. These are very important things that you have to do. To Man, oh my like God, well, that's uh, a nightmare. Kids yeah. taught to fucking think of black people as, as fucking mattering. That's, get, get that out of here. Nope. Wow. Yeah, no, this, this to me seems like an inherently conservative principle. At least it was when I was young. This because what what he's talking about here is teaching kids that people that are different from them exist and to just let them be and to be their own thing. Like that's that's the move. Like that's the it is moving away from the exclusionary rhetoric in, in classrooms of the past that were sometimes uh implicitly, sometimes explicitly racist, sexist, America centric, and exposing kids to the reality of a multicultural world with multifaceted human beings running around in it. That's not, that's not destroying your way of life. That's creating a group of people that'll move out of the way and let you have your weird little fucking homestead where you, you know, wrap your head in a prayer cloth every night and wail to God or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. All of which is designed to indoctrinate kids in the idea that all argumentation is stupid, that reason is bad, that discussion... It what? is. <laughs> he's, he, he's, he's saying they're trying to make the argument that all religion is trying to indoctrinate pe- kids into something that's stupid and tell them that all reason is bad. Ain't it? Ain't okay. it? Isn't raising your child to believe in a Bronze Age myth that excludes a ton of the fucking planet uh, a little limiting for that child? Don't you think that child's horizons might be broadened by exposure to people who think differently than them? Isn't that what you're arguing for here in the first place? Discussions are wrong and that everything is a reflection of power. So be quiet. Wokeism is destructive to the country. No democracy can survive the denial of truth. Uh, I don't know if it's destructive to the fucking country, but wokeism and anti-wokeism are destructive to my fucking mental well-being, man. I am sick (laughs) of hearing you pussies yell at each other. Why don't you get in the goddamn ring together and claw each other's eyes out and we'll see who the victor is already. I'm sick (laughs) of the talk. I'm sick of the whiny baby talk. Oh, look how oppressed we are. No, no, no. Look how oppressed we are. No, 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 because they think they're the oppressed ones. They really oppress us. It's fuck you, you bunch of fucking namby-pamby pussies. Can you find one thing in this world, like, I don't know, maybe climate change rampaging out of control, maybe war and rumors of war, maybe economic disparity, maybe any, any of the number of things it faces as a species, maybe give five minutes of time to that and quit acting like Lizzo and the woke squad are coming to scalp you or some shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's a non-issue, man. I don't even know what this one's about. But this is our last one. He All knows right. he can't, but he did anyway. My favorite who- is when they say, how am I supposed to explain gay people to your kids? I know, because the answer is so fucking easy. Like, here's how you explain it. Why are those two men kissing? Because you know what? Uh, you'll find that adults love each other. And it's okay. Some, some men love other men that way and want to have a family with other men. Some women love other women that way. Hell, some people don't even really think of themselves as a man or woman. And they just love who they love. It's, it's all love. <clears throat> there you go. Explained. 
explanation. Like, how am this? I, a non-parent, more capable than most of uh, conservative America of tackling this non-fucking uh, controversial Cause topic? Because they don't fucking, um, they don't fucking, they don't care about that shit. I mean, they don't even, it's not even like, they don't even really give a shit. It's just like the vote division shit, and they know there's like some stupids out there. That'll be like, hey, it's time to hate the gays again. That'll be like, oh, yeah, I can't I can't vote for no Democrat because the gays trying to brainwash them kids. You know? And it's like, like for fucking Republicans, after gay marriage, it's like they gave up the issue for a while, and they're like, actually, I guess gay people is all right. But then the second it was, like, advantageous, like, nope, fuck them, I hate them again. Hate them again now. But I don't know what this video is about. He knows he can't, but he did it. I don't know who who did what. I don't know who he is. I don't know what he can't do. I don't know what he did anyway. But if he if he did it anyway, then I guess he can. Yeah, uh, uh, you're so right, Johnny. Like, how is explaining a, a valid human relationship and its existence to your child somehow like more destructive than exposing your child to the idea that everybody should have a gun so they can shoot another person if it comes to it? You know what I mean? That just goes to show you how fucking backwards all this shit is. I don't even want, like, what do you think this one's going to be about? He, he knows um, he can't, but he did it. Any, uh, that's too vague. I mean, I don't know. Is it going to be it's Biden? Gonna be woke, it's going to be wokeism. You think? There's going to be wokeism involved, guaranteed. I think it's got to be Biden because it's got, I mean, like, when you say he can't, I mean, there's got to be something that, like, some reason why he can't, right? If he can't, how did he do it anyway? Right, but it has to be, like, He's gonna have to make some case like, oh, well, he violated like some kind of um, rule of the presidency or something or some kind of, I don't know. I have no idea what it's gonna be about. We'll just find out. Now, now, now let's get to the constitutionality of this thing because the constitutionality of this thing is completely specious. Okay. There is no basis upon which Joe Biden- Yeah, he's probably talking about Joe Biden. He's talking about Joe Biden. Sure. Biden has the power to do this. None. I know we left the constitution behind a long time ago in this country. I know that we now think that the president basically has the power to declare anything. And during COVID- Oh, yeah, because you, you know what, dude? But you love that when you've got a Republican president in, in office, don't you? You love Donald Trump tapping national security or national defense or national disaster funds to build a worthless fucking wall out in the desert. You know what I mean? See, this is just, I fucking, I'm so sick of these fucking two sides of this. <laughs> I hate both sides of the coin, and I wish they'd both fucking just crawl into a hole and die. I'm, you know what, Ben? I'm the guy that wants you to shut the fuck up. These other people, these like the woke moralists or whatever that you're up against, they never want you to shut the fuck up because you're the perfect boogeyman for them to constantly make content about. I want you and them to go the fuck back where you came from. How about that? During COVID, it was like, hey, some old people are going to die of a disease. This means you don't have to pay your rent. You're a 20-year-old who's working a gaming job. You don't have to pay your rent anymore for like two it's years. It's not worthless. Walls work. Yeah, that might be true, but this wall doesn't work. Go go on YouTube and find any number of videos of migrants climbing right over Trump's supposedly impenetrable, unclimbable wall with very little effort. Not only that, but uh, even if a wall did work, which once again, yeah, it doesn't. But even if it did, I'm against the fucking whole principle of the thing. So fuck you. I don't want a wall there. I want us to get rid of walls and borders for that matter. So suck my dick. DC says so. I understand that we all went nuts in 2020, 2021. But even Nancy Pelosi last year was saying Joe Biden did not have the singular power to cancel student debt. This is last year. Shades of Barack Obama saying that he didn't have the power to simply declare. Because Nancy Pelosi is, is on your side. You, you're just figuring this out. Nancy Pelosi isn't a leftist. She's a corporatist, just like you. So, of course, she's going to poo-poo any idea to bring relief to anybody that's in debt. Yeah, so this is, uh, so what, do they, what it is, is uh, he, Joe Biden knows he can't relieve student debt, but he did it anyway. And that's a nightmare, of course. Right. Because, of course, even like what to us is like not even a half measure is to Ben Shapiro, the end of the world as we know it. Yeah, George W. Bush uh, knows that he can't um, unilaterally declare war and keep it going for fucking two decades and counting in the in uh, you know the world, but he did it anyway. You know, and you loved that. 
loved every fucking moment of that. You loved every time that Trump fucking used his, uh, you know, whatever they call it, the fucking, uh, what do they call those? The goddamn uh, executive, executive orders. Executive orders, yeah. Every time he picked up the executive order pin to circumvent Congress, you had a, you creamed your jeans. That illegal immigrants would never be deported, and then he just did it. Anytime, just as Democrats frequently say, this crazy left-wing radical fringe idea will never become mainstream, and then 10 years later, they're doing it. Whenever Democrats say we don't have the power to do X, within about 18 months, they will be doing it. So here's Nancy Pelosi one year ago. I mean, if, you're, if your metric is how many fucking illegal aliens got deported, you should be sucking Obama's big wrinkly cock right now. Because he he deported more <laughs> fucking uh, people out of this country than the next two presidents combined that you could name. Power to simply cancel student debt. People think that the president of the United States has the power. Oh, God. Can somebody yeah. wrap this mummy up and fucking throw her in the sarcophagus, please? <laughs> Hold up, we gotta get some appropriate fucking soundtrack. For, uh, we're gonna listen to Nancy Pelosi talk. All right. <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah. Egyptian uh, tomb music. There you go. Something, right? It has the right vibe. Oh, yeah. yes. He does not. He can postpone, he can delay. But he does not have that power. That would that's to be. Emotep. Emotep. That the president can only postpone, delay, but not oh, forgive. Serve the okay, master. but Joe Biden just did. <laughs> okay, so Ben, like, you're really gonna act like you don't understand what happened? Because, like, I know you do. She yeah. said that because the Democrats didn't want to do it then. And now they want to do it because they need to win the midterm. So they did it. And yeah. that's it. It's that's fucking simple. You guys would do the same thing. It's just like how like Mitch McConnell pretended that there was like, oh, shit, we can't approve a Supreme Court justice in the last year of a presidency. That that'd be wrong. Got to get the voters to say. But then when Trump did it later, he's like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like no problem. OK, so, yeah, it's like that's how it works. It's no big deal. <laughs> Politicians are full of shit. It's not a surprise. It's not a matter of this party or that party. It's politicians. Because they're going to say whatever they need to say. And you know what? I don't even blame them. Because obviously that's how you fucking win in this country. Because they just pander to the fucking people. They say whatever's going to fucking trick the motherfuckers out there voting. So, you know, they've been formed by the fucking pressures of what the electorate wants. And if they're all fucking a bunch of scum fucks, it's because that's what deep down inside America fucking votes for. So... Give me a break. Did that, right? He said he's going to forget. So what is the legal basis for this? This is totally crazy. And I think Joe Biden knows this is crazy. And so it leads me to believe that as a legal strategy, what Joe Biden is doing here is he's campaigning against the Supreme Court because my guess is that this is going to be appealed by somebody. And right? they have to find somebody with standing. It's hard to find somebody with standing in this particular case because you have to show that you were damaged. And you as a general taxpayer can't show- Why is this such a fucking bad idea if it's going to be almost impossible to find somebody that was actually damaged by this? You fucking idiot. It's going to be hard to find a damaged person, but, you know, still. Yeah, I'm sure we'll weasel a way to to, to pretend that somebody was damaged and challenge this. It's like you're fucking on the face of it. You're just like (laughs) self-refuting shit. No harm was actually done to anybody, but- uh. You know, it's going to be tough in this situation because, uh, you know, in order to challenge it, you're going to have to find somebody that was harmed by it. <laughs> fucking eat a dick. It's like maybe when you say that sentence, you should be like, wait a minute. Why? What am I? What is, what's my position again? Why would it be so hard to find somebody who was harmed by it? Hmm. But assuming that there is some sort of lawsuit, say, by Congress saying that Joe Biden exceeded his powers here and it goes to the Supreme Court, this is probably not going to fall under the political question doctrine. Probably this is going to fall under the delegated powers, right? Whether Joe Biden actually has the inherent powers to do this. And if it gets struck down by the Supreme Court, then Joe Biden will then campaign against the Supreme Court. I, d- I did my best, guys. I, uh, I tried to relieve the student. That's the worst Biden impression ever. Not only that, that's clearly not Joe Biden's strategy. He's, he's a totally lying dipshit. Because if Joe Biden was going to do that, if Joe Biden knew there was no chance of this passing and it was just going to get knocked down by the Supreme Court so he could run against the Supreme Court, then Joe Biden would have said, like, I am canceling all student loan debt. Right. He would have just gone to the moon like, it's all gone. Fuck that. It's, it's wiped out. 
a clean slate and then let it get struck down by the Supreme Court. He wouldn't have just given, he wouldn't have done some like one twenty bazillionth measure and been like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, like if he's, if he knows it's destined to be uh, struck down, he would have fucking swung for the moon. Cause oh, yeah. it doesn't matter anyway. Cause he knows the set. If he, if Joe Biden's like, I'm going to do this. Cause I know it's not even going to be enforced. He would have just done the food would have gone to the extreme. Cause why wouldn't he? Lamanu and the Supreme Cambodges said that I wasn't a match about. What? I mean, what it happened? was unintelligible. So, so yeah, I guess it's, I guess he's got that going because yeah. I had no idea what he said. And that, that's, that may be what he's doing here. Legally speaking. That, that is the only way that I can explain how he purports to do this. According to the Office of Legal Counsel Opinion, explaining how Joe Biden is doing this, what gives Joe Biden the power to simply say that you, a person who took out a student loan, now no longer have to pay that student loan? What gives him the power to do that? Get ready for this. It is the HEROES Act of 2003. Now you're thinking to yourself, what, the, what is the HEROES Act of 2003? I don't even remember that. That's 20 years ago, man. What, what are we talking about here? Wait, sorry, I have a mouthful, but um, it's 20 years ago. How long ago was the Constitution? <laughs> like, what does it matter if it was 20 years ago? Well, the HEROES Act in 2003, which was passed in the aftermath of 9-11, right? What was that designed to do? It was a, designed to allow the Secretary of Education to waive or modify loans because of a national emergency. Like, say, for example, there was a massive terror attack in the United States, a nuclear attack in the United States. Do you still have to pay off your loan this week? The idea was the Secretary of Education could cancel loans if they had to. Joe Biden is now declaring that because of COVID, he can just cancel the student loans. Okay. So what? COVID, so wait, doesn't, so wait, 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 COVID wait. doesn't count as an, a disaster? How many people died in 9-11? Two, two and a half thousand or something? You know how many? Like, we're well over a fucking million. Approaching so a, one and a half million people dead from COVID in this country. I just heard, I mean, that was the stupidest fucking argument I've ever heard in my life. You basically yep. just said, like, so you wonder what this thing was designed to do, the HEROES Act? It was designed to say that, and, you know, if a national emergency happens, then you can, you know, you can wipe out student debt. And then, so Joe Biden comes along, and he says, because a national emergency happened, we can just wipe out student debt. What? You just explained that, that, wait, he has total legal standing. You're insane. You're a literal fucking lunatic, aren't you? Okay. Let's <laughs> see what's happening here. According to the Office of Legal Counsel, quote, we conclude the act grants that authority. The plain text of the HEROES Act authorizes the secretary to waive or modify any statutory or regulatory provision applicable to the federal student loan program. Yeah, uh, it's, so, yeah, that sounds exactly like what happened here. So, oops. It's right yeah, here it's, in the verbiage of this, of this act. People who suffer economic hardship as a result of war, military operation, or national emergency. Which, uh, so that happens, so... Yeah, yep. this is totally, wait, this is totally justified. There's, this is not going to get struck. I mean, like, unless the Supreme Court is even more of a right wing, just puppet court than I even think it is, there's no way this gets struck down. No. And that's exactly why Joe Biden did a fucking half measure instead of going for like, oh, yeah, I'm going to erase all student debt. Because maybe that would get struck down because it'd be such an impetus to do it on one side. But like, that's not what's, this is like terrible political analysis. This is not what's happening. Yeah, I mean, this is this is like way more popular on the right than uh, he's giving it credit for, too. He acts like, the, you know, leftists are the only people that take My out mic absurd amounts of okay. fucking uh, Maybe I have too much strain. On. He acts like he acts like the leftists are the only people that take out too much fucking student debt or who are economically severely impacted by COVID-19 and the, you know, myriad uh, natural and economic disasters that have happened in the ensuing months and years. But like there are plenty of Republican people who are going to love looking at their fucking student loans go from 10k to zero or 20k to zero in the case of some of these loans. So this is yeah the the chances of this getting overthrown pretty fucking small. I don't even know what that would look like. Like once this goes forward, how would they even put this genie back in the bottle? You know what I mean? Yeah, um, it doesn't even make sense. Like this and like the law as he describes it. He wasn't even able to make it sound like it doesn't apply. It obviously applies. Like, this is stupid. This is a waste of time. Like, he's ba he basically just said, like, Joe Biden thinks he can use a law that says he can do this to do this. It's not he knows he can't, but he did it anyway. It's like he knows he can and he did, which is not a story. Whoops. <laughs> you guys are still streaming nice. It's not nice for us. 
<laughs> I know we're, we're about done with this shit. Yeah, especially not, you know, capping off a fucking six plus hour stream with Ben Shapiro. Ben you know Shapiro. I, mean? I know there's people out there that stream for way longer than we do. I know there's people that like get on here and just stream all day for like 14 hours a day and then go to sleep and then get up and stream some more. Dude, there's a dude, not to, not to interrupt you, there, there's a dude on Twitch who streams um, League of Legends named Tyler One. Uh -huh. And I shit you not, man. You could go check that dude any fucking day of the week. If you're up late at night, just go to fucking Twitch and search Tyler One. He will have been, like, it tells you how long they've been live. He's live 12, 13 hours a day. Yeah. I'm just like, man, I can't even fucking compete with that shit. There's no, no way. No, there's no fucking way. I wouldn't, I mean, this, to, to, sitting here for six hours doing this shit. I would go out of my mind. I'm just like, oh, I'm done. Imagine, like, imagine if we had to do another, like, 12 hours of this, and then we got to go to sleep, and then, I'm sorry, we didn't, we did another fucking six, we did everything we just did, we just do again. Yeah. And then wake up tomorrow and do it the same way. And then I remember one day, night, more, 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 more. It's like, I one night I was up <laughs> into the wee hours or whatever, like four or five in the morning or some shit, just like way up. And I was watching Tyler one and he got, he, he was signing off his stream after a 14 hour streaming day. Right. I went to bed, slept for, you know, eight or eight or nine hours, woke up and his stream was back on. And he had been live for like six hours already by the time I woke. So like the dude didn't even, he slept four hours or some shit and then just got right back on his computer and back. did another 14 hour. I'm back guys. It's like, oh my God, I could never, I don't even know how, like, how are you not like the fattest person on the face of the earth? You're not even doing it. You're just standing here sitting in one spot for like yeah, he's every ripped. fucking second of your life. He, that's, that's another thing too, is he's ripped. He's actually like in really good physical shape. I, I mean, he I must like fucking, win. He, yeah. Like when do you do it? <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, whatever though you know hey you gotta grind that's, i guess out there some people out yeah, there gotta fuck some people just got that drive man i guess i got i got a drive but i got i got more than one i could never just devote myself to one thing like that i got too much other shit i want to do yeah but anyway i guess that kind of concludes this uh there's not really much more to say i mean like he already destroyed his own argument here whatever the fuck it was gonna be he did so, it he did it every time we watched him tonight he yeah, undermined I mean, he much, his he own argument every his time. own throat every like within a few minutes of every fucking video it's just like but his audience is too myself. stupid to to notice that. You know what I mean? They don't. Oh, yeah, of course. Or they selectively ignore the. Uh, I guess the I should give. I don't think anything. we got those. Uh, those yeah, I, che I, I guess checked about check five minutes ago, and we weren't anywhere near it. So All I'll right, double so check here real quick. Yeah, just give it one more check before we go, just because I don't want double check. This. Nope, didn't make it. So that one goes in the vault for patrons, or maybe vault another episode. Yep. Uh, so yeah, we'll throw that. Uh, we'll throw that mini gauntlet up in uh, the future, but uh, it'll be in some kind of future content. But it's not yep. gonna be for this. Uh, and, huge uh, thanks, by the way, uh, to everybody that donated uh, and the couple of people that did become uh, patrons. I know that money is tight right now, and for you guys, oh, yeah. to, you know, you know, be generous. Even if you gave a couple bucks, it's really uh, it means a lot to us. It lets Amen. us do this job that we love and uh, bring entertainment to you as well. Um, so thank you for your support. Thank you to all our patrons. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. I guess we'll see you uh, next week.